PKA 601 with our guest, Josh Wolf. Taylor? This episode of PKA brought to you by Express, VPN, Blue Chew, and Lock and Load, the finest cum pills in existence. They're going to make you just ejaculate your, your pants off. You're going to love it. Uh, check it out. Code PKA, anything on Derek's site, 10% off. Uh, and yes, Blue Chew and Express VPN. We did not yeah. prepare Josh. I no really, one has said a word I really to wish Josh our code, since he got here. I really wish our code was jizz. Or something like that. Like, like you use code thick load or something. It, here, like, like, like here's what I want to know. Makes sense. But. Yeah. Shoot, Josh. Who on the screen has used it? And okay, <laughs> all of you have used it. Yeah. Okay. Kyle and I so invented it. <laughs> is it? Does it really? Look, I've never been a dude who's been like, I just wish there was more come. Do you know See, what I mean? Like that's never been mm -hmm. like. So you is remember, it a situation where, where it's for people remember? who? Aren't ha aren't getting any cum and they just want some? I, <laughs> that is that is a potential it? market. I I, you know? I have gone through the journey that you need to explore, Josh. I I have done the whole. Is this even a positive substance? Why would you want more of this? This is a thing that women complain about the taste about. Why would you triple your load? Mm -hmm. No, it is absolutely a win. Uh, it not only it, it's cool to have pre cum that is substantial, that is part of the show. <laughs> yeah, Woody, cool you're really have... filling up those socks now, aren't you? <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh my yeah, underwear! He walks by a local middle school. He's got my underwear. Jam. After I finished using it, used to look unused. Yeah. Yeah. No, not I, anymore. Listen, no, now no, it looks like he has a I'm UTI. Not, <laughs> I have discharged like a girl now. I'm not. I'm not. <laughs> blue. I'm not poo pooing extra jizz. I was just curious, like what the benefits like if you yeah. guys had done it and, and that's all i can you i know? can spell the benefit so like the initial thing is kyle and i this is a couple of years ago now we wanted to just come a lot more and we thought that was funny and so we texted back and forth we trading were really our, our coming on a lot of women on tinder at that point in our lives just, at that just time in our lives we were we were freewheeling and dealing painting the town you know Why and, uh, <laughs> and so we figured out that it's not the amount. So like the amount of jizz coming out, that's nice. If your girl's into that, that's good. But really, it's increasing your total orgasm time. So like think about it. The, the, the primo of your best feeling of coming is when it's coming out. That's the apex. And so you extend that time period while you're pumping and you get a longer good feeling. And so that's like the true benefit of it. It's is that funny. you get a I, I really, longer this orgasm? This is a beauty of these, is in the eye of the beholder. That's situation. what I'm talking about. Yeah. Now, well, he's on that should be on the bottle. Basically, <laughs> basically, <laughs> do you want more cum? And also, do you want to come for longer? Yeah, mm -hmm. come for longer, feel better, yeah, dude. more and volume, win -win. more propulsion, Honestly, more pearlescence. Can I tell you what the perfect product for me would be? Hmm. Uh, sock coming for longer, <laughs> but with less cum. Like mm. less so you know, you're you're physics here. Yeah, yeah, you're, you're gonna need <laughs> less. To do some I'm just yoga. talking about less cleanup, more enjoyment, more you want literal, long, more bang like, for the buck. You want like a like a spider orb silk web of cum coming out. I would for like, like three to come minutes, hot a air. Total amount of nothing. Yeah, I would like to. I I would like my dick to go. <laughs> and, then she and just like, like so spider hot. webs, like a superpower, <laughs> like that. Like I got bit by a radioactive spider. Yeah. And Dick's that's it. Or it's just it's just like out comes like just a towel. <laughs> you could I mean I that's in the works. I didn't want to spoil that, but I think <laughs> we we really hit it out of the park with this one because and you can yeah. tell we, we say this when guests come on and they go they, they're thinking in their head, this is just some bullshit come supplement. They sell the porn stars. No nine pills a day is what you need to take. Five in the morning, four at night. If we were trying to, you know, it'd be so much easier for us if we sold a smaller. We'd make so much more money if we told you to take one, if we put 30 yeah. in the bottle. Yes. But no, it's nine a day. You got to, you no got to. But it wouldn't work if we did that. You got to want it. Yeah. You know what else I heard recently? That the if you masturbate a lot, your dick gets bigger. Does because you're using the capillaries, like they're grow. The capillaries are expanding more often, really? right? And it's, I, so it's almost like stretching out your shirt. I just don't, you know. Believe so that. the interesting. I, I think we'd notice it over our lifetimes. That would have like, solved the incel problem. I feel like I've done a lot of field research here. Well, we've done so much field well, research. Now before. here's the deal, Woody, and I'm not saying <laughs> I'm, I'm saying it, it has to be a bunch, a lot in a row. Oh, and it's not so like it goes from your three inches to five. So it's not like a huge difference. 
it's just like little by little. This is the rumor I heard. It makes sense to me. Old people would be huge, like trees. Along those lines, wouldn't a vacuum pump have a permanent effect? And I think that it doesn't. Dude, there's no doubt an old dude's dick in the locker room hangs longer, dude. And maybe that's just gravity. The balls, my the, the balls. I remember as a kid being drugged into those locker rooms, and it was the balls that stole the show. Oh, without like, a doubt, the balls are definitely beating. Yeah, especially the dick when the you're floor. at testicle level as a child. Yeah. Like, why was I brought in there? I was never brought into a situation like that. I, I'm sorry. Did he they walked touch in you by or himself. Did they just make you watch. No, we. I bathed him, and you know, <laughs> I yeah. got those balls sparkling. Oh, can I tell ba- you? Speaking of bathing, at old the, men at the. LA Fitness, where I used to work out in Studio City, mm-hmm. the steam room was well known to be a place where dudes went to hook up, right? With other dudes. And so yeah. my youngest son, Jacob, got a job at LA Fitness once. And one of his jobs was he had to go clean out the. And to wipe down the loads. <laughs> well, he didn't know. And obviously, I'm sure <laughs> newbie, they always send newbie in there, right? Yeah. And he's he was he was probably eighteen at the time. He didn't kind of he was not hip on what's happening. Mm-hmm. He came home, eyes fucking, and he goes, "You'll never guess what's happening in the steam room at LA Fitness." I'm like, "Our dude's blowing each other." He's like, "How do you know that?" Like, <laughs> steam is happening in all of the fucking. Steam Where do you think room. I go every day? Yeah, you'll never yeah. guess. How do you think I, I think go I there can. for five hours every day? Yeah, Jesus Christ. There's something like, and this is probably wrong, but. Mm. When you're sitting in a steam room steaming and like some other like big sweaty person is in there with you, are you getting any of their moisture on you by sitting in the room? Like are they're suggesting sweat that their sweat is off? evaporating and that gas you sweat re, is re- going to infect you? on me. Is that happening? I, I'm gonna be honest. I, I don't. I think you're fine. I think okay. you're fine. I, I've always think, imagined that, and because and I, in I think my head, it was point. very gross. I showed you that ridiculous personal sauna I bought, right? For like three hundred dollars yeah. on Amazon. Uh-huh. <laughs> that was I threw that in the dumpster too. I was like, no, yeah, it was a piece of shit. I- it was it was one of those that like doesn't even have a door, Josh. It's like you lock your. It's a tent with a hole for your head at the top, oh. and then you just plug it into a yeah. I don't know a steamer for clothes. Yeah. And then- it looks like an old when you you look like you remember the in, in Star Trek the original captain. Yes. <laughs> That, the, that's like the first, it's the episode with the menage, um with, with um who was before Kirk Pike when Pike gets like crippled he's in that wheelchair. <laughs> that's Star right. Trek that's wheelchair. the guy, yeah, right? Yeah. 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 <laughs> it's well, ridiculous. I don't know why I bought it, um, but I thought it would be fun, and it was like two or three hundred dollars, and I'm like, I'll use it all the time. My own sauna, and uh, and and so like you put a a folding like lawn chair down, like the kind you'd like watch a football game or like a sports event outdoors or something, like chill in the backyard. And then you like envelop your thing in this thing and zip yourself up to the neck. And it's even got like a th- a pouch for the cell phone to go in so you can operate it from inside. <laughs> oh, my God. Shit. I nearly passed out the first time I used it and never used it again. You, like, can't, you we, can't find the inside zipper. You're dying. <laughs> like, you we sweat got so one. much, though. You've got one of we those? Got, my, my wife bought one of those infrared saunas. With the door like that you walk into? Yeah, an actual door. A and real it's one, wood. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> do you make your song what a waste down? of money <laughs> yeah, it, it's hey, not a, it's mom, not a we're just, we just out leave outside wipe it down son <laughs> hilarious just, yeah no I you know I you guys died in that thing and they found me steamed like for a week in that chair like what would have been left been nothing up. Hmm. You, did i tell you guys we live in vegas now by the way no, oh, no. how do you like that um i like it it's mm-hmm. the most chill place I've ever lived because obviously we don't live on the strip, you know? Yeah. Right. Right. But to be 20 minutes from every vice I've ever had in my life is a dangerous place to live. Oh yeah. You, are you tempted by the gambling? You want to go? Yeah. Go gambling. What are the vices we're talking about? Well, gambling and I love doing drugs and what a great place to go do drugs is down on the strip. I loved, I just got some LSD um, I took some LSD the other day, Kyle, by myself. I'm a big fan. Is of that LSD. not a good idea? You, I thought that's fine. Now, you, you know, Kyle, you know what I had forgotten? Mm. How long it lasts? Because with mushrooms, I can I can take enough other shit to go to sleep, right? But the LSD is like, hey, dude, this is a full day commitment. <laughs> like, don't plan <laughs> on going to sleep for 16 hours. <laughs> 
at least. Jesus Christ, that's a commitment. Yeah, but it it was a good time. I hadn't I hadn't taken LSD in probably twenty years. Oh, that's oh. a long time. How, how did you know, it for a guy that loves drugs, you're not very good at satisfying yourself. Or he's well, very I good take at a lot of mushrooms and smoke <laughs> a lot of weed. Insult you, but you suck at picking up. <laughs> <laughs> there, there are people, uh, there are people what, that do LSD like daily. Like, like yeah, they um, microdose it. I watched a, a thing, I think on Netflix, um, uh, a, a thing called The Alpinist about this uh, this climber. It's not Josh Hanold, it's this other guy with curly hair. And uh, that's like he used to party and he was like, Yeah, I just do acid every night, you know, and everybody'd want to do like one tab and I'd want six. You want six tabs. That way I can go you can go to another realm. And I'm like hearing my own words come out of <laughs> come out of this guy's mouth. I'm like, Yeah, I like this dude. We're a lot alike. And then I saw what he does. He climbs the scariest shit on the fucking planet. And and his whole thing is he doesn't even want to have been there before and looked at it. He's like, that's cheating. He doesn't want the camera crew there. That's also cheating. That's not solo enough. If there's just a guy on the mountain with him with a camera, he feels like that's a little bit of moral support. So he's he climbs these things that are like a mixture between snow, ice, and rock. So he as he's going up these impossible, like steep cliffs, he'll have to stop and change his fucking shoes out for the spikes or and, and go to ice axes for a while. He's doing this on LSD. <laughs> he doesn't do the LSD when he oh. climbs. Oh, I thought he was doing all that on LSD. I'm like, I'm like, <laughs> what, if, what if you see a handhold that's not? I've never done acid, but like, what if you're like, sure, there's some secure grab on it. It's, and not, they, it's, it's, it's like the the little areas where you can put your fingers are. Like, exactly. I felt That'd uncoordinated uh, when uh, on acid as well. Like, like not to the point where like I'm not stumbling and falling down the ground or anything, but I shouldn't be climbing mountains, dude. <laughs> no. Kyle, when you said. Yeah, he likes to never have seen it before. I'm like, yeah, if he takes acid, he's not going to recognize it. Like, there's no... That's why I thought you meant he was taking acid. No, I was just t- kind of, like, giving a window into his personality. Like, like he ah. he was, like, wild as fuck like, the, with the stuff he does. Um, but no, I, I like acid a lot. I, I think everybody should try it because it's not a scary experience. It's... Um, and that's what I thought it was going to be. I was, like, intimidated by it because it sounds like a, a real drug. And... Uh, and it was just kind of like, oh, look at that. that I have a question. Wiggly. About LSD, right? So yeah. my f- friend took ayahuasca, which I guess is in the psychedelic sort of mushroom family. And it did two things for him. One, it made him think that his thoughts were all profound and correct. Like they didn't have to survive the scrutiny of reevaluation that a sober person's thoughts do. Hmm. Also, it has something called neuroplasticity which is to say that he's sort of influenceable for the next couple of days too, right? That was the thing that he did. Do mushrooms do that? Does LSD do that? Do, do any of them make you think that your thoughts are like, aha, I figured it out. This is Well, I can only speak for me and Kyle. I, look, mushrooms, especially lately, I'll take mushrooms by myself, mm-hmm. get into my bed, pull the covers over my head, and try to solve issues about myself. Mm -hmm. And I find that I'm, I open doors and I, and I look for solutions that I wouldn't normally look for. Mm -hmm. So like my brain is taking me down. So, and I don't know if I always feel like I'm right, but I always feel the next day calmer and better. It's and happier. And more well adjusted. Like I feel like if I want, when I want to have a, a, a therapy session on mushrooms, it's like the most honest therapy session I've ever had. And I end up finding things that I would have never about myself. You know, one thing I found. Ready for this? Okay. So I used to have kind of big ups and downs emotionally, right? Mm-hmm. And one night I was on. I I was having a bad day. And I was like, "Fuck it, I'm gonna leave the planet tonight. This okay. is, I just need, to, I just need to go somewhere else. else. I'm trying to. Yeah. Right? I took these mushrooms, Woody, Dose. and about two hours in, I was having such a good time by myself. And then my brain kind of tapped me on the shoulder and was like, "Hey, man, guess what? This is the same brain you had earlier in the day." when you were calling yourself a piece of shit and that you didn't deserve anything and that what a fucking asshole you are, same Mm -hmm. brain. You have the power 
to not feel this way by yourself. Your brain can do that. Like it was a conversation mm -hmm. I had with myself. Like I don't need this drug to feel good. It's the same brain. So if the brain can function like that with the drug, it can function like that without it. So for me, that was the biggest realization. And anytime, dude, for real now, when I start to fucking hear myself bad talk myself or feel bad about myself, I just say, yo, 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 I choose not to feel this way right now. This is not how I want to feel. This is not how I want to talk about myself. Mm -hmm. And the mushrooms, I don't, I want to say it's, but I do credit that mushroom turning the mirror back on myself, which is what it does, sure. you know? And so mm -hmm. that, that's the best answer I can give you to that. Um, what was your dosage? I was probably that night, probably at like three and a half grams. Okay. Okay. Not crazy. Not like a full hero's journey, but enough to, to do some damage, you know? Is this a pretty, yeah, me? yeah. I've only done mushrooms twice, uh, or yeah. actually maybe three times. And uh, the first two times, I, I looked, I didn't take enough. Um, and then the third time, I took way too much and, uh, and, and had a really bad experience. So I'm not a fan of mushrooms. All right, let me jump in. I've taken mushrooms twice. Okay. Both times, I forget the dosage, but it was the one or one and a half grams, which is a mild dose. Mm -hmm. One time it did so nothing, I'm not convinced I took mushrooms. I might have taken oregano or something. Like, I can't mm. explain to you how nothing it was. I, I think maybe Italian I blend. It, 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 they were uh, shiitake mushrooms or something okay. that I took. The other time, though, I had a really good experience. I felt really, I was a campfire environment, and I felt really good about the guys I was with. Things were funnier that, would have otherwise been like mildly funny mm -hmm. and uh um i didn't take a self-evaluation trip like josh did although i'm interested in it i'm in kind of a fucking funk that i'm not happy with it every winter every fucking winter i get this like sort of cabin fever like you know um what do they call it the Seasonal sad. Affective. sad, yeah. Seasonal effect oh. disorder, right? So that's every winter. It's fucking June 22nd. Snap out of it. I was Woody about to say, like, bag, like, like, right? like, it is like <laughs> the middle of summer. You're, you're halfway. You're, you're, this is the <laughs> longest day of the year. And I'm like, oh, man. You're as like, far you? away from winter as you will ever be, it's man. It's downhill like, from here. Yeah, I didn't every day now is closer to winter. Or... <laughs> so, and, and I'm just like, how do I fucking snap out of this? I'm not... I, I was telling you before before you joined the show. So um, I hurt my shoulder a little while ago, and I'm kind of getting back at it. I'm lifting weights well. I added some exercises that I had dropped because of injury. Now they're back. I'm, it makes me happy. I hit two PRs in the gym today that you'd think that would make me happy. I got some chores done and a little productivity, sense of accomplishment. And I'm just like, man, you know what? Today, Woody. kind of sucked. How, how do you feel about microdosing? I feel fucking open to anything at this point. I don't okay. want SSRIs, and I'm scared of I was going to suggest carpentry projects, but, <laughs> but yeah, let's <laughs> microdose instead. <laughs> Dude, microdosing. I want to make a charcuterie. Microdosing. So every other day, so say you did Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and did like a point three. It's going to change. It's going to change your world. This it's going to change your world. Point three, Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Yeah, every other day, this is what I understand. You can take Friday and Saturday, Saturday and Sunday off, um, but it's going to change your world. Now, that mm -hmm. 1.5, dude, is the fucking sweet spot with mushrooms okay. because you're not going to trip, but you're super happy and giggly. I, I want to ask you, how did you feel the next day after that 1.5? Uh, so – Great, but I was uh, having my best day. I was on. I do these motorcycle camping trips with my guy friends, uh -huh. and we ride motorcycles off road for hundreds of miles, and then you know rough it that night. This is my jam. So how was I the next day? Well, <laughs> fucking awesome, you know, because I I, I might have been awesome without the mushrooms. Well, I would, dude. I would, I would give them a run. I, I, I would. They've worked. Everybody that I know that has taken them it's really been beneficial, especially the people who are microdosing for mood enhancement for it. That has really been incredibly beneficial for people. Now this, the, the next day of mushrooms, I feel amazing. I feel more clear, more um, optimistic. 
about the world. Like, I feel amazing. So I'm not surprised you felt good, but riding on the motorcycle, I'm sure it had something to do with it. Right, right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But yeah. I don't know, yeah. My mind. would be like, I got it. stoned at Six Flags. What a great day. And it's like, well, it was the roller coasters carrying the, the bulk of that. Man. <laughs> right, right, right. By the way. So, so like I um I, I was I was just thinking today, like right before the show, I was like, I need a fucking happy pill. Is there such a thing as a happy pill? There's so like, many. I, yeah, I, I yeah, yeah. I'm a little nervous. Like, I don't think pot is a happy of them. pill. I don't think pot makes you happy. Um, I think Xanax maybe kind of might, but I'm scared of benzos. Yeah, uh, no heroin problem. is a happy pill. That's like, if I understand right, I've never done heroin. That's like literally what it does. It just makes you okay with everything that's happening. I but th- dude, opioids. I think you've heroin, got your drugs mixed up yeah. a little bit, man. Possibly. Uh, are you saying so? Heroin, I'm not sure if it makes you happy. I think it's more who gives a shit about anything right now okay i read someone describe their heroin trip i've never done heroin yeah. and uh i just got so caught up in this like he's driving to work in the morning it's raining and he's stuck in traffic and he sees beauty in every raindrop on his windshield oh, that's amazing right How is and he I'm- driving to work on heroin he does heroin. He doesn't care. <laughs> <laughs> Are you suggesting he's irresponsible, Kyle? <laughs> like, yeah, you think he was really on the way to I don't work? I, I, I honestly don't know much about heroin. That, uh, like, what, I, what I know yeah, about I know. heroin comes from movies and stuff. Um, I I knew a couple of people who had done it in their past, but obviously they don't want to talk about that shit. Mm-hmm. It's like not probably not their favorite topic, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, so I don't know what it's like, but I just know the way I see it depicted in film and, and, uh, and that – I didn't think of it as like a let me get my fix and go about my day kind of drug. I've always seen right. it as like let, let, let's disappear spot. into a realm of numbness for the, the rest breaking of the night. bed vomit yeah. ground scenario. I mean, maybe yeah. it's like just like with everything else. If you're microdosing it, it just has gives you a nice little Ooh. hey, everybody. Can you microdose those well, don't, heroin? No, don't 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 fuck with those those prescriptions, opioids and benzos. Like I'm, I'm from the Midwest. I have seen so many fucking people ruin their lives with this shit. Yeah, can, can so jump, many people. Can I add on to that? The thing is, like, yeah, who struggles with heroin? Total losers, right? Who else struggles with heroin? Lots of people. People who had pain. People who had chronic pain. Who were just on opioids for some period of time. Who graduated to heroin. What you think you're immune? I don't think I'm immune. Yeah, no like, one's I, immune. They made the yeah. opioid. The company that made the OxyContin like had documents released from decades ago where they're like, oh yeah, it's addictive as hell, and we know it is, and people are gonna want it when they're done with their treatments. And they were like pushing doctors to be like, oh, you have a little bit of pain, take take one of these as needed for a week, free refill, and it's like. That's how you get someone fucking addicted to drugs, and then they can't go back to that doctor and get more and always, they, so they have to engage in drug-seeking behavior. And when that runs out or it becomes too expensive, then they have to go to the street because they're going to go into withdrawal and potentially die if they don't. Like You, you go down that, that path so fast. And they ruined it for the rest of us because now I can't have a bottle of Oxys hmm. laying around. <laughs> it's so hard to get Xanax now because these fuckers... <laughs> <laughs> like, look, it, like, like it would be. I nice. mean, I'm just trying to feel good on the plane. I mean, I'll, what's the problem? All jokes aside, like I'm a responsible adult. If I, if I, I wish that I'd go to the store and buy a bottle, bottle of like serious painkillers in case like I ever got injured. Like, like, like if I ever like break my hand with like dropping a barbell, I would love to have the medication I need to like numb that enough to like get to the ER. And that's how I would use it. It really would, but. Kyle. I believe that you would. Yeah. yeah. I love that. I love that low key, that low key brag about you just, you got in there that you work out a lot. You know, I mean, if I drop that dumbbell on my hand, that's not a low key brag. I, mean, it's a, I work out every day. So it's like, it's, it's the most likely scenario that I'm going to get hurt. In my yeah. Day yeah. Day. Maybe, maybe a motorcycle accident, but, but like, it's, yeah, if I get hurt, one. it's probably going to be in the gym. That's you get in a motorcycle yo. accident. They are going to hook you up with something because it will be gruesome. I it's saw fun. a dude at the gym this week, dude his bicep snapped from here and rolled up his arm. Ah, he let out this scream in the gym and everyone was like, Oh, and he looked over and there was no, there was nothing here, here. It wrapped up to here. And I was like, Oh, it snapped off. It was the craziest thing I've ever seen. My God. Did he just, I mean, I'm sure he was like, all right, well my lift's over. (laughs) I, oh the, my god i gotta go to the hospital right I don't now think that's one of those things that heals well pain. Pain. no i agree with you like lifter who did that eddie hall like he had fucked up bicep for a while where one was huge and the other one was all knotted up and gnarled who did 
Eddie, Eddie Hall, power lifter. He was a power lifter. And so like when his bicep tore, like it was a, an amount of mass the size of my head rolling up his arm. And so like, it looked like someone had buried like half a watermelon under Dude, that's like, so... near his, like a second delt. It was disgusting. So that gross. and the, and a pec tear are really scary injuries. Mm-hmm. Uh, if, you know, for anybody that lifts, those are scary, scary injuries. So gross too. Like, I'm just imagining what that must feel like to, cause then like, like what now that his bicep exploded when he flexes now, I bet it like tries to curl up like a snail Ooh. up all the way. You yeah. Know what I mean, that's, like, that's like, cosmetic. Like, Apparently it oh works. No. Yeah. That's normally. it. They don't fix it's a different it guy too because it functions fine. It, um, yeah. it happened to, um, who's those big plates, big? those the delicious Laco plates. Maybe be Joe. Anyway, I, yeah, I've seen it in the UFC. I've seen it in other places. There, that his bicep is just as strong, both sides. Okay, but it doesn't look right, and, and I guess that's why they don't fix it because it works fine. But it can still pull just as hard. That doesn't wait. Does it still it's, function the way the other one does? It's. I mean, equal? I read it on the internet. Don't question. They it. must have reconnected it, and it just doesn't look <laughs> yeah. right. That'd be my guess. Maybe or could be. Know. Could be. I don't know, but they don't seem to fix it cosmetically. And I don't. Yeah. Want is there, to, maybe is there a warning from I, your body, like? Like if I was bench Pain. pressing so much that my wrist was about to snap, like I, I feel like I would know a good way before where I'm like, oh, this is too much. My wrist is about to snap or anything like that. Dude, I don't think we have to worry about that. I think no, those no guys- well, none of us are retarded. We're not going to lift. We're not training for the fucking Olympics. We're just trying to look, you know, good naked. I, I just don't think that we could tear a bice, uh, uh, like like our chest with 200 pounds. I just don't think that's. I think these yeah. guys. Are, I think these guys have 400 pounds and or 500 pounds and hurting themselves. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I'm looking at your body, Taylor. I'm not thinking tearing a pec is going to be something you need to worry about in the future. I don't think so. No, I got <laughs> plenty of, of pec mass up here to help me out. <laughs> hey, I'll outlift you, man, any day of the week. Absolutely. Any day of the week. Listen, dude, at my age, I'm just trying not to hurt myself in the gym. How old are you? I'm 52, dude. You yeah. look good for your age. I, great for fifty. I have this Hold concept of the injury sniper. He's just in the corner, always waiting for me to make a bad decision, and <laughs> he'll pull the trigger. He'll just he'll pop pop out a shoulder or an elbow or something. Uh, I this is how, but 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 you hit a certain age where I exercise, but I'm it's my lit on the top of the list isn't let's get in shape. Top mm. of the list is a hey, don't get hurt. Number two is get in shape because. At a certain age, when you get hurt, it takes you out of the game for so long. Mm-hmm. I could You're like, do I even want to get back in? Like, I have a torn labrum, right? Mm-hmm. And the doctor was like, you want an operation? I'm like, no. I, for what? What am I fucking? I'm not, <laughs> I'm not pitching nine innings for the Red Star. You're going to make the majors now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you did like Tommy John surgery. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but then maybe you get yeah, that freak like I'm rookie of the, the year arm. I'll work around yeah, it. Getting elective Tommy John at fifty-two <laughs> as a comedian. <laughs> <laughs> like, you and John Smoltz. <laughs> right. Uh, Look, it makes sense. I I honestly I did something to my knee the other day, and I'm like, did I tear my ACL? And because you know, an ACL is something you can walk on. Mm-hmm. Oh, I've done it's it. just it's. It's the it, the straight movement is okay. It's that side to side, right? It, and uh, I did. I, it turns out I, I just sprained it pretty good. But I was like, oh fuck! But I was saying to my wife, she was like, what's wrong? I go, I think I did something to my ACL. I'm not sure. And she goes, you, isn't that the one that that sports people operate on? I go, yeah, but I'll just wear a brace for the rest of my life. I was like, yeah. I, I, I I just I'm not doing a lot of lateral movement, and me. I'll just brace it up. I'm like, but I'm not an operation at this point in time, yeah. it would have to be some sort of life thing. Not like, do you know what I mean? Like, I I'm do. Not- so I tore my ACL and I would re-injure it jumping off like a 14 inch rock, getting out of my truck. Like I, I couldn't fucking function with normal, reasonable shit, let alone like ice hockey. Mm-hmm. So yeah. I, I, you, I had to get my leg repaired because it didn't. Hobbies. Yeah. How long yeah. ago did you walk around with it? How long did you walk around with it? How long? It was probably ten years ago. So I'm 49 now, but it's like 39 ish when I. You had a uh, surgery for it, huh? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I forgot about that. Yeah, I had it repaired. Like a bionic man over there. You've had a lot of shit put back together. <laughs> yeah, they um. So from your head patella. To toe. For, for people to know, your patella is your kneecap, and they they take the ligament from the kneecap and the shin bone, and then with that, there's like bone on either side, and they put that where the ACL was, and that that was my style of surgery. That's awesome. It- and I mean, like, I mean, the technology is awesome. Like, like, like yeah. that, 
Joe Lozon got it from a cadaver, which seems even cooler. He's part zombie. That is cooler. It yeah. had to be fresh, too. I, could, 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 <laughs> fresh cadaver? No, well, of course it would, right? Like, you couldn't take a week old cadaver and, and steal a tendon out of its leg. Like, they oh, probably yeah. had to oh, like, like go in there and find the. They, found, they just found the, the fittest meat. organ donor in the in the Boston area and then threw it in there. No, with the, it's just like salted meats, Taylor. It's not brain tissue where you're like, it's going to go bad. You can slap a ligament from last month in a leg. I mean, well, wait, maybe, wait, maybe a second, wait, a second, wait a second, wait a second, wait a second. I don't know. I, don't know. You seem right. I just want to go back to the salted meat. Yeah. yeah. Are you saying that my tendons and ligaments are like beef jerky? Well, you wouldn't want really to completely dry things. them out like that. A more moist, like imagine like a summer sausage. That that's that's what we're talking about here. That was my nickname in high school. I know. Summer, summer sausage. sausage. <laughs> <laughs> I love summer sausage. <laughs> yeah. Woody, I sent you that clip the other day of those those two guys, like they jump out of oh, a plane yeah, together it. and like Oh, they transition two or three times between like <laughs> wing suiting and parachuting. And I think they may have started off at one point, like at one point the guy is wing suiting and the other guy is just hanging onto a rope tied to him behind <laughs> yeah. it. And, and, and you, you're unaware of just how many parachutes they have. So each time they do one of these maneuvers where they cut their own shoot and just grab the other guy, you're like, how many shoots do you have left? And, you know, when it, it, by the end, it's just like they that's paraglide the off the thing mountain. I've ever seen. And then they have a bunch of altitude. They like drop the paraglider and now they're like wingsuiting and the other guy's hanging from the wingsuiter. And then he like, let's go. Like you said, there's a few transitions and I wonder how much altitude they have left. During yeah, they that. both start off with parachutes and then one guy just flies in and grabs the other guy and takes his parachute off. <laughs> and now he's now he's just hugging a man who ha- and now they're both on one shoot and he like connects to him. And then the other guy loses his shoot too. So now they're just tied together, falling through the air. But but guy number one pops a wingsuit, and now they're flying together. So he's like Batman with Robin tied to his ass. And you're like, how many shoots they have left? That's a lot of redundancies. But that wingsuit. So I've never seen a completion. Do they also have a parachute? Because they're they're going so fucking fast. Yeah, 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 yeah. They 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 eventually like pull a parachute. They usually start. they do they do that a lot from uh, base jumping and like yeah. canyons and stuff so that like where the elevation just keeps dropping and that's when that's when you see those crazy runs where they're like going through rings and stuff I think 0% chance that I ever do that Z- like really I, have you zero sk- have you ever skydived before no no I want to skydive but here's the thing man I am not a when when I say I'm like I'm I, I'm not scared of things Mm-hmm. that's like embarrassing things i i think the word like you can't embarrass me there's not there's mm-hmm. if you were like hey go do that in public i'd be like yeah I, but adrenaline stuff is not my thing and so you know jumping out of is? a plane you gotta disassociate you like, like like you don't you don't want josh wolf to go jump out of a plane you want no. you want to you want to like come up with an alter ego and he's got to go jump out of the plane and then you just don't care anymore because he's the guy doing it and just pretend like he's really good at it. That's psychotic. This is I how like I've gotten idea, through my actually. entire life. <laughs> that's like, that's I actually how FPS I, I like that idea. There's, a, there's another guy clothes. that I believe in who's really good at all kinds of things. <laughs> <laughs> and I just pretend I'm him. <laughs> that's a, that's genuinely very good. <laughs> what would that? What would my ideal me do? Oh, that yeah. guy's tight. Let's do that. <laughs> like, what would Dimitri do at this moment? <laughs> so Flea i do a lot of adrenaline shit i'm waiting for the this video is going to suck for like the first 20 seconds but i it's my um i don't know proof that i do adrenaline shit zach will show it he takes like a minute to show a video and uh yeah skip ahead like 30 seconds because it's not interesting see where that goes yeah so that's me about two weeks ago i do some adrenaline shit and is, I- um are you upside down, dude? It's like, yeah, like a front somersault. Maybe go forward 20 seconds instead of 30 so you can see it set up. But, um, oh, yeah. Maybe, you were maybe spinning it... for a long time. Yeah. yeah. I, I, this... You get dizzy. Yes. Yeah. When I finish, <laughs> I'm like like an extreme version of car sick sometimes. Mm-hmm. But, uh, but this is one of my hobbies. This is what I like to do. And the way that I like get past the adrenaline thing is this like unfounded overconfident sense of I can handle it when things go wrong. Like I have this idea 
that I am a fucking superhero. And it doesn't matter if my motorcycle veers off the side of the road or my glider just gets all jacked up into a bird's nest or whatever. Like I've got the, I've got the skill set to deal with this when things go wrong. You have to when it's something, especially like what you're doing here, where there's like procedures when, Thanks, when this goes wrong mm -hmm. or that goes wrong. And you have to you got to be like a soldier, right? Like like using that me muscle memory and training to like, OK, uh, I don't know what your procedures are, but I'm sure yeah. they're not. Later that day, that one went wrong. I, I fucked it up. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but right? like, here I am. Yeah. That's but, but see, now I wouldn't do that. But there's a video online. I wish I had the YouTube link to pop up of me eating a live cockroach, right? Oh, like that's. Oof. That stuff is like not. I don't care. How big? That didn't, like that like, didn't like a really you? big one. Okay, like like medium. Okay. Is that See, medium? I, all right. That I'm seems assuming like a pretty sizable cockroach. I right? imagine you as a very sizable. small man. It, what's that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he said he, he imagines you as a small man, so he can't tell how tall you are. <laughs> I'm teasing. Yeah. No, that's uh, is fucking disgusting. I would rather yeah, jump dude, on a plane than eat a roach. I used to, I would, I hosted a show called Naked After Dark, which was the after show for Naked and Afraid. Mm -hmm. And when we sat down with the network, they were like, "How you want to make this?" I've watched that show, by the way. That's so funny to know that's you. Like, yeah, yeah, oh, that's really cool. And so, I, when I asked the net, they were like, "How do you want to make this different?" And I was like, "Well, how about whatever the contestants ate, I'll eat." but I'll eat it live on the show. And That's they were like, idea. are you sure you want to do that? <laughs> and so the roach show, I had three options of things to eat. And before the show, they made me pick. Right. And so I could either pick the, the guy brought like this giant blue and it was like a magical blue, like a Harry Potter blue, almost like the color mm -hmm. of the, like a caterpillar, like this mm -hmm. long the way. They're like iridescent. Yeah, and thick, right? And so I go, oh, well, I might eat that. He goes, okay. He said, but just know it's going to explode in your mouth. Mm -hmm. I said, what? And he said, you're going to bite it, and it's going to shoot to the back of your throat. We all know what we're all thinking. Yeah, you're going to throw up. Right? Come. Yep, exactly. With the, <laughs> the, the Obviously, the caterpillar was taking those dick pills. Yeah. <laughs> and so, but it shoots to the back of your throat. And he was like, it's a lot. It's a lot. It's a big load. And I was like, okay. Yeah. So the next was maggots and maggots. I was out on. Yeah. Now no. I ate them baked, but I wouldn't eat them live because maggots come out of dead things. And so for me, I'm like, Eesh. and the third one was cat was a cockroach. Yeah. And he said to me, he said, um, it's going to be the cleanest thing you've ever, you'll ever eat. And I was like, what? And he said, farm raised. They only get organic food. <laughs> I go, yeah, but they're in a cage pissing and shitting all over each other he goes that's the bad part i'm like you fucking God. <laughs> <laughs> if you can get past that yeah we, so, we clean them up right, <laughs> but, <a> toothbrush. <laughs> put it right in my mouth you know what he told me afterwards after huh. he goes you know i forgot to tell you something i go what he goes i forgot to tell you to chew it up good i said <laughs> why he said well because the instinct for people is to bite it once and swallow it right and i said yeah, yeah. and he goes you know when you cut a, cat, a cockroach in half, it lives, right? I said, yeah. And he goes, oh my God. so what can happen is that top half, when you swallow it, can still be alive and it can grab onto the side of your throat Jesus and stay Christ. there. Ooh. I'm going to eat a hot dog. Yeah, dude, I was like, <laughs> you don't want to give me a heads up on that pre- yeah. Like chew it, chew your food real well. I did. I was imagining <laughs> how I would do it and I imagined making sure I crushed the head completely. Uh, and, that's what and, I did and like held the legs together because I'm a little afraid those legs might be barbed like like the way that uh, grasshoppers legs can have those uh, little yeah. little barbs in, in a row on them uh, that's awful man I, I whenever I'd watch Survivor Oof. or um, or Fear Factor rather and they would eat that awful shit that that was always my thought like I wouldn't mind them sicking the dogs on me I've had that done it's fun when you're in a bite suit and they sick attack mm -hmm. dogs on you it hurts a little but it's fun um, yeah and getting drugged behind horses, I remember that. That might be the first episode of Fear Factor. But whenever they had to eat those goddamn cave-dwelling spiders, do you remember those things? They look like little land crabs. Yeah, they're like yeah. front legs. Do this thing where they're like like this. Mm -hmm. And I was like, no, I can't, because they would eat them like quickly, and and they would be bleeding from the lips because those things are so like horny and barbed. Yeah. Oh yeah. 
season one of Fear Factor, I, I rewatched some of that with my wife within the last year because, you know, I just, just remembered it being entertaining. And it's like wild how disorganized that show is, where it's just like a 28 year old oh. Joe Rogan. Yeah. And he's just screaming at some accountant from Cincinnati, like, you can do it, Justin. You can do it, Justin. And it's just like, you can tell Joe's like, Ugh. like getting grossed out by it as well. Sometimes yeah. dry heaving. Every time I watched that show as a kid, Joe I would was be a great like, coach. Like, 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 I remember like a, the, 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 the dragging the behind the horses looked like a cakewalk compared yeah. to all of the eating stuff. Like every time they had to like draw lots for something and it's like you, you have to jump off of a, you know, quick build building. We threw up to look like an old saloon into this net. And it's so scary. And you have to eat three of your co-hosts fingernails. And it's like, <laughs> Oh, uh, do I get to pick? It's like, no, yeah, dude, all get, me the finger. No. <laughs> get me the finger. You know what else yeah. I did? I put a leech on my butthole. Ah, really? Is that a treatment for, for a hemorrhoid? For was fun? it a hemorrhoid treatment? Did he like so? Suck it I, out? I also did a show for Facebook called Josh Wolf's Wonderful World of Weird. Feels great. And one of the we went to a leech who she, you know, medicinally, she was talked about how leeches are great, right? And yeah. um she said, you know, if you have a hemorrhoid, this leech will suck it out. And right. I was like, Well, put it on there. It's gonna be funny, right? And she was like, Okay. You just happened so, to have a hemorrhoid at hurt. that moment. Oh, because I carry on. Tell your story. I, <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's funny. First of all, you have to, I had to wear a diaper home because it keeps bleeding. Uh -huh. But she asked me, she goes, you want me, you want to keep the leech? I'm like, for, for what? She was <laughs> like, well, I can't use it again. I'm like, do you think I'm going to? Do you think I'm just going to put this leech on my asshole every night before I go to sleep? <laughs> sure, sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 I had also been taking some natural stuff. So was it the leech? Was it the stuff I was taking? But I got better. Yeah, so it like, wasn't the leech. Well, are, are explain to me the... <laughs> 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 you said you were having some issues with your liver and cleanliness, and I don't know what the fuck you're talking about. <laughs> so I had some I, I had some toxins built up in my liver, How did and you I know? needed to flush them out. What was, yeah. what was the first sign of toxins in the liver? Ooh, there's a... There's a bunch um but uh discoloration of my skin oh, wow. um and my eyeballs uh, i was a little yellow oh no Shit. jaundice and um mm. the uh it's serious yeah the leech look man like i said i'm up for whatever if you think it helps, you know let's what give it to you. you think it leech on my butthole of, helps yeah. put it on there let's see what happens the, the <laughs> most works, unbelievable the most unbelievable part about that is that you found a magic leech that fixes cirrhosis of the liver or something. And you said, no, I don't want to keep it. <laughs> <laughs> like, well, you, you know, could be, could be I, $30,000 a fucking pop for that thing. Yeah. Be I kept the butthole door, leech just worker. because I felt like we knew each other so well. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like you, yeah. you already were sucking on my butthole for 30 minutes. So but I should probably take leech. you home. Yeah, you, use a, you keep the liver leech. You can have the butthole leech. I, I, <laughs> I'd have never. I, I, I wouldn't have agreed to the butthole leech from this from the get go. If I'm being honest, but I guess if I were really worried about my liver and medical science had been exhausted, I would go to. No, nope, still wouldn't go to leeches. Your liver's <laughs> right in the middle, right? Like under the stir, like right in the it's on middle the side over here. Right? Yeah, it's on the side, you can. Which it. side? Right side? Left side? Right side. Right side. Okay. So if you're, but here's the thing, Kyle. Like I'm not anti doctors either i'm open to if i have an ailment and you think you have something that can fix it i may not do it but i'm open to listening i will listen to mm -hmm. all that shit because i sure. i will tell you this as i've gotten older i've leaned way more eastern medicine than i have western mm -hmm. like look dude if i get cancer i know i'm getting chemo and all that stuff but i really believe that western medicine does has too many band-aids and not enough cures Right. I want to know why okay. it's happening. Like I don't want you to just fix it for the next two weeks. Fixing. Yeah. 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 That, that's a that's a fair thing where it's like, oh, you're you're having a lot of pain in your knees. 
well, I don't want to tell you to lose 280 pounds. Here's Vicodin. That's right. That's <laughs> right. Like, That's right. That's so right. now you can walk on your knee and destroy it even more, pulverize it like your Fred <laughs> Flintstone, you know, just destroying it at the quarry. And you won't know until you need yeah. even more Vicodin. And then you need more Vicodin. <clears throat> oh, speaking of yeah. that, did you see that thing I linked where um, my friend got Wings Redemption's um, Times article framed? It costs two hundred dollars. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's the link I put in the the chat over there. Like, like show, show it, Zach. Like this cost him two hundred dollars to frame. That's how big of a fan this man is of Wings. That's look, what is look that? how nice the frame is. That dude, my diplomas are framed like at that level. It's it's got oh, matting yeah. around it. Yeah, that's matted. <laughs> really good. <laughs> Yo, he didn't go to Rite Aid and get a frame. That <laughs> no, 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 like, no, it's literally like a two hundred dollar frame job. Like, like, it's professional. For wings grade. this article. <laughs> What's it's the article? It. He's gonna yes. put it on his wall next to his diplomas. Like, Someone like, fill like, Josh in. Um, it's a long story, but that's an that we know that guy. He he he's like a notorious internet troll slash guy who gets trolled. And recently, the New York Times did this article about um, how he gets sort of quasi bullied online and. And that sort of thing, and um, it, it's kind of a big inside joke. But but this guy's gotten that framed. Uh, I guess that's the long and the short of it. I, you know, if he's a troll, I don't feel bad for him at all. Well, I'm not going to go into the story. I've to, people don't want to hear me tell you the Wings Redemption story. Plus, I couldn't squeeze it into this three hour uh, show. There's that we've two got sides here. of the story, though. He 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 can be a little. Yeah, grumpy towards his fans, and his fans can hit it right back. And you wonder if the punishment's worth the crime on both sides. What was there a punishment? I guess I missed what happened. Okay, so <clears throat> like they are taking wings and acting like he's the Uvalde shooter, or he's the um, you know, he's in Ukraine, or he's a journalist that just died in this thing. Every time there's a major event, they say that he's behind it, or they use his image. Um, they, of course, harass him in real life. They've sent mechanics, prostitutes, pizzas, SWAT they teams. They pose as him and harass and harass children, um, and uh, and uh, get the parent. And then other people go and like report the fake account that wasn't really him to the parents of the children. So then the children get involved, and the and the parents end up making like TikTok videos, like this man right here is a predator. We need to get this man. This man, Wings of Redemption, he's a predator. And it's like, but it's why all, him? What did he? What did he do? You know, so like for that. example, he yells at a guy he plays games with too much, right? Like, like, I hope your parents die in a car fire, sort of stuff. So, does that warrant calling the SWAT team and sending it to his house? I would think not, but probably not. Here's the asymmetric thing. warfare. It's um, he's a fascinating man. He really is a, a human char character. There are several documentaries that have been made about him on YouTube that are like. Over an hour or two, if you search Wings Redemption uh, down the rabbit hole, I think you'd be fascinated. Um, they've heard us here talk about it just way too much. But the reasons that people dislike him, the reasons people give him a hard time are it's it's so many. It, and it's span, it's a span of years. Right. Because like it's not like the people who didn't like him in 2011 are still around hating on him. Like, like there's a guy who found out about Wings Redemption today and he's like, where do I join up? <laughs> <laughs> he's like wait a minute you guys are in this together against him sign me the fuck up i'm yeah i'm new here like there's plenty of guys who are like recruiting like like daily it's like the armed forces right there's been people retired there's purple hearts in the whale watchers like like you know there's it's a whole thing i'm gonna go down that rabbit hole it's fun <laughs> it's fun yeah but if there were a museum i could be the tour guide yeah, dude, yeah, you sound good. <laughs> yeah. What is his accusation? Do we want to cover this? I'm out of the loop on what what accusation is there against Wings? Oh, did he say that I was addicted to um, Adderall? Oh, oh, that. that, but is that what, what is, what, now, what? Why? What is the issue he has with you guys? He used to be a co-host on this show, so we know him really well. He's been on. Was like, I ever on the show when he was a co-host? I don't think so. No, I think you no. were post Wings, but he was on the first like. I'm making up a number, 300 shows, something like that. Like he was on here for a while. And, uh, uh, and I know him. I, he's, he's my friend, but uh, not I, all I the interactions know. with him are positive. What did he say? Yeah. I, I, don't, I don't know what he said about me. It, look, he, he, he said he, that you were addicted to Adderall is really all I know. Yeah, that's what I, and the thing about that is like, I've talked about like 
having issues with alcohol, smoking way too much weed. We just talked about like um, doing LSD. too many mushrooms and like and humiliating myself at a Walmart. I've told that story. Why would I keep my secret Adderall use um, a secret? I don't know. I've talked about having prescriptions for Adderall since I was a kid, but I haven't gotten like a prescription filled like a second time in my adult life. I don't think I just occasionally get a bottle and then use it sparingly over the course of like years at a time, like taking them like on moving days and stuff. So the idea that I had an Adderall issue was just comical. Um, and like, how would he know? Right. Like, like, like he's the guy who doesn't know what marijuana smells like. Right. Like, <laughs> and he's all, and, and like, look at the glass house he's coming from where his, where his own brother is like the ex con for like being a drug dealer and his little sister was was doing drugs too. Like 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 they're all pill heads over there in that trailer he lives in. So I don't you're know why saying he's like you've been accused of being a druggie by a subject matter expert. That's the framing I'm going with too. No, that, <laughs> that just made no sense to me because that's the one thing that I've always been so careful with is like not taking that stuff regularly. I and like um I think I was saying yeah. like last year that I think the best way to take Adderall is like maybe once a week so that you actually, it actually works. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. That was a weird thing for him to say, just kind of throwing something at the wall, seeing if it would stick. Yeah. And I definitely didn't do it like, uh, yeah. during my last fitness thing. I remember, um, I think, um, uh, like mentioning that I could get a prescription to Adderall for Adderall to Derek one time. And he's like, Oh no, that's like a nuclear option. That's not healthy and not mm -hmm. conducive to anything good. And I was like, oh, okay, good to know. Like, well, dude, when's the last time you even talked to Wings? Like, I, we text, oh. almost, like, we text every day. I can't remember <laughs> the last time you even mentioned Adderall ever. Um, maybe like a year ago. Uh, I haven't talked to Wings in. Oh, I don't even know how long. Maybe that night we played PUBG together, like six years ago or something, five years ago. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know his number or anything. But I don't know why he's like randomly makes up stuff about people, like when he has so many issues on his plate already. Yeah. Yeah. What do you mean? No That's exactly why, dude. Is. You know what I mean? It, it, it's a it's easy to deflect away to other people. If you yeah. got if there's a ton of shit coming to you, but let me ask you something. Both Kyle and what do you guys have talked about? All three of you have been talking about working out. Mm -hmm. All of you are workout guys. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Can I tell you? I started. So I'm a two day. I'm a two. I work out twice a day. I'm okay. a bit, it, it's kind of one, one of the workouts is like a three to five mile hike. I do with my dog uh -huh. every morning and then in the gym, but I started Pilates. Have you guys ever taken Pilates? No, mm. I don't really know what it is. Dude. Yeah. How's it different my, than yoga? My body has never felt better in my life. It's such a crazy combination of strength. Um, and stretching and but like dude uh, uh, you're using your entire body all of the time basically mm -hmm. it's such a great workout and so different than lifting weights and if you are interested in your core looking a certain way mm -hmm. you know i've never had my abs look like this in my life even in my 20s this nice. this Pilates, how long have you been doing it at this point two months two months nice it, well, how is it different than yoga because i know that's isn't that yoga's thing as well it's all about like balancing and and i mean balance is about core right yeah or is it like a more he cardio heavy version of yoga less well there's a lot more res it's a lot more resistance it's oh a lot so more you're like you're doing yeah, stuff yeah, like yeah, with yeah, machines and things oh yeah if you're on the reformer it's the machine it's it's crazy. And look, I'm a, 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 I've always been, my addiction has always kind of fallen back into working out, right? Whenever I've jumped off everything else. Mm -hmm. So I've tried everything. I've done a little bit of everything throughout my life. This is like, I, f I feel aches and pains not there. Like those parts of my body that I couldn't body, I could never quite target with the weights. Mm -hmm. This Like the sides feeling stronger in your core and the, you know what it does? And this is the best way I can describe it to you guys. You ever get to a weight where you're, you feel like my muscles can handle this, but my arms are shaking or it feels like my, all those, the stabilizing muscles right. mm -hmm. that are needed to lift big weights. 
Pilates hits all the time because it's constant resistance. So sure. you're always engaged. I still don't know what it is. Is, is it something you, you went to a gym and did a classroom environment with, with like you and so, a bunch of other people? I, I go to a, a, something I'm on a reformer. It's called a reformer machine. Have you seen the machine? I just, I just linked the reformer machine. Uh, hopefully that's the right okay. one. Zach, can you pull that up? So you hop on the reformer machine, man. It looks like a, it looks like a rowing machine. torture machine. Yeah, it looks like a rowing machine. I see. It's a rowing machine basically, but it has other attachments. It's, it's a rowing machine, except it'll, fu- oh, that's not it. Okay. Is that not it? That's not what I look like when I'm. <laughs> really? That's, that's, how that's how I'm picturing not, you. Really not what I look like, but that's, <laughs> it's kind yeah. of that. It, it's kind of that. Not it, not really, but. <laughs> that's what they call the reformer <laughs> machine. Look, damn, she's working out. Yeah, dude. I've so all of this, I'm, I'm like flexible in a way now that I've never been, but the flexibility isn't a yoga flexibility. Because it's resistance also. So there's a lot of strength in there. My hips are stronger than ever been. I can deadlift more now than I've ever been able to because of the muscles around the muscles that I use in the smaller that I usually use to deadlift are so much stronger than now. It's crazy. So you're you're still doing traditional lifting as well. You're just adding in the Pilates. Yeah. Yeah. I, 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 I work with weights probably four times a week. Okay. Yeah, weight training but, is the most fun. It's more fun than cardio. It's th- maybe I could see myself giving this a go, but like getting discouraged when I sucked at the flexibility part immediately from being so that's the best part, fat. dude. That's what kept me ca- fucking coming back. I don't know about you, but when I can't do something, I need to show up tomorrow until I can figure out how to do it. And so or this never is never try again. In. <laughs> yeah, dude. <laughs> They're never try again. I'm like, yeah. I'm it, but like this that, is that like what I did with piano. If you and have, guitar. <laughs> you have... <laughs> did you try to, did you try to learn to play piano? Yeah. My mom made me and she just lost hope after like two years of me, not like just straight up refusing to practice. You don't still like, have the piano, do you? Cause we could swap broken hobbies. No, I do. I do not. Have... <laughs> I'm not going to pick up guitar either. <laughs> but that would be great. If you had a piano that you were never, we'd just swap them over. Uh, well, it looks you both good never do something different. Nope. The yeah, I, I don't know the flexibility Pilates. You kind of get my mind spinning. I wonder if I'd like it. So you do it at Woody. Home. You should try a class. A class. So I should go to a gym and figure out if I like it. Well, the, well so I would go honestly to a private instructor first, especially on the reformer, mm-hmm. so you know what the fuck to do. Right. Okay. They get you the right, you know, poses, how to do everything. I would do one or two in there. And then I would hit a class, man. And like I said, you're um, my posture, like when, when you, I walk you down wear the street, a shirt like that, and basketball mm-hmm. shorts and CrossFit sneakers. Like, is that about right? That's what I'd show up. I in. mean, you're going to take your sneakers off, but yeah, leotard. Okay, leotard would be great. Make sure just one nut is hanging out on either side. Yeah, like a handlebar <laughs> mustache. What am I, a rookie? <laughs> you got a wet spot on the front from seeing everyone else in the class. Yeah. <laughs> you, yeah. you don't understand. I take <laughs> nine pills a day. You know, <laughs> I'm constantly I'm brimming. I'm brimming with pills. I'm full of compounds right now. Make it up state and not work overtime. My penis always has like a head of foam on it, like a beer. Yeah. Oh, I think that's an STD, though. Probably. But yeah, give it a try, man. I would love to know what you say, what you think. Yeah, I'm tempted because it, uh... it's like you like. So I've been lifting for a couple of years now, like hard. You know, years more than that where I like quit now and then, or, or I had periods where I just did like lots of push ups and pull ups. But as far as like a good push pull legs routine, over a couple of years now, I've been on it. And sometimes I feel like I'm really good in those movements, and the stabilizing muscles around it need to get a little more action. So you're you're winning me over. This will make you your body feel a way it's never felt before. That's all I'm gonna say. Oh yeah, no reason yeah. not to try. <laughs> <laughs> so, it so make like you feel stuff. a way that you've never felt before. Like, yeah, I mean, like someone could rip my fingernails out and claim that. Like, <laughs> true. I'm not saying That's, it's good or bad. I'm just gonna say you're gonna feel different. That's my right. mind's open. So, so Pilates yeah. is like prostate stuff. By the way, this is the second time you've brought up fingernails. Is that something that you <laughs> like? <laughs> is that one of your? Th- have you ever like, eaten somebody be. else's fingernails? Is that a no? Only it's, the it's, ones it's, that I take in battle. 
Yeah, <laughs> Kyle's got a bunch of them on a necklace. <laughs> That's my first move. Like, like, <laughs> he clips his fingernails. <laughs> Dude, like a guy, a guy on like a medieval battlefield who sees the guy who takes noses and he's got like nine of them and he's like, I'm never fucking catching up. I'm going fingers. And he's, he's taking <laughs> 10 from every guy. And it's like, that guy's taking all the fingers. And then back at camp, he's like, That's ridiculous. Did anyone see me take all the fingers? <laughs> Wait a second. Did they take body parts when they used to fight? Yeah, they would take trophies. Yeah. Like the Vikings used to make like ear helmets and stuff to they show, like, hey, do. look Today at look at us. Do. Hey, Britons and monks, we're coming for you, and look at all the ears of Englishmen we're wearing. Yeah, can you hear me? Like, like that, like threatening them. Yeah. I don't think they did the last part, but but like they might have. <laughs> they I'm definitely sure jo did. jokes were around look, back then. No yeah, they way. definitely did that. They definitely. I did guarantee that. you. You think Tarantino made that shit up? No, I guarantee people <laughs> have been cutting others' ears off and going hello, hello into that cut off ear. For thousands of yeah. years, do you think reservoir dogs? Thousands. Kyle, do you think like there were there were practical jokers back then, and 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 they were like, "Hey, well, I'm gonna cut off this dude's face and wear it to dinner." Like, do you know? Do you? <laughs> I, mean, I mean, maybe not the whole face, but 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 I'm just saying somebody made that little gag that was like, <laughs> "I'm Steve-O, and this is Unleash a Plague of Frogs in Egypt." <laughs> and then they just does that. That's, that's what the whole Bible is. It's just pranks. <laughs> Did you see that? Um, this is a bit of a change of topic. Thank God. Um, but there was controversy <laughs> over the uh, the Buzz Lightyear uh, movie that came out because there's a lesbian kiss. No, didn't. I? I'm not in the demo of, of Buzz Lightyear anymore. See, I'm I, not I don't know either. anything about it. I'm not either. And and the worst part is, I think I'm probably wrong about this, but I think they got the uh, the guy that used to be Captain America to voice him. Um, but that's Tim Allen's shtick, yeah, right? Just get like, Tim Allen, he's not dead. Tim Allen was conservative, though. Like, 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 like here's like, like here's my idea with like no uh, 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 information whatsoever. Disney didn't want to hire conservative Tim Allen to to voice uh, uh, Woody anymore. Or, that wasn't no, 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 oh, um, yeah, not that was Woody because Tom Hanks does Woody. Uh, but wait, 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 wait. Buzz. Who does? Who does? Tim Buzz? Allen does it's Buzz Lightyear. Yeah, yeah, Tom yeah, Hanks right. does right. Woody. He yeah. just. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was a younger. The only reason they didn't go Tim Allen, it was a younger Buzz Lightyear. You tell do me they still Tim, do Tom, Tim Allen has old voice now and he can't do it anymore. It's a younger. They just went with a younger. That's all. They just wanted a younger actor. There's I no mean, but way think about like like when you. Th I can hear it. I mean, I'm in the age bracket that like when that came out, I was a kid. Like when I hear to infinity and beyond, it's in Tim Allen's voice. Like it's a Without very, that. like that line is very much like the you movie, it. Yeah, yeah. but also well, it's like none of these kids really, or no, I guess they probably, they've probably seen the original you've one. You've seen the first yeah. one. They've seen them yeah, all. I'm sure like, they've, like, they've seen all of them. So, so that is weird to change. So there's the a big controversy actor. because there's a lesbian kiss between some Pixar characters at some point. And uh, I keep seeing these pictures of theaters in the U S where the, there's like warning parents. There's a, there's a lesbian kiss like 12 minutes into the movie. Don't worry, we're going to fast forward through it, but we might not be exact. <laughs> <laughs> You're fast forwarding through shit that you pay for? <laughs> well, they yeah. banned it in China and Iran and a bunch of other places. Maybe oh. Saudi Arabia. Well, I mean, if if like uh, if China banned your movie, that it's not going to make a lot of money at this point, uh, right? Isn't that why they're, they're trying to get the Chinese market so I, big? I actually don't know. Disney's it, been standing so their ground it, a little more on that. I don't know. What were you saying? Who's been standing their ground? Disney Disney. Has. Yeah, like um, I don't know Taylor, but if you were to tell me, oh, without China, you lose half the world, so you can't make any money, I'd believe yeah. it. If you it's were to say there's no money in China, they just pirate movies, I believe that too. So I don't know. I know, like, because some of the superhero movies and like some of the blockbusters go gangbusters over there and make a shit ton. So like, have, it's definitely on the radar. That implies the money's getting back to the... Marvel. <laughs> Oh, I don't know. What's <laughs> yeah. sales? Can have I you eat? seen any of the bootleg movie posters from overseas? Of course. And those the are they're hilarious. Amazing. <laughs> it's just like like it's like a like they'll they'll put like uh the Godfather in Romania and it'll be called like fat Italians. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like that's like how they do stuff on the <laughs> on their posters. It's great. Have you ever watched uh, like a real bootleg, like something that was shot on handy cam? Yeah, mm -hmm. I haven't. I don't think I have. Oh yeah, not in a long time, dude. Do you remember? Not, what but I mean, was? listen. <laughs> do you guys remember seeing um, the bootleg video, the Jesus versus Santa Claus? No, that's no, that's where the either. South Park guys got their start. Oh, oh you really? didn't? No, they made yo the OG 
VHS that was just passed around. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Santa versus Jesus. Oh, that was in the South Park document. Yes, I, this is yo. I but that's what the vi- look. You guys are younger than me, but like, Woody, you remember Faces of Death? Yes. Those that- were the, those viral videos of just a VHS being passed around, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But the Faces of Death Death was the first one of those that I remember. Faces of Death. But that 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 listeners. Jesus versus versus Santa Claus was amazing, dude. Spirit of Christmas. That's what it was. <laughs> yeah, spirit of I mean, they did. I think basketball was before they started South Park. Uh, Joey Diaz. Yeah, was he? I remember that? when. Listen, Joey and I were s- struggling at the time, and I remember when he booked Hey cocksucker. I just, I just booked basketball. I'm like, I don't know what that is. He goes, Me neither. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, that's a great movie. I, uh, I really, it is I love basketball. I like, I, I like in the middle of it, South like, Park. You, oh, was it? Because I, I thought I remembered. Uh, Whichever one of the two does Cartman's voice, like he did Cartman's voice, like making fun of the other characters. Yeah. Like, oh man, you're so gay. You suck, man. Like, just, and it, I remember watching back and being like, that's just like the pre Cartman. Like, he just made that, like his shitty yeah. person voice into Cartman. But man, they're, they're doing great still. Like, they're not doing great still, but like compared to the fall off of like Simpsons, Family Guy, all the rest of those shows, well, even Sunny, that- like South Park has not dropped off as much. Well, yeah. Their drop off is less to do with the content and more to do with them insisting on full season story arcs when most of their hardcore fans are like, no, one off silliness. Like, that's what I would prefer. I don't know if you've been keeping up with them. They just released a new special that's, you know, another one of those hour and something mm-hmm. long specials. I thought it was really good. What's this um, one on? Oh, fuck. Um, Cartman is so poor now that he lives in, you know, those hot dog restaurants that are shaped like hot dogs? Yeah. Yeah. He's living, <laughs> he's living, and so the school bus drops him off and it's the walk it's the this the most shameful walk of shame he has to make to his <laughs> hot dog house and then he goes in there and his mom's like he's like living in like a fold-out oven or some shit like it's, <laughs> it's super sketchy and he's begging his mom to get fake tits so that she can land a rich guy so they don't have to live in a fucking hot dog house. hilarious and, and she's, like, a good she's like even if i wanted them they're ten thousand dollars so without spoiling it, he goes out onto a scheme and tricks people into giving him ten thousand dollars. Shows back up with the ten grand, and she's like, "No, no, I, I never said I would do it. I just said you don't even have. Where did you get the money?" And so <laughs> he gives himself breast implants because if she's not going to land, yeah, there you go. <laughs> if you're not going to do it, I will. <laughs> and uh, and so he gets the breast implants, and uh, and and you know. That's so stupid. See, that's great. Just stupid retardation. That's that's it's like an hour of that. And then there's a side plot with Randy and his weed farm. Um, nah, enough, <laughs> enough of integrity. It wasn't oh, funny in the worse. first episode. Oh, you know, if you don't think it's funny yet, just imagine when it's not even a weed farm anymore. It's an allegory for streaming services. <laughs> <laughs> It's not even about weed anymore. It's it, there, there's like le- there's levels to this that we're supposed to like care about at this point. They really do you guys watch Archer at all? You yeah, watch yeah, Archer. Yeah. All right. Back so here's day. what happened with Archer. Like when he went one, two, into the three, coma, I, I hated it, and so I they didn't watch for like three years because they did like three seasons of make believe. Um, like because he's in the coma, it's just like fever dreams, right? So all the characters mm-hmm. are mixed up. One of them, he's at like a like like crime noir. He's like a detective, and one he's in space, and one he's a pirate or some shit. I hated all that because I watch Archer for the world's greatest spy, and that's <laughs> it. So yeah. I. But I clicked the other day, and they just started a new season. I guess where he comes out of the fucking coma, and oh. and 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 he's like, all of his old jokes don't work because it's been like four years, and they're not saying those phrases anymore, and they're not landing. And it's Cyril has been pumping iron, and he's like actually fucking jacked, and and he's like a combat expert now, so he's like totally taking Archer's so place. He comes out of his thing, and he's like phrasing, and everyone is like. We don't. We're not doing that anymore. <laughs> I, think he said, I think he said "sploosh" or something like that. We don't sploosh anymore. We don't sploosh anymore. We don't do that. No, 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 no. So yeah, they're back to like being a detective agency. So I'm gonna watch more of it now. But to answer your question, yeah, I watch Archer. Mm-hmm. I enjoy a little Archer myself. I, I like, you know, honestly, if I was gonna tell you outside of, I think Family Guy for me will always Very be funny. my favorite. But. What got me hooked on that shit? Ren and Stimpy, man. Do you ever really? feel that was one I didn't like? 
Are like, you didn't? You I thought it was so dark, dude. So dark. Well, I was a young kid. I was like nine watching it. And I oh, remember that's scary like, for you. I remember thinking like I shouldn't be watching this. I was like right. 14 and I felt yeah. the same <laughs> way. Yeah. It felt gross. Like I remember like like the eyelids were always like being opened up and stuff dumped yeah. in there. Or like or like Look cat at my teeth. And then they were like, always so, like, like he'd be yeah. asleep and he'd like open the other guy's mouth and like fill it full of cat shit or something. And, and I was like, no, <laughs> you know, this isn't I don't know who this is for, but it's not for 15 year old me. Um like, it was for me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, that one was fucking bizarre. Yeah. I, and it, I haven't even thought about it in forever. What else did they make? Was Ren and Stimpy? Who? No, it was Beavis and Butthead that uh, Mike Judge did. That's Mike Judge. Beavis and Butthead was horrible. It was just trying to figure what? out a format, and then it became King of the Hill, which is one of the greatest shows ever. Yeah, Beavis Wait, and Butthead did not make me laugh. I didn't. Back laugh. up. Did you say Beavis and Butthead was? So you 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 were not the right age, and it was. You, I never it, was my whole life. It was so round. It was. I was am the I right age, there? and I'll admit that it was groundbreaking, and that it was like just a little dirtier. And and the, the, the cartoons weren't like that at the time. Having right. said that, it was a little simple, right? It was it was the same love, jokes all oh. over again, the same cornholio, the same rants, the same like it, it was. It was a little simple to me. I didn't love it. So when they did the movie, when they did Beavis and Butthead do America. They kind of stepped their animation game up and they actually yeah. had like a narrative story because they were like on a bus, if I remember correctly, like literally traveling across the United States instead of what the show seemed like it normally was, was just them sitting on the couch, like talking about buttholes. And and uh, and I just I, that got old so fast, like like yeah. even like 12 year old me or whatever I was when I saw it for the first time. I was like, you know, Bart Simpson tells like five jokes yeah. before <laughs> and these guys are still sitting on the couch talking about buttholes or whatever. Yeah. And like pull like like pulling his shirt up over his head and like like and also found the animation like slightly disturbing. It seemed like they mm -hmm. were like really aggressive, like with the eyebrows and the like giant eyes and stuff. It was like, too it was simple. I mean, you're talking about all the things that I liked about it. <laughs> Josh, here's my question to you. <laughs> Everything you say, like all they did was talk about buttholes. I'm like, yeah, that made me laugh. <laughs> <laughs> you ever feel pressured to talk about when you talk about what you like and don't like? You're in this industry, right? You you might know some of these people. Yeah. Are you allowed to say like, oh, Ren and Stimpy, that that fucking sucked. It, it wasn't for me. Sure. In case in case you run into Ren, like, what's he gonna say? No, <laughs> I, I don't know who makes that, but Josh might. <laughs> you know, Josh would be like, yeah, yeah, guy made that. He went on to this, and right now, if I badmouth that guy, maybe I don't get in my next role. No, I will tell you something right now. I uh, am under no illusion that I'm gonna get hired for any role. <laughs> so I feel pretty free to say whatever the fuck I want. Good. Um, but I will tell you this, mm. and I know this about me. Yeah. I'm easily pleased in this way. Mm -hmm. I am not, I don't go in with a critic's mind to anything. I don't go in like, I hope I fucking like this. I go in like, Hey, this is how I'm choosing to be entertained. So let, let me be entertained. And I don't go in like if I know I'm going to see Top Gun, right? Which I did. Mm -hmm. I know what I'm going to see, man. I'm not going to see, you know, No Country for Old Men. I'm going to see some cheesy 80, 80s. Yeah. I want to hear some Tom Cruise lines. You know what I mean? I want, see, I want to see him pretend how, to be a straight male. I want to see <laughs> all the things <laughs> that how I long like. Were you, how long do you get into the movie before they play the song? What's that? How long do you get into the movie before they play the song? You know, the song. In the new Top Gun. Yeah. yeah. I don't remember. Oh, oh shit. <laughs> but I do know this. I'm in for any Tom Cruise movie. At any time. And I'm going to tell you why. As soon as he hung off the airplane, mm -hmm. I was like, are you hanging off an airplane for my entertainment? I'll buy a fucking ticket to that. Did you learn how to scale that mountain with no ropes and no attachments for my entertainment? Yeah, I'll buy a ticket for that. Did you learn how to fly a fucking fighter jet for my Probably entertainment? Not. Probably not. Probably he did. <laughs> did he really? Yes, dude. That's it's tight. all over YouTube. What kind of like like I know that the Navy like wouldn't let him touch the controls. So what was Kyle, he flying? Oh, he's Tom Cruise, but they would. I, I mean, I watched the Navy. 
Dude, the Navy would absolutely be willing to like throw 10 planes into the sea after the recruitment surge they're going to get because of this. I, I'll it. say this. I, I saw Tom wrong. Cruise right now, drive a Formula wrong, One but... car. And like, so I saw Richard Hammond drive a Formula One car. They kind of played it up on how hard it is to drive. They put Tom Cruise in it and they're like, oh, oh, I see. Tom Cruise is already a race car driver. He knows how to drive <laughs> race cars going into this. And he's like, he's, he's like, not no, as well. good as the Formula One drivers right now, but give him a little practice and he could be. These dude yeah. pulled G's on their faces. Hey. I'm if you're doing that for my entertainment, I'm buying the ticket. You have earned the ticket. And so I, I I'm on board for that stuff, dude. But but for me, like I want to enjoy my entertainment, right? So that's sure. the attitude I go in with, which is look, I know what it takes not just to write something, not just to find someone to make it. And then to get distribution, like there's so many. So once you get something to the screen, I'm already 80% on your side. It has to be <laughs> such a pile of shit for me to be like, yeah, I can't even do it. Because I, I, I know. I into, no, when the movie starts, I put on my white gloves. I put on my fucking white gloves because I'm ready to check for dust. All right. Mm. I wanna, I'm going to inspect that fucking weapon before I hand it back to you. Make sure it's squared away. But uh, Why? I, because I expect uh, if I'm going to pay for something, I want a very good product. And I like looking for um, like, like if I can't find any dust, then that's the mark of a really good movie. Right. Or at least one that I couldn't find the flaws and like especially technical stuff and uh, and little like um, um, but continuity errors and stuff like that. Like there's a I, scene in a Casino where uh, there's a guy sitting in a limo having a conversation with a guy out the window and his Zippo is like moving around the fucking seat. Like every time they cut back and forth, the Zippo's in a different place. And I'm just like completely out of the movie. <laughs> I will. I agree with you on things like that, man. On things like that, that you should catch in editing. Yeah. I agree. The I, coffee cups but, and Game of Thrones. <laughs> 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 Can we talk about Game of Thrones real quick? Because they're making a Jon Snow like sequel. They're which, in essence, is just starting up season nine. They're going is to do the season same nine. Yeah. Well, that, that's the idea. Like, there's no way to recast. Well, I didn't. Jon Snow. I didn't know. You're gonna like, want to have Jon Snow and fucking yeah. that red-haired giant dude and the wolf fucking touring the north of the wall. And there's no way that that doesn't lead them back to every single one of the main characters coming back onto the show. They're talking about starting the show back up. They really? lost their shot. What are they gonna do? Just be like disregard seasons six, seven, and eight. No, they're then, going to pick up at the at the end, like like right where we left off. Jon Snow's on right the wall. Where, but where we left off is the absolute ruination of the entire story, all the lore, all the prophecies, everything. So what are they gonna what are they gonna progress Wait, from? Can't they do a priest uh, like a preaker? Like a no, priest? Why, why can't pre they, what is that word? Pre why can't they pick it up from where they are? Did they really solve all the problems? Did they they seemingly I'm, did. In, in like a, about, all I know is what they're what they're talking about doing. It's in pre-production is a Jon Snow sequel. So that's you know the idea would he's he's obviously back uh, north of the wall or at the wall guarding it. So like it's going to be that from, from what I don't know from what because the wildlings all came down and then the wall exploded at the end because the dragon came through it. Yeah. I, what I about know. the night king? Oh yeah. He's dead. Arya killed him. Yeah, but all I'd those like, other I'd threats in watch, the realm, like I'd rather watch Arya like traveling the Easter lands with her fancy magic dagger, eating pussy. Like that's the <laughs> I want it to be like 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 Xena. Okay. I want it to be like Xena, but with Arya, like fucking trap. Like get let her get like a little Gabriella type character, like a like an even younger uh, like blonde chick with long hair who's not as butch, and 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 let them like tour around the like like the the, the yeah, unexplored lands or wherever they were going to. If I was going to see a spinoff from one person, that's who I would want to see the spinoff from too. I don't need to see the eating pussy because I got the internet, but uh, and I, I can I see the really eating pussy. You know, yeah. Yeah. I I have the same opinion as Josh in that because they'll be like, "Oh, the tits and the pussy and everything and the nudity and this." I'm like, "Dude, it's an action show. Like, yeah. I if, take that out and put more swords and battles and like charges of horses like that. So wrong. That would You're so wrong. Oh, you, You're so you, wrong. Taylor. I may be on, on the wrong side oh, of the you're an imbecile, Taylor. That's like Taylor, saying, you know you nothing about the, good look, television. Look, I want the what? women to get their tits out, and I want the dudes to get their fucking guns out, all right? Because both things impress me. It means that you fucking put the time and effort in to look like 
I don't know, a, a mid-century fuck show. Or no, a, I, a, a, like, I, there like should be a tremendous right amount of shirtless men. Wearing, yes. What are they called? Munchkins or something? What is that thing called over there that, that gives them the, the pubic hair? Oh, a merkin. <laughs> a merkin. Look, I was 80% right. Don't Look, laugh you put at me. a munchkin down there. That'd <laughs> yeah. be hilarious. Dude, munchkin, merkins. <laughs> dude, hang on, all you, man. Woody, stay with the first one. I think munchkin way better yeah, than merkin. Dude, put a munchkin <laughs> in there and get the merkins out. I want to yeah. see you really commit to this, right? It's a These union job. Are basically covering the goods. If you want to yeah. impress me, Game of Thrones, you got to top your old self. You have to always keep the blue. I want to see labia. I want yes. to see labia. Or yeah. I, I fucking want to see vagina. <laughs> you <laughs> name inside. <laughs> you name your Munchkin Merkin, and you have Merkin the Munchkin, <laughs> and Merkin the Munchkin is also a wizard. So he pops out of people's pants and he can cast spells on you. Uh, yeah. Well, that's just silly. I don't think that's silly. I think it's a decent <laughs> idea. A, a merkin m man who lives in your pants. No, but <laughs> thank like, you, Taylor. I'll, I'll, yeah. I'll say this: like there was some show that like popped up on my radar the other day, and then at the top it said that it was produced by um, what's his name, Gr. G George R. R. Martin. Yeah, and I immediately was like, no. No, I can't believe he's he's producing video games and, and, and TV shows, and he still hasn't finished his goddamn book. Works less than I do. There's no way he's doing anything. How about how about this, Kyle? Is a good little spinoff. It's like a different flavor of Westeros. Hot pie, bleached hair. He's the Guy Fieri of Westeros. He's introducing us to the flavors of the entire region. The flavor town of the of the north. But okay. in the background, there's tremendous amounts of violence and upheaval. But he's just talking about the that's all in the background. Like like you literally see like you can main see characters a rape in the and background. pillage. Like Jon Snow walks in the background, like planning a battle with Thorin and the wildlings. But you can't hear any of it because Hot Pie is telling you how to make the most delicious yeah. <laughs> honey dormouse. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I, That'd be I a better watch. show than they, they should have pivoted to that in the last two seasons. Would have been a better show. I'd watch thirty minutes of that. Thirty minutes of that every day. Every yeah. day. I. Can... <laughs> if there was one, like if you could think of one TV character, this is going to be a tough question for you guys to answer off the top of my head. If you could think of one TV character where you're like, man, that show ended. But I'd like to see what he's doing now, or I'd like to see what she's doing now. It, can you think of one where you're like, oh, that is one character that I would love to see a what spin off? To. What's that? Maybe, maybe in a couple. This is so recent, so you know, recency bias. I could see in a few years they could do something entertaining with Ozark, do a, another little Ozark season or something because they left that open ended, and and there's still a lot of potential content there. And then like a lot of the other stuff. A lot of the shows I like are shows that didn't end. So like The Simpsons, end, please end. Like I, so I, I want that to to be done. That should have ended twenty years ago, probably. But yeah, probably Ozark. If I picked one, top of my. That's head. re. Uh, you know what mine is? Malcolm. What's Malcolm from Malcolm in the Middle up to? Oh like no, fucking shit. funny, crazy little genius. What's he doing as an adult now? Like let's circle back to what would he be forty year old yeah. Malcolm now? What's his career been like? Is he still you, hilarious? Can you he, know what actually happened. To the, uh, the I know man. the actor lost his memory, right? Yeah. He doesn't yeah. remember making Malcolm in the middle at all. What do you mean? Well, he can enjoy the show. He's he's had so many head <laughs> he's had like multiple head show. injuries <laughs> and he has no memory of his like that part of his life. Man. Oh shit. Yeah. That blows. Like legit. It's it's like it's I don't know. It's 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 pretty wild. Um, that's a really difficult question though, the one you asked, because um Oh, mine's gonna be super nerdy. So they, they they came back and did like Picard, which is the continuation of mm -hmm. the, the next generation. And it has been like it has made everything that came before it lesser. It has been so humiliatingly embarrassing what they've done with that poor old man. Um, but I kind of would like to see what happened with Benjamin Sisko, who was the the commander slash captain in Deep Space Nine. In the finale of it, he becomes energy and goes to live with the wormhole aliens which is kind of how the scientists view dying and then his soul going to heaven. So, you know, it's, it's two sides of the same coin. And uh, he said he would be back. So I guess that one, because he's never coming back, you know, because they're not going to reboot. What about, what about Pinkman? Pinkman? Oh, I don't Jesse give a fuck. I, they did the movie. They did that movie, right? Uh, El yeah. Camino oh, or something? Yeah, yeah. I got to tell funny. you. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah. I, I, it's interesting, like, the Better Call Saul, which is a my friend cast that show, and she is a fantastic person, and I love Bob Odenkirk, but that was like I didn't give one 
when that show ended, I was like, I wonder what he's doing. Like that was never Mm -hmm. even, and I loved breaking bad. And Mm I saw one episode of better call Saul and was like, I just don't, I'm told Better Care Call Saul is killing it. I, I was into Better Call Saul for a season. Great two. show, by the way. I hear it's a great show. Yeah, I yeah. just wasn't interested in I him. It had a dip, in my opinion, somewhere around season two or three that it made it lose me. And I'm told it's just come back and it's bonkers now. But I'm really, I'm. A, I just have picked it back up. Um, it, it's been very, very good. It, it it did lose me for a little while. It seemed like he was the character was kind of in a rut. But they definitely got out of that, you know, with a lot of characters died in the in the last huh. season. I like I Umbrella noticed. Academy. People don't talk about it much, but to me, it's you know just a rung run below the boys and stuff. Like I enjoyed. Maybe I like superheroes. Oh, I wanted to to, to tell you. Maybe you know because you follow the nerdy shit I do on Reddit. Um, the next episode of the boys, they teased the name. Like, I think it's called Hero Gasm, <laughs> yeah, and and it comes with a. We, we joked about this maybe two weeks ago. How on the uh, on the boys. The warnings before each episode are so extensive. They come up with a new one for this week's episode. That's never, it's like not fit for any audience. <laughs> <laughs> no, the South, the South Park disclaimer. Yeah. <laughs> no, no one at any age should watch this. Yeah. I want to get the boys disclaimer right. Uh, the boys. So um, the fans of I, I went to their subreddit and the fans of the comics know just how like disgusting and, and filthy that universe can be. They know about much more hardcore stuff than happens in the show, which is a little, which is softer in a lot of ways. And so th- they're they're like, calm down, guys. It's not going to be as good as we think it's going to be. Just 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 get over it. It's it's not going to live up to expectation. It's not going to be like the blah blah blah. But yeah, it's not suitable for any audience. A massive soup orgy, airborne penetration, dildo based maiming, extra strength lube, icicle phalluses, and cursing. It is not Whoa. suitable for any audience. This is a great disclaimer, right? Like if you, dude, airborne penetration, dildo based maiming. Come uh, on. To be fair, has... I've already seen all of those things take place mm. in previous episodes. So me I'm, too. I, I'm, <laughs> I ar- I'm already a little let down. By the way, how is airborne penetration not the name of a band? It should yeah, be. It's it a good. Uh, it should be. But yeah, the boys the pulls no punches. Uh, I, I, I like can't wait show. to see it. Yeah, I haven't. Boys, I've seen every season. Of, I haven't started watching this season, but everybody I know like that first episode dip. is intense. Dude, the first episode. This isn't a spoiler, but I'll tell you the first five minutes has like five sex scenes. It's like they hit the ground running with their like we're uh, not going to scale it back for me. It's really there, like um, early early on there was when someone gets hit with like laser vision. Usually that cauterizes the wounds, right? Like in Star Wars, when they get hit with those lightsabers, there's never any blood. Every season, they make getting shot with laser eyes more bloody. <laughs> like if you go back to season one, it's like, oh, that's a lot of blood. Now everyone in the room is so. <laughs> it's, it's like the it's like the final scene of Carrie when blood they dump the have? whole bucket of pig blood. <laughs> yeah, it's it, everybody's. Does that pull you out of it, Kyle? With your with your white gloves, when you're like, that is not a human amount of blood for one individual. No, I'm okay with that because I You'll live with dead. <laughs> what did you say, Kyle? It was like what? How much blood? What was the comparison? It was like the made? end of Carrie when they dumped the pig blood. Uh, uh, I, I'm picturing like Nickelodeon when the pail of green oh, slime yeah, falls when you get slimed. Get slimed. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they just get covered. I remember like totally buying that as like a six or seven year old when like some fucking celebrity would go on Nickelodeon. I'm watching it like on Saturday after school, and I'm like. <laughs> John Cena's about to get slimed and he has no idea. And it's like, <laughs> and he's sitting under something that says the slime tower. And like there's a slime thing. There's one green chair. And like they're like, sit here. Oh. And like all the kids are like absolutely losing their mind. <laughs> yeah. I was uh, I, I laughed so hard at that. Like just thinking, like, you got got. And like, but really, it's like what some like mixture of soap and I don't know. Glycerin got on you, and it easily. Comes John Cena is such a good guy. We we looked at that video a couple weeks ago where mm-hmm. he had gone to see that that Ukrainian refugee boy with Down syndrome. He went to see him because that boy's mother had told him that the reason they were fleeing Ukraine was to go see John Cena. That way, he wouldn't be freaking out the whole time as they fled mm-hmm. war. John Cena hears this and he's like, "Well, let's not let him down." I thought that the kid had fled to the U.S. and John Cena had like I don't know went to Florida to see him. He went to like Poland or Lithuania or something. He 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 went to to like 
there to see the little kid. Did and, you watch Cena's show on HBO Max? Yeah, was I it love called it. Peacemaker. Yeah, yeah. Peacemaker. Yeah, yeah. We're yeah. I thought that was fantastic. It was. Uh, yeah, big fan of it. He's he's tremendously talented. I like yeah. that. Yeah, yeah, but I love the I love that new style of show where nobody's really a good guy and you're going to see some terrible shit and there's a lot of reluctant heroes. Like I love that, but th- I thought Peacemaker was really fucking good. There's a and scene- you you by making the dad such an asshole, you humanize mm-hmm. John Cena and whatever faults he had. They had to fix had. his backstory. They had to fix him right away to make yes. him uh, relatable and also someone you could feel sorry for. That's and they right. do that from the very beginning. That's right. Nobody cared. There's no family there to pick him up. His cell phone wasn't taken care of. He lives in a shitty trailer that he has to break into. Like nothing is going his way. And then you see his dad and how he treats his dad is like, hey, hey, pop, it's me. Is it's good to see you? Is it good to see me? And but his right. pop is just like, ah, I see you're here. Come on in, then. Like they yeah. treat him like such scum. And you see what a piece of shit he is. And they also like right away let you know that like John Cena isn't racist. He's more like Michael Scott. He just has a weird viewpoint because he's been <laughs> around pieces of shit. So that they make him like a redeemed character by the end of episode one. Oh, right real after- quick. And, 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 you know, you and in episode one, you start with a racist piece of shit coming out of the hospital and you end with him naked in a parking lot covered in a, in a, in a woman's guts in a crater. And you just want to see more. That's episode one. You know, that scene was super cool, man. I, I, I was, I was a little like nervous just because, yeah, I mean, you've seen John Cena in certain roles, right? But is he going to be able to carry an entire show? Right. Yo, he carries that entire. When he show. started, when he starts singing into the Hitachi wand, I think that's when I was like, "All right, I'm on board." Like, yeah, like, like because he looks so good dancing. It's like, like, like he, did, like, like he's talented in everything he's doing there. Like, like he's he's like doing, um, like bodybuilder style posing while he does this dance number, looking just tremendous in those fucking white heat tidies. And Are you hilarious. talking about in the opening in the uh, first episode? Credit scene? In, and that no, when he's in that chick's uh, apartment. Oh, in the, just, in the apartment. He, yeah, and when she comes at him with a fucking knife. Um, I love his taste in music too in the show. Fire Boys. That's the name of that band. Yeah, he's he's like oh he's like rocking eighties rock, but under the radar eighties rock. Like when men like, were back when men were men when they weren't afraid to be women. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's it's really good, and I agree. I like this sort of like new wave of sh- of like i don't know heroes or superheroes or whatever who are just pieces of shit for Did the most part that was gratuitous this singing part? into the magic wand no i thought it was hilarious there's a magic wand in every woman's house i know like like it it would be it's I, this could easily happen i have sang into a hitachi wand before this, I, can't, I don't know. I this really thought, hit on a lot. <laughs> this really hit home. This for me. This works. Sometimes the show just resonates with you. <laughs> I'm not saying the magic wand's existence in a woman's home is some sort of outrageous thing. Like I'm, I'm down to play. Yeah. I'm just saying, you know, grabbing it and using it as a microphone seemed like they were doing it for my benefit. Well, but course. they're trying to get. I you mean, what they're doing everything. Go back to like, but, but I, I guess, same way I the boys is throwing point. all that shit in because they want people to keep watching. To what would you rather them. have him sing out of? A a uh, I'm sure somebody was like, hey, you should sing out of that hairbrush, and someone was like, just go get the dildo. Like, you know what I mean? What would mm-hmm. what would have made you feel better? I I felt like the only purpose of the singing scene was to shock me with the magic wand. And I was like, yeah, I was not shocked. That scene to me was showing off his physique because like that was the that was the first scene where I was like, holy fucking shit. John Cena is jacked. I thought you were going to say the scene was to show off his joy. Like he's so happy to have gotten laid out of prison. That That's what I thought the purpose of the scene. I I love the 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 conversation that he's having with her. He's like, you know, I was having just a, a real shitty day, but back there when I was inside your pussy, I, I just started thinking maybe things are looking up, you know? <laughs> 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 he's left like the yeah. top secret, like dossier in there for her to read. No, that no, <laughs> I dig the show a lot. And I do like the extreme gore because I don't know. I don't like having to suspend, uh, suspend my disbelief so much. When I I remember there was a scene in like uh, the Superman movie that came out like ten years ago, 
that didn't go anywhere. They just made one and nobody wanted it anymore. But there's a scene where he like lifts a, an island, like a whole island he lifts. And I'm like, mm. no, you just go through it. He's yeah. a man sized mm. thing that's like as hard as steel or whatever. It would just be like a drill bit when he started lifting up from the bottom. He'd dig through. Like, like, you can't lift an island, Superman. You need a big net. He needs to use his yeah. super breath or something where the fourth one would be blow dissipated it apart. across the. He uh, probably. He, he, there's not a volume. There had to be a oh, easier I didn't way to think solve he was it. was limited by in that regard. You know what I imagine, though? I guess he's compressing the air. Like when he's inhaling, he's compressing that air at like 100,000 PSI. So the fact yeah. that he's limited to like human lungs, like, like that, that the, the volume is irrelevant because the pressure is so great. That's I'm how he gets it. that ice breath. No, that sounds made up. I think that, it would just that, blow your heat the air, but anyway. I love the conversations where you're rationalizing I've him, superpowers. I've definitely yeah. seen him freeze a man with his breath before. Yeah, well, he's Superman. Okay. He has all the powers. That's why he's the most boring character ever invented. Excuse Imagine me. Imagine a guy with no drawbacks. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. Like, wasn't yeah, I one agree of the with first that. superheroes they came out with? They overshot it because they, they were sitting down to write and they're like, what do people like with superheroes? Superpowers. You know what? This guy's going to have all of them. And then uh -huh. they realize we overshot, but we can't admit defeat. We got to. You, you know. know what my major problem is? And, and, and again, I, when I go back to like movies, you know how I feel about it. I'm happy. I'm there to be, have fun. But do you know the problem I have with superhero movies? Like say the Avengers. Mm -hmm. So let's take the God of Thunder Thor. How is he just equally strong? Do you know what I mean? Like when, when he's fighting, Low, not as powerful superheroes. Mm. Somehow he gets neutralized. But then yeah. when they're fighting like this ultra powerful dude, he brings in this huge ultra powerful move. Why doesn't he just use that on the lesser villain? Do you know what I mean? Like, I mm. hate the fact that yo, there are some superheroes that are stronger than others. But when you get to the movie, Hawkeye is equal to everybody else. And he's the fuck. He's not a superhero. He's a fucking Boy Scout who figured User. out how to shoot a boat. You know what I mean? Yeah. So that's that's the only problem I have. Like, why I have the opposite some of them are stronger than others, right? Actually. Yeah. yeah like I I see Hawkeye, for example, and I'm like, I like how they found a way to make the guy who's what I consider a low-level superhero. He can knock a guy out with a playing card. No, with a quarter. You know that thing where you snap your quarter and yeah. he can knock a guy out with that? <laughs> Loser. He's a little bit superhero -y, right? That's He's a real that's, Donald that's Cerrone type so, character. That is so embarrassing. I had a to, friend in college who could do that. You compare you him to the guy. You knock people out. I can shoot him, <laughs> but I can't knock anyone out. I can't even turn Wasn't on the he light in, switch. In, he, he was in a turn room. The TV and the VCR with the same quarter. This is kind of superhero-ish. It's superhero adjacent for sure. But That's a magic like, trick, dude. That's not yeah. superhero. That's <laughs> David Blaine <laughs> shit. You do it every time, God damn But it. they put him on oh, the top of the building and he's scouting and he's organizing for the other superheroes. And I'm like, I I see they took a way to make a guy whose powers are really just bravery and archery and make him a useful part of the team. And, and what's I black love is like no, he has look, his look, super look. powers is he's actually more useful as a beacon of information than I don't know, military helicopters. Like he's so good. Like he's useless. There's no capacity that makes any sense for Hawkeye. Even the, like there's, and I don't watch those movies. I don't, I, not, not my thing, but Hawkeye's ridiculous. I saw the I was, first Avengers, and when they included you. him, I thought it was going to be like a joke. And then they started talking to him and listening to his opinions <laughs> as though as though he didn't take a taxi there. <laughs> Fuck him. Well, if you uh, take a taxi to your superhero <laughs> meeting, you don't belong. Thank you. As, as, but back to Superman being a boring character, I don't think mm. Superman's a boring character. I think he's written in a boring way because Homelander is Superman. Homelander is Superman. He is he is the all powerful superhero who has every ability that Superman has, and, and he's in a world where all the other superheroes are like lesser than. That's they, right. Everybody's the flat. The guy who's like the Flash and the Boys is fucking terrified of Homelander. Like he could he could just literally pull him apart like an insect or cut is him he apart. Faster by, than Homelander though. He's home, Homelander doesn't even lower himself to running. Like he flies. So who yeah. knows, right? Like, like it doesn't matter because Homelander can kill him with a look. His eye, his, his, his laser beams go at the, fat, the speed of light, so it doesn't fucking matter. But he is like the most fascinating character because he's he's so scary. There, there's a every now and then he'll be like, "I'm the Homelander. I can do whatever the fuck I want." But there's <laughs> like, there's, that's also, right. You there's, are. There's a there's a 
childish naivete to him sometimes that is fascinating to attach to such a to a dude who has such like he doesn't give a shit about anyone else it's nice to see him mo more recently in this last episode in over his head in the board meeting and he gets embarrassed when one of the board members asks a like stock options question something very like um like like, like black and white that like went over my head as well because i'm not a board member of a of a global corporation mm -hmm. and and he doesn't know how to answer the question and he's just like what did you say and so he just has to deflect. He's like, are you set, Are you trying to say I don't know what I'm doing here? Are you trying to say you know better than me? And she's just like, oh, God, oh, God, no. I would never say anything like that. Never, never. And it has like, it calls back to me to that old Twilight Zone episode when there's that little oh, boy yeah, yeah, yeah. who can like fucking wink and turn you in like inside out or whatever. The way they like, they're like I'm sick of fans. The way they're like, that thing you did was real good, Timmy. The way you ripped that man inside out, it was real good. His insides were cool. Good job, Timmy. What you did was good. That's how they treat Homelander. Like, yeah. Like, you're so afraid that he will literally just turn you inside out for the fuck of it. Hey, hey, guys. Yeah. I just got a couple texts from my wife. I think I got to run. I got to oh, go do right, something. Man. That is yeah. Thanks for coming on. We appreciate it. Always yeah, I'm really sorry I got to cut this short, but she no, kind of no, made me here. Is there anything uh, you want to push or share with anyone they can check out? Comedianjoshwolf.com for tour dates. When is this going out? Saturday. Saturday. Uh, if you're in San Antonio, I'm there Saturday night. Uh, if not, I'm in basically Florida. for. Uh, I'm in Phoenix, uh, July 1st, one show, uh, one night, two shows. I'm there with my son. For those of you who like watching me with my son, Jacob, he's going to be there. And then he's going to be with me all of J uh, July and August. So I'm in Tampa, West Palm Beach, and Orlando. You know, the live shows have been crazy nice. and so good. And um, d by the way, I have fans of yours come out to all my shows. And my meet and greets, right. every meet and greet. I'm always like, I saw you on the show. The fucking great. We love it. <laughs> <laughs> Hell yeah. Well, check out all the shows he just mentioned and uh, say hi to Josh for us. Yeah. yeah, I will. Guys, thank you so much. I'm sorry I got to run, but I got to go no, do this. Oh, right. we understand. Take care. Thanks Take care. All right, later, guys. See you later. It's going to Texas. You see, they're they're talking about seceding again down there. I don't I think that did. conversation ever stops, does it? Uh, I think they've taken a step. I feel like there's always a few they, politicians in Texas talking about wanting to do their own it thing. It passed. Like, like. I, so what's I that don't mean? What it fucking passed, but like, I think it passed the House, like the Texas House. I don't know what that even means let me see uh, zach just linked something i think it means they're like two steps away or maybe even he one says, there is no yeah. way the u.s would let texas secede it's too big of an industry center uh i'm sure you're right like well, the, yeah there'd be a civil war but but what we're talking about is what happens before that which is where we are now yes the pre the, the pre-civil pre war, war. The and pre, here's pre, the best, pre what if era. what if a couple other states pull away too what other ones would it would have to be like attached to Texas, right? Because what like, if it, what if it was it was one you like completely different, like like came out of nowhere, like California wanted to leave as well. <laughs> they they were talking about that in like 2016 when Trump won, but it was more of like a you know people online, yeah. nothing serious. Yeah. So. so let me under a section titled "State Sovereignty," the platform states, pursuant to Article One, Section One of the Texas Constitution, the federal government has impaired our right of local self government. Therefore, federally mandated, mandated legislation that it fringes upon the 10th Amendment rights of Texas shall be ignored, opposed, refused, and nullified. So they want to secede. And I thought I read it past something. Maybe it just passed a committee or something. Huh. But, like, it has the votes. And is the Senate more sober? Sometimes in American federal politics, the House will pass any fucking nonsense because they're a bunch of sure. yahoos representing a small area. But the senators... They tend to represent it. Well, they always represent entire states. So they're a little more sober in their voting than mm -hmm. like. How do they manage. decide who gets which side of the state? You know, they flip a coin. Which I side? I think they have the to state? share it. Yeah. No, no, no. Like, who's oh, the left side? side. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. You stumped me. But uh, yeah, I'm not <laughs> sure. Like, what happens if Texas? It, it is possible to me that Texas has enough fucking yahoos in their state government. To vote to secede if they do what now it, what does the would, governor do like they can't go there's no way they'll 
like all the people who would vote for that kind of thing to pass are going to be getting a, a call from someone and <laughs> there's no way there a is call no from who way. like like some, uh, uh, someone in the yet? fbi the, the, oh, or the fbi of the united states well, you you better check in with the Texas Border Patrol before you come on to our territory. I don't know why I'm old timey Southern now. I see, I see. <laughs> I don't know where this bitch going. <laughs> yeah, but no, that that would be the attitude. Be like, oh, the FBI called you from the United States. Well, they had no jurisdiction here in Texas. That would be so fun. Well, no, they would call beforehand. But yeah, yeah I, I, I don't can't. Know. There's that would be wild to see. At this point, I wouldn't put anything past anything. Like. It, there's been a million life-changing, like, like once-in-a-lifetime things in the diverted. past six years. Look, 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 we fucking diverted away from the prime timeline. We are that ball that split off and went to the right instead of the left. We are not on the prime timeline anymore. Anything's up for grabs. I think China invades uh, uh, tai Taiwan or whatever the fuck any fucking day now. I don't see Dude, why they're – I don't know what they're waiting on. The January 6th committee has my attention, and, and – Someone right. said something on the news today that made me look at it in a different way. All right, so here's the deal. Everyone knows people don't vote for president. People vote for electors. Those electors vote for president, right? That's at the Electoral College. Cool. Mm -hmm. Elector is a real job. It is a job you get from the federal government. It's like a thing. that like, You can't just declare yourself an elector. It'd be like declaring yourself a senator. Like, oh, are you voting on whatever, the budget? Well, I'm a senator now. They're like, no, you dick face like you're not a senator that's a real job like we we already know who the senators are you can't just say that you're one but that was the trump plan trump was like we're gonna put an alternative slate of electors on there and i was like these are just regular fucking yahoos that would be akin to trump saying we're gonna put an alternative slate of senators to vote on this bill like no you can't do that that's that's like kind when of when was coup. this this was uh, on January sixth. That you know, he, he wanted to have a different oh, like set of electors. Yeah, that so, was his so. How plan. do you how do you become an elector? Who makes you an electman? I don't know the hiring process for an elector, but I can tell you that they're chosen yeah, am, in yeah, advance yeah, okay. to do the. I job. hear the Clintons pick them. <laughs> I mean, I imagine whoever picks them, it's fucking shady. Everything's shady. I don't know. I, I, I don't the know anything about that. But I'll vote the way that they're supposed to. So they must be a little nonpartisan and they just obey the will of the voters. Right. Mm -hmm. They can't be total jackass. Seems like the least partisan part of the process because they kind of just do what they're told. Thank you. Know, you right. You know, but Trump was like, hey, I know we have electors chosen and hired to do this stupid little ceremony thing, mm -hmm. but I'm going to bring in my own electors that don't obey the will of the people that are loyal to me. And it's like, whoa, you can't just do that. You can't just like replace the senators with mm -hmm. your own batch. And that was what he was doing. And it's like, that's fucking state coup okay. shit. I think that he was just clearly trying to send it back to the states because they had uh, fraudulently, you know, misdiagnosed the situation. At least that's what the emails <laughs> that I've been sent from the Trump campaign <laughs> would allege. Uh, I'll say this. Truth I is. didn't. So when it happened, um, I thought I watched the news. I saw it happen, but I really didn't think it was as bad as everyone was making it out to be. I thought that, that when they were talking about insurrection and a coup, that they were blowing things out of proportion as news medias want to do yeah. on both sides all the time. It's always the end of the fucking world. Um, it, it, like, like the only time it's been true is this last time with the pandemic, but most of the I time it's, it's, it's a uh, crying wolf. It but, was a big deal to me. I'm sorry, finish. You no, 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 yeah, yeah. So, so I watched like a 20 minute video on uh, on Reddit, and it was so much stuff that I had never seen before. And there's a part where like I don't think it's the Proud Boys; it's some other like militant type group. But like you can see Both them, keepers. like something like that. But you can see them when they start moving through the crowd. Like they've all got their right hand on the guy in front of their right shoulder. They're all wearing mm. matching tactical gear and it's like good shit. And they're moving through that crowd mm. like a snake. And it's like, oh shit, I think these boys have a fucking mission. <laughs> and Do they get in? Yes, everybody got in. Anyone who wanted in could get in. And I mean like within, they ended up being, I th I don't know if it was 40 feet or 40 meters. That That's left me from like uh from pence from like the 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 from them escaping pence is like underneath in a fucking catacomb for a lot of it and and they want him to get in the car and he's like if i get in that car you're gonna leave he's like no sir i work for you he's like you work for me but you're not driving the car if i get in that car 
I, you're going to take me out of the out of the capital and I will not let the American p- people see me like driven from the capital. They will not see that happen to the vice president. I'm going to oh, stay okay. here and certify this. And he stayed down there like with flashlights and, and the photos mm-hmm. that I've seen and did the paperwork and uh, before they left. Yeah. <sighs> It's, well, I mean, that would have been horrible optics bad. for him to get I chased saw, out. Like, like they're they're chanting for Nancy Pelosi, and and like I saw a mega care. I'll call her a MAGA Karen, but and and she <laughs> was going one on three with the Capitol Police and winning <laughs> 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 because every time they sort of reached toward her to push, she was indignant. How dare you touch me? But then she fucking like come speak to the her. manager. No, she like, <laughs> come for them and like get back away from me. I'm getting in there mm. i'm after pelosi and then they're like ma'am stay back and she's like how dare you you move aggressively toward me you piece of shit and she's like backing them down and she's got like so many like maga boys behind her that they're, they're just pushing and you can mm-hmm. see them on the they're on the radios they're like we need more men we need <laughs> more men and they're they're having a club fight with these people like the cop has a shield in a club but these mm-hmm. people don't mind taking a clubbing or two they close the distance they grab the club and then their buddy comes in and helps them, and they wrest it away from the guy and push him on his ass because he's wearing so much gear. And mm-hmm. now, now his buddies are like, "Get John, get John," because John's turtled up, and the MAGA yeah. boys are throwing him a vicious beating. Jesus it, Christ! I had never seen any of that, and I'm saying that like I, I haven't seen show, that either. But i it really what it was is I was blown away that I didn't know that any of that had fucking happened because I just never seen it. They mm-hmm. never showed that shit on CNN. It's not like I was watching Fox News with my head up. Yeah. My, like, I like, see a like, lot of the same footage. That cop getting squished in the door, screaming in pain. It seems like maybe over exaggerating the pain, right? Like, I see that all the time. I think, like, uh, I, think I got lost an eye, though. You know, Which you guy? made a I've lot never of noise heard, for one eye. I've never oh, heard no, the eye There's thing. a cop. He's got brown hair. He looks like he's maybe 28 or so. And he was like, it seemed like they were closing a door on him. I, I could be wrong on that. And he was hmm. just crying in pain and and begging for mercy and he wasn't getting any from the maga crowd yeah um, it, like not. i saw varying uh degrees of violence sometimes it seemed like a party environment yep guys who were not mm-hmm. violent they were like partiers like 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 woohoo we're in a, that's we're what in they a... showed like as it was happening like those are the videos they were sh- like where yeah. it was like that was the video where like the doors opened and like a bunch of people went that's in like it was a frat care. party. Some people obeyed the velvet like, lines. Whoa, we're gonna that's yeah, we're gonna like obey to the me. velvet lines, and other people were like, "I'm gonna go put my feet on a desk. I'm gonna lift this thing up. I'm gonna make a silly face on camera." And then like that's what it looked like. But they should have showed the, they're wearing those costumes, and, and I didn't take them seriously at all. And I remember people be, and like the line that maybe the news media took was like, "Can you believe that they stepped foot on this hallowed ground or whatever?" And mm-hmm, I was like, mm-hmm. "I hope this shit." I don't care about your hollowed fucking like, like that. That's not mine. They, yeah. The, I don't the see fact it is they mine. wouldn't let the, they're not going <laughs> to let me tour that fucking building and see the beautiful architecture. That's for some, that's for some special people. Clearly. It has There's, um, yeah. I'm trying I don't to remember the guy's that. name. One of the but, members of the house representative gave some of the leaders of the, that's Maga just poor riot. framing by the way. <laughs> he gave some of the leaders of the Magari a tour ahead of time. And you think, well, I mean, how damning is that really? The guy's taking pictures of shit that a tourist wouldn't typically be interested in, where the security centers are, how the hallways are. These were not like pictures and like how this was like behind the scenes, how to get to different places. Uh, Why'd they do that? It they were there to kill that they, they were, were there, there to kill. Nancy Pelosi and and Mike Pence. No, no, so like it, the, maybe the I'm FBI's misunderstanding. The confidential informant uh, that told them that they were there to kill Mike Pence. If they could have gotten him, they'd have killed him. Oh, I believe so that. This, I'm this, saying, well, the House representative the... person gave tours to leaders of the insurrection, and they were taking pictures, and it's caught on security camera, of things that tourists wouldn't be interested in. They were planning oh, okay. the attack the next day oh, with I, the oh, aid okay. of a House of Representatives member that makes more sense i thought you meant like they went on the little white house tour and they were taking photos i'm like i can't imagine they're walking you next to the the football but yeah so someone like a maga guy basically brought them in prior and walked them around to and like secretly yeah yeah well it, a member of house of representatives so this is like a, a republican a federally yeah. elected you know gave tours to leaders so that they could better plan their insurrection the next day and these guys are taking pictures of like security so stations what happened to that like guy? that it's going. It's only recently been exposed. Mm. I, I heard about it like today or yesterday. Yeah. I always take so much more time 
for stuff to come out. So, or and not always, really, but sometimes it does where it's yeah. like, all right, I got a good handle on this. And then three years later, something comes out and you're like, oh, no, I'm 100 percent wrong on that. And as far as those gallows go, they keep showing the picture of those gallows there, like 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 making it out like that's such a big deal. How many okay. effigies of Trump did we watch burn? How many times have I seen him get like like remember that was the thing that Kathy Griffin had is like the decapitated mm-hmm. head in that video. He's decapitated head. That yeah. was I, you know like like I, the, I didn't see many effigies of Trump, but I saw lots and lots of so many pinatas. Stuff. Pinatas is a better one that and there was like an inflatable balloon that seemed to follow him I've around. Saw, I saw Europe him get hung something. a lot. He's very easy to. I caricature. saw the hangings a couple times. I saw a couple okay. like like uh, like built like statues, not a good statue, obviously the burn ugly sta- like embarrassing statues. I saw one with a very tiny penis in New York that was pretty lots hilarious. of that. The, mm-hmm. they, the city the was like, hey, uh, we can't have any erections of statues, no matter how small. <laughs> you yeah. have to take it down. It was pretty funny. <laughs> Did you, yeah, uh, don't, don't put statues of naked guys, people around. <laughs> Have you guys song. seen fucking Baron Trump lately? That kid is enormous. Okay, or not? So he, is he a kidney? He, he grew like more. He grew way wow. more. He grew so much that before you show him the picture, Zach, and please find like the most recent one. He looks like two kids in a big coat. <laughs> <laughs> it's getting like ridiculous. They're trying to sneak yeah. into a cocktail party to like, 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 like save the world or something. Dude, it, that it kid's like, like six foot movie. eight. And he's still got the body of a guy who's oh got a lot of God. growing to do. It looks Photoshop. He's like Slender Man. I, I, this that is the one I'm going, seeing. He's not super handsome in he's this. He's going one. to Duke. Oh, wait. I didn't read the fact checking. Is it real? It's true. It's true. He's just that huge. Yeah. He's just, he's just an <laughs> enormously tall guy. He's absurd looking. Uh, I, I don't, I, that, that's, at 16. Like he's going to be playing college Wait, he's college ball now. Uh it says that oh, it the rarely photographed oh. youngest son of former president Donald Trump is already 6 feet 7 inches tall even though he just turned 15. This is from a year ago and so I assume he's probably 69. <laughs> look, <laughs> no, look at the hair. Look at the hair. Don't you just love that he's chosen to go with his dad's hair, dude? <laughs> like, dude, like what is the so fuck funny. are you thinking, dude? Hey, look at him with the thumbs up and the fucking ill-fitting suit and everything. Like, like, what are you doing? Dude, if Trump is my dad and I watched him be like a superstar in everything he tried and then become president, I'm like, all right, he looks like a goober, but there's something to the formula. Thumbs up, hair terrible, 6'10". I'm, like, he's... Is he grabbing that woman's tit? No, he he's so far from that right hand, he doesn't know what it's touching. What are you talking about? He's grabbing <laughs> her titty. He's like, <laughs> he literally has his hand on her titty. It's on top of the. He certainly it's doesn't on have his hand on her titty. titty. You are <laughs> you're ridiculous. Okay. Are you kidding me? <laughs> Fucking zo- z- zoom in. Show them that his man is is right on her titty. Where? How old do you well, think this woman is? Her, her this. tit is near <laughs> the bottom of that. Fucking. Going. Yeah, I, her tit is next to her belly button. I'm uh, pretty sure. Yeah. <laughs> slandering this gentleman she's, she's literally pushing his hand away this she's hugging the hand towards him oh, you retard not, she, she's pushing his hand away and he's clearly about to like stick that thumb in her eye <laughs> <laughs> and that giant thumb's gonna punch right through those glasses <laughs> god he's so enormous it doesn't look real yeah he's, he's gonna unless he's the least athletic man on earth he's going He's got to go I somewhere saw, for athleticism. I saw like a video of this. I saw a video on Reddit the other day of a kid like getting a puppy or some shit. But anyway, he like ran to get the puppy, and it was like the most embarrassing run I'd ever seen. And uh, so I I went to the comment section to see if anybody else was <laughs> was awful like me, and they noticed this kid ran like really <laughs> fucking weird and stuff. And he's not don't don't misunderstand. He doesn't have like a there's nothing wrong with him. He just runs like a fucking girl. You know what I mean? He sure. doesn't know how to run. And uh, I hit you know controversial comments uh filtering sure enough everybody <laughs> the dad should have taught him to run instead of getting him a fucking dog let's get him some <laughs> running classes so he doesn't look like such a dweeb <laughs> like, like the, the and hey the sometimes that happens and you run like a dweeb and you grow out of it he was like a little hop skippy jump leaning thing it was real bad how old was he i don't know i'm probably five I, six Somewhere between bad? 12 and 5. I can't you, really tell. <laughs> yeah, they, they kind of, it's, like, it's, like, it's like, how much is that cow weigh? Fuck, I don't know. 500 to 1,000 pounds? My friends who aren't around kids at all, like... Mm-hmm. like I've And I've just, like, picked it up because a few years ago, before a lot of my friends had kids, like, you know, I didn't see them as much. 
like I would see a kid and I'd be like, that kid could be four or he could be a small eight year old. I don't know. I don't know <laughs> what, what stage is that. And now I'm like more locked in, but Kyle, you're still at that. Like you see like an eight year old and you're like, is it a toddler? When I, I see uh, kids, preteen, like, like I don't like seeing kids places. I, I try not to go places where kids are even allowed. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, just like adult bookstores store. for me. Yeah, adult I, I, bookstores. I, I hang out at uh, God. I can't remember the name of the last one I was at. It had a silly name. Mickey's um, yeah. Mouse because it attracts the pussy. No, it was something about lions or something. <laughs> the Lions Den or some shit. I don't know. Ooh, that's hardcore. Yeah. So, Is something, it? Something scary. No, it's and it sounds game. hardcore. It's you got hardcore. DVDs and dildos. It's not hardcore. <laughs> <laughs> that's a deviant going on at the lion's den. I don't even think that's what it's... Uh, anyway. Have you ever bought a DVD? Oh, actually, I had something specific for you, Kyle. Uh, a deep... It, the, I, I have to answer the have ahead. you ever Are bought you a DVD in this question. DVD? I bought a DVD when I was like 18 or 19 because because like I didn't have like privacy, private mm-hmm. internet. And mm-hmm. I was about to move out, and I didn't have a laptop, and uh, and I bought it then when I was living on my own. I found it yesterday when I was throwing DVDs away, stuffed in like like a, a Xbox 360 game uh, thing. Because I opened them all up because I stuff money in the. Mm-hmm. Sometimes I hide money. <laughs> like, like, <laughs> so you like before you throw a book away, you got to be like. I like, hide money. It's like a dollar and twenty five cents in nineteen eighty four money. <laughs> I have, hang on, I'm going to show you the money. Oh, you got change hey. clearly visible in all your books. <laughs> <laughs> Bookshelf looks like uh, absolute dog shit. Yeah, that I've never bought a DVD like that ever. Never. I was I was too I've, young. I, I think barely I, missed I've it. bought DVDs, um, I, and I wasn't too young. I like was at night school as an adult. I might have been married and picked it yeah. up on my way home like after midnight from a <laughs> fucking 16-hour work day. Like, I'm allowed to buy it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but it was pre... Like, nowadays, if you watch porn, it gets straight to the good shit. Most porns nowadays don't have plots. Back mm-hmm. when I bought it, you like... What is this like 17 minutes of character development going on in this <laughs> dumbass board? I'm exaggerating, that is but so it's funny. still too much. Yeah. It, I, I, it's I was, just like, all right, that's so, so true. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, imagine the first like porn directors back in the day when that became legal. They're like, all right, so you're just going to start fucking her. And he's like, no, cut. Make me want to watch it. I don't know who you are yet. I don't know yes. who he is. Exposition. You two are away <laughs> on a beach vacation. You didn't have plans of having sex. This is all spontaneous. Seduce yeah. her. Go. And Raise then over the mind. years, they're like, you know, people really actually dislike this part of it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Based on our metrics, no one's seen it at all. Everyone all right. goes halfway in. <laughs> Kyle wants to show us his yeah, money. Go, Kyle. What there do you got, got, Kyle? Just going through the fucking boxes, like looking through like books and fucking Xbox games and DVDs. And to be fair, an old wallet. Like, oh, wow. it's mostly ones. It's mostly ones. But but it was like, there was a bunch of money in there. Club you can time. tell those are old, too. Those have been in books for a long time. <laughs> they're, like, they're like, I, I had to check in everything because I'm throwing so much shit away. I felt bad throwing all those Xbox why, 360 Why do you hide away. $1 bills in books? Well, I, <laughs> because it's, because, because like, like that. I don't know if you've ever found something like that, like like found a little bit of money, but it's a really oh, cool feeling. Yeah, yeah. So I hide money a lot. You're not because, finding it. You're like, hiding like, money I, from yourself that you have. Yeah, but I forget about it and I find it again and it's fun. And oh, it's okay. not a huge amount of money. I mean, there's there's a few 20s in there and stuff, but like yeah, it's a few hundred dollars. Look like, at like, the money like, head. It's yeah, all the fun you can have. And and like like hey, <laughs> if I die and you come to like, you know, go through my belongings to like get them to goodwill. You got to come out easily 600 bucks a head. That's going to pay for your gas and travel to come here and rifle through my shit. Yeah. And most of your funeral. I don't know. It's going to be cheap. (laughs) It's going to be cheap. (laughs) A a casket about. (laughs) (laughs) This is what we found. (laughs) I've been watching watching nothing but mountain climbing disaster videos and (laughs) like things that are like, I shouldn't be alive. Like people go like down into the canyons and before get before we do that, I'm going to do the ads real quick. Think oh. about a couple of those survival stories because those oh, are very that, entertaining. Right? This episode of PKA is brought to you by Blue Chew. Spring has finally come, so let's help you do the same. That's right. This episode is sponsored by Blue Chew. Guys, confidence can take you far in life. It can also help in the bedroom, especially when it comes time to step up to the plate. 
That's where Blue Chew comes in. Blue Chew is a unique online service that delivers the same active ingredients as Viagra and Cialis, but in chewable tablets and at a fraction of the cost. You can take them anytime, day or night, so you can plan ahead or be ready whenever an opportunity arises. The process is simple. Sign up at BlueChew.com, consult with one of their licensed medical providers, and once you're approved, you'll receive your prescription within days. The best part, it's all done online. So no visit to the doctor's office, no awkward conversation, and no waiting in line at the pharmacy. Blue Chew's tablets are made in the USA and prepared and shipped direct to your door in a discreet package. So if you could benefit from extra confidence when it's time to perform, Blue Chew can help. Also, we've got a code for our listeners. Try Blue Chew free when you use our promo code PKA at checkout. Just pay the five bucks in shipping. That's bluechew.com promo code PKA to receive your first month free. Visit bluechew.com for more details and important safety information. And we thank Blue Chew for their dick pills. Uh, magnanimously sponsoring the podcast. Thank you so much, Blue Chew, for for your dick pills. I would love some more free ones. I would too. You know, I would yeah. love more free dick pills. I'm just saying, I like hey, it. Blue when Chew. I'm the- it's, <laughs> it's been <laughs> like two years. <laughs> I've gotten <laughs> free dick pills from you. So I, like you can send me some, I would do. <laughs> I would. I would say thank you more <laughs> if you sent me some more fucking dick pills. So <laughs> check them out. Code PKA. Try it for free. Code PKA, just pay the five bucks in shipping. I think you get three free pills, so check them out. And Blue Chew, if you are listening, I'd thank you a lot harder with some more dick pills, so thank you. Uh, Express VPN. Admit it. You think that cybercrime is something that happens to other people. You may think that no one wants your data or that hackers can't grab your passwords or credit card details, but you'd be wrong. Stealing data from unsuspecting people on public Wi-Fi is one of the simplest and cheapest ways for hackers to make money. When you leave your internet connection unencrypted, you might as well be writing your passwords and credit card numbers on a huge billboard for the rest of the world to see. That's why we decided to take action, which is why we're recommending you to get ExpressVPN to protect yourself from cyber criminals. ExpressVPN secures and anonymizes your internet browsing by encrypting your data and hiding your public IP address. ExpressVPN has easy-to-use apps that run seamlessly in the background of your computer, phone, or tablet. Turning on ExpressVPN protection takes only one click. Just a single click, folks. Using ExpressVPN, I can safely surf on public Wi-Fi without being snooped on or having my personal data stolen. For less than 7 bucks a month, you can get the same ExpressVPN protection that I have. ExpressVPN is rated the number one, number one VPN service by TechRadar and comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee. Protect your online activity today and find out how you can get three months free at expressvpn.com slash PKA. That's E-X-P-R-E-S-S VPN.com slash PKA for three months free with a one-year package. Visit expressvpn.com slash PKA to learn more. So check out ExpressVPN, check out Blue Chew, and Protect obviously yourself. check out Lock and Load. Good Code PKA. Are you not on board yet, folks? You're falling behind. You're falling behind the average. I don't know what this is, what's happening here. Oh, it's, it's almost, <laughs> you know, I thought that was like a ghost gift for a sec. I, thought I didn't realize it was a milk thing, but code PKA, 10% off anything on the site. Uh, Does your some underwear lack pre-cum by the end of the day? I don't think well, you're a man. You won't, you won't be leaking pre-cum. It's not going to be an inconvenience for you. But once you get in the bedroom, start rolling, then, then you're going to start leaking a little bit, you know, but that's when you want it. So check uh-huh. it out. You're going to be surprised. You're going to be blown away. You and your partner will both be blown away. So uh, code PKA for that. All right. Uh, oh, yeah, Kyle, you wanted to talk about a couple people almost dying. Oh, my dying. God. Oh, my God. Like, like, I said on PKN that I, despite all of these videos about people dying while hiking, mountaineering, canyoning, I'm kind of – it makes me want to go do it because mm-hmm. the reasons they're getting into trouble – are always stupidity yeah, or, or like this. arrogance. Like there was one guy who liked to hike ultralight and he just went off to a place where he couldn't survive and died basically because he was arrogant. There was Huge a couple, L. there was a couple that mm. thought they were taking a fucking shortcut in a blizzard and just drove off into a nature preserve. Cause they couldn't tell they were on gravel instead of pavement because of the snow went 50 miles into the wilderness and got the truck stuck, ended up losing all, all of their toes and barely getting out alive by the time they were done because they the both person, lost all their toes they both lost all their toes husband and wife they had the baby in like a sleeping bag dragging it through the snow and instead of turning around and going the way they had come in which was 50 miles they looked at the map and they were like oh we could just cut across the wilderness area and it's about 20 but that's mountains and rivers and shit 
yeah. and they, and they're wearing like sweats because they didn't expect to go mountaineering that day. So like the pre the woman like she gives that a gas like ten miles in. Of he course. has to put her yeah. in a cave, go back to the truck, and then go fifty miles to help. It he lost all. Did his the toes. baby die? The baby was fine. It was breastfeeding and staying in like I don't know three layers of shit. You know, oh, it was Jesus gonna live Christ. the in a situation like that. The baby will live as long as the mom will. But like mm -hmm. they both lost all their toes. And in the interviews with them, they're just the wife's like, "Oh, I didn't mind losing all my toes as long as little Jesse lived." And I was thinking like, I'd Aww. be so mad at that man who like had military service. And the whole trip was to go to like a second cousin's funeral or some shit. It no, who not cares? Necessary. Yeah. There was <laughs> every single one of those stories starts that way. It's like they shouldn't be there to begin with. There, there were these three mm -hmm. old men who took some 15 year old boy scouts into uh, the grand Canyon and got lost. And as each of the old men fails, like physically, they get left behind until it's just the boys climbing down a 200 foot sheer rock face to get to the Colorado river. One of the three boys dies of dehydration, a hundred yards from the river. Oh, Jesus dehydration a hundred yards from the river. They couldn't yards. get hooked. They couldn't hook him up. Like he collapsed. They ran the, the the rest of the distance. Came back with water, and they got rescue services to him as soon because they ran into like kayakers on the, when they Jesus got to the Christ. river. But they helicoptered in. It didn't matter. They were like, "Sorry, your friend's dead," and all the old men lived. But they're all just fucked. Like like they went into the desert, and on day one of a day three thing, seventy five percent of their water is gone. It's such easy math to know you got to turn around. Yeah. Like, like, it's more than. That's a horrible amount. How do you not notice that? Like, hey, does everybody a, have their water? Uh, I only got a couple sips left. All right, forge ahead, boys. We're only twenty five hundred miles from the river. They were so far away from the river, like, like so. And apparently, it was some like unusual heat wave there, so it was one hundred and twelve degrees in the canyon. <laughs> Oof. Hmm. All I don't know how the old men like didn't die then. But I, I would. Woody, did you go on a, a pretty considerate, considerable hike? Uh, like 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 um through a trail or something with a friend. Yeah, the John Muir Trail. I did it with a couple of friends. How how far is that? <clears throat> we went, I think, eighty miles. That's a serious hike. How many days? Seven. Okay. No, we we planned seven. I think we did it in six or five. Okay. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> These people will end up. You know, obviously they're doing death marches. It's like let's get out of here. We're gonna die. And they'll be doing twenty miles a day. And it's like, oh my god. And you, and their feet are rotting off. Like like they have. Not just blisters, but sometimes jungle fungus and like all sorts of nasty stuff going on. That's the part with me. I'm kind of a bitch about my feet. Once I get a blister or something, or like I don't know if you've ever had sh like shoes that are rubbing the back. Yeah, I had center. And like one of the Achilles guys tendon. I was with was a fucking trooper. Like it, he had blisters on his feet that were as bad as any blisters you've seen in real life. They covered the entire back edge, like. Not just the back of his heel, but the back of his heel wrapping around. To the the bottom of his heel was blistered. And and at the end of, like, at camp, he would just peel off more skin than I knew you had to spare. Fuck. And he never complained once. What he didn't a man. even mention that his feet Was hurt. he ex-military like, or something? Like, like who is this man? Is he, like, a accountant or something? What's his background? He was PKA Dan's friend from childhood. Just God, nice guy. Dude. dude yeah. I, I don't have that in me. Like... Like growing up, we would work hard, but if if I ever got blisters, I was like, well, I'm done. That's why I'm always so serious about. I always wear gloves with anything I do. That's like, if I'm gonna if I'm gonna do mechanic work or go under a house or anything, I'd always put leather gloves on. And Dad would even give me a hard time, like, get your gloves on, let's go. <laughs> and then some jobs, it's like you're gonna get sucked in wearing those fucking gloves. This is not a glove job. Anything right. but a spinning thing, it's like, you, mm. you know, I don't I don't do that. But I was wearing my gloves the other day, operating a side grinder. My finger got sucked in, and it fucked the glove up, not me. And it was, it was like, oh, thank God. Like, the, the glove is all sanded down. I can see my finger through it, but I'm fine. Yeah, yeah. Angle grinder is one where I'm not sure. You know, would you have maybe just glanced off it and not been hurt, but you got pulled in a little more? Or like you said, like, I've also had it where, like, the last inch of my glove got pulled into a thing, but not my finger. You know, maybe it saved me. Yeah. But I, um, I don't have the safety backing thing on the grinder. You know, it's just the wheel yeah, spinning. Too. I can't often reach what I'm trying to reach. Yeah. Um, so, I think it's less gonna, likely oh. to pull you in because there's nothing to like pinch you against. You know, you can't get pinched against that guard. I watch 
videos somewhat like the ones you talked about, but they're aviation based. And it's always a cascade of mistakes. It's never like one thing went wrong and boom, now the guy's fallen out of the sky. Yeah. It's like this thing happened and then he reacted improperly to that. And then he reacted improperly to that. And by his fourth mistake, he had no more chances to correct it. Yeah. It, it Same sort of thing. It's always that. Like, there's one where they're on like a, a a pleasure cruise and a fairly large sail slash. It's got a motor, but it's a big sailboat. And um, it goes down in the night because they don't have charts for the place that they're in. They don't have the proper charts. They have charts for where they're going, but they don't have charts for the emergency stop that they need to make because they let the, the noob go up top and she got flung in the waves and her back hit the, the railing and she's fucked up. So as the boat's going down, the girl with the back injury holds onto the rigging and the and the mast or whatever as it's going down gets tangled in it and gets gruesome cuts on her legs from the from the cabling. Then the the good <laughs> emergency bag gets lost to the sea. The thing that had like the radio, the transponder, the food, the water, the desalination, the sunscreen. This sounds really helpful. It's literally like <laughs> like God mode. Like oh we're good. <laughs> Oh, uh, hey, yeah. be right here. Hey, bring us some champagne because we're pretty happy. Like, <laughs> you know, that, but we've got so much peanut butter in this thing. You guys got jelly and bread? <laughs> yeah, it, it was that, but they lose that, and now they're in a shitty dinghy. And they're being buffeted by waves. They're still in a storm, so they go under. They, they go. They, they flip it upside down, and they go under, and, and the girl with the cuts, she's afraid. She's claustrophobic. She's she's not a, a, an ocean girl. They're They're interviewing the survivors, and there's like a bad bitch in the group. Like she's got her hair up in a very like, I don't know, athletic kind of way. And mm -hmm. she can tell she's pretty, but like, I don't know. She's had a lot of sun in her life. You can tell. And she's just like, she was not a seaworthy woman or something like that. Oh <laughs> like, yeah. I like it. Like, she looked down on the other woman. She's like, I don't even know what she was doing up there to get flung into the railing. She should have been below deck as she was told. Like every step of the way, she's like talking about how one of the men got themselves killed and she's like we did the best we could we told him not to drink the water he drank the water then he saw a boat and then he started swimming he swam until we didn't see him anymore then we heard him scream as the sharks ate him because the sharks are everywhere beneath the boat because of this woman's bleeding leg mm -hmm. at one point yeah. the guy complained someone's real he, he's like stop kicking my legs and she's like all right i'm just gonna look down and find his fucking legs so I don't bump them anymore. So she sticks her head underneath and she's like, it's a swarm of sharks. <laughs> sharks just bumping she's their like, legs. She's like, there are no less than 30 sharks beneath us. <laughs> and, and they like still had their woman. legs in the water? <laughs> Only two of them ended up living. The rest of them succumbed to their injuries I guess so. or she swam weird. away. The woman and, and uh, one guy uh, ended up living. <sighs> Jesus Christ. I have, that sounded like a really good one. That there was being out at sea one. would be the scariest way, place to be stranded. There's something very horrifying about the ocean to me. Like even Woody being like, "Oh, I just sometimes would swim until as far as I could." I'm like, "Ah, why? Why, <laughs> why would you do that?" <laughs> like, because <laughs> I'm conquest focused. I think you and I are are in particular. So because we've done, so, we've been in the, the ocean water so much less than Woody. Maybe maybe one yeah. percent of what he has would be. Oh, not even not even one percent. There's, no there's no way it's one percent. There's no way. There's no way it's one percent as much like time in the it's ocean. A quarter of a percent. So to yeah. me, it's a very scary place, full of scary lassophobia like shit. You know, when I see yeah. that endless blue deep below you, and when I see like apex fucking predators that are in their element, and my dumb ass cannot swim. Like, like I mean, I can stay <laughs> afloat, but I ain't going yeah. nowhere. Okay. <laughs> I'm not you're, going you're not anywhere. like winning any contests, and you're certainly not winning a contest against a animal that lives there. Do you I'll, know why I, you can't drink salt water? Do you guys know why? I think it takes more to process the salt out of your kidneys than you get from the water, right? You're exactly right. I didn't know that until I was like older than you. You learned it faster than me. But yeah, I was like, <laughs> I know you can't drink salt water, but it's water, and it's the only water available. Why isn't it better than nothing? And it's because, <laughs> like, when you have too much salt, you need to drink water. The concentration of salt in this water is greater than the amount of water you get from it. So it's, <laughs> it's like that old Simpsons where like they get stranded and home like Homer misremembers the line. He's like, yeah, remember the line? Water, water everywhere. Let's all have a drink. And then, <laughs> <laughs> like, no, Homer. No, Homer. No, stop. <laughs> Human Homer, kidneys can like, like only Flanders, make Flanders is like 
the pro, right? He's like, oh, don't worry. We've got our hip, our survival kit there with rations that'll feed <laughs> yeah, us for a week. Yeah, survival diddly diddly. <laughs> Homer's eating like a week's worth of yes. everyone's food. And now he's got the fucking uh, <laughs> Swiss Army knife with every blade popped out on a, on a, on a dinghy. And he like it drops it and it's bouncing <gasps> with every pokey thing imaginable. And then the gag is it lands and the, the magnifying glass melts a hole in the yeah. book. <laughs> Man, Old Simpsons, so funny. So funny. But Do you like um, Who Framed Roger Rabbit? I've never seen that. What? Never seen. That's the one where it's like half cartoons. It's been too long. Yeah, yeah. I, I bring it up because I just saw. I don't. I don't do like a, that style. I remember even as a it. kid when that like was was big. There's no one else who doesn't like like it. this. This is it is unique in 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 the way that it combines uh, 2D animation and live action. And no one has mm-hmm. ever went to the trouble that they went to 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 do it uh, the way they did it because they would have, they would have animated characters carrying around real objects. And to achieve that, they use like animatronics and robot arms and like, st- like, like lifted stages with like tracks hidden underneath to carry plates around and stuff I had no and idea all sorts of shit on it. strings. There's a scene where there's like an octopus bartender and, you know, he's like mm-hmm. shaking multiple drinks and doing all sorts of stuff. So they have actual drinks like hung by wires being dangled up in the air and stuff. Uh, I only mentioned it because I just watched Red Letter Media do a whole thing on it, and I, I hadn't seen it forever either. I might watch it. The, oh, if you don't have any more cool survival tales, I wanted to ask you. So it's weird. You mentioned this like two months ago out of nowhere where you're like, these fucking solicitors, they keep coming to my house, these solicitors. And I was like, that's weird. Like, I'm trying to remember the last time. And I was like thinking back like, oh, yeah, last summer. Every once in a while, a bug person or a pest person would cold call you or uh, a gutter person like, oh, uh, you need our gutter guards. Like those were like the two big people that would come and find you. Tree removal people. Windows, and those maybe, final yeah, siding. I've never gotten a Windows person. There's maybe Mont one Air. person last summer I got total. And in the past two weeks, I've gotten like four people, five people. And I am like. You, you were talking about how, like, I just straight up told this guy to fuck off. I was getting irritated. And I always try to, like, be I, – I, I, I know what it's like to be in shitty jobs, and you know you're bothering someone or, or inconveniencing them. And, like, so I don't want them to feel uncomfortable or bad or anything. And so I'm usually just like, you know, I, I'm i sorry. Like, I, I just – I want to save your time as much as mine. Uh, I'm not going to buy anything today. Uh, you know, that I apologize for the inconvenience. Like, and then they just – leave but this guy today just like would not take no for an answer mm-hmm. to where like he kept to being like yeah best like and he's like show me pictures of all the pests they handle and i'm like that's okay. great i actually had a pest control problem last year and i hired a termite company and i have had zero problems since they came removed the termites and then set up these traps outside my house and he's like what company did that what brand i'm like you can read it on there if you want to bend down i could not tell you like, but this is not a good time for me. I was in the middle of something. I had been spending all morning on a project I needed done by early afternoon, and I needed that shit fucking done. And Should've I was like, your grooving phone. on it. Can you get rid of this guy? Click, click. See that yeah. shit? <laughs> <laughs> I, you know what? Yeah, I've been having, I <laughs> having a real <laughs> pest problem. Yeah, yeah, yeah. These guys show up around noon, knock on my door, even with the sign and everything. And they try to sell me services that I could have <laughs> easily acquired on the internet. Can you put like yeah. bear traps around here or something like that to get I the felt, traps? If you could get up in that tower with a rifle, <laughs> and if you see the fucking Orkin man coming, no warning shots. Take his knee out immediately yeah. if you see him, dude. I got so I got comes on by fucking Orkin selling... man. What the fuck? No, I hear you, but you're stuck. There you are. Yeah, you're fine. No, I had a All fucking my meltdown. Just with... went black. <laughs> Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Cool. I'm back now. I'm back now. Uh, oh, anyway. So the guy I was talking to him and I, I was, I, I don't think I was like overtly rude, but after like the fourth, no, I was like, dude, this is a bad time. And I just closed the door and went back to work and he left. And like, I felt guilty about it being what? like, being like, man, that was like, I should have been nicer to that guy. But, but he was pushing me so much. And like, it was obviously not a good time. Like he could see, <laughs> He could like from What'd my front window. I, I was like, he said it's not a good this time. is not this is really not a good time. This is a bad time right now. And I closed the door in his face. Tell you're not even bad. Uh-uh. I no. I but after working all, at Enterprise all, and getting what, treated like such dog like, shit, I feel really I'm very sensitive about it. <laughs> I once I, I didn't want to say this because it's this has come up a couple weeks in a row. Fuck, I'm gonna take shit for this. There was a <laughs> I'll back you no matter what. 
<laughs> there was a traveling steak salesman that passed not one, not two, but three no soliciting signs on the way to my front porch. And I had just moved to this house. This is like six years ago or something. Mm -hmm. I was very excited about the lack of solicitors. I thought my driveway, which to me anyway, is enormous, right? Like it maybe in the scale of driveways. It's, considerable. it's, not that it's a big, big driveway. But, yeah. We don't get any trick-or-treaters, that's for fucking sure. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, but traveling salesman, I guess we get a couple. So, uh, so the guy comes up the long freaking driveway, and he wants to sell me steaks out of a cooler. And I, like me today, maybe I listen. But I, at the time, I was like, no, no, you're invading my palace. I just moved here. I thought this wasn't going to happen to me anymore. We were in my last place, like two blocks from like the big Mormon place. Oh, in, God. And they the were tabernacle. constantly trying to get me to believe in this Mormon shit. Like, <laughs> like, like all time. And then if it wasn't the Mormons, it was all like the high school kids. Hey, here's my football team. Here's whatever. And we gave to them, but I didn't like it. Anyway, uh, this guy comes and I might have said something exactly like get the fuck out of here. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was way worse to the Orkin man. <laughs> no, I'm, 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 I was, you're not going to take shit for that. That's he was three like, no soliciting signs. Yeah, and the, the guy was like, what? What did you say? And I looked him in the eye and I said, get the fuck out of here. I was like, you passed three no soliciting signs. You know exactly what you did. You completely disregarded our wishes. And now here you are in my front doorstep trying to sell me something. Just go. And like he didn't mm -hmm. want to go because I had made it like a manhood challenge or something. Oh, I can, and I, I know, I'll tell you how to fix that. <laughs> <laughs> there were two of them, and, 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 them. <laughs> and they were all beefed up on steaks. nothing but these two mountains barreling towards up my driveway. <laughs> but yeah, eventually, like I. I don't even know how it deal. Like I didn't back down and I guess neither did they, but we managed to just separate and it's like, they're not making a sale here. And I could have handled I could have said, no, you could have gotten a I, gun. I could have probably. Yeah. Fuck, but, he's he's one of those guys. I tell guns. you what, he'll tell you, <laughs> you wing the steak, man. I guarantee he tells the fucking guy with the vinyl siding, the guy with the window tinting. The all vacuum dude's never stuffings. coming around. And, yeah. and guess what you forget about on your front porch when you get winged. The steaks. <laughs> <laughs> they leave all that behind. Oh, that's, like that's charcuterie you, like, you like shoot you shoot one of them in the knee and they go to like wheel their, their thing of steaks with no no no. Leave the steak. <laughs> <laughs> Is it worth your life, boy? <laughs> no, the and they're like, why do you start talking like the that? The man did the same exact shit to me. And uh and like I don't like people knocking on my fucking door to begin with. So like I go out there and I'm like, What? What do you want? You know, like I'm, I, I see his fucking silly hat. You know, he's got that helmet on and shit. <laughs> like he's doing some real industrial shit, that Orkin Man helmet. And I was like, what What do you want? And he tries to shake my hand. I know he's the fucking Orkin Man. I'm like, I refuse to shake his hand. And I'm like, I look back at the no soliciting signs. And I'm just like, you walk right past all the signs. I was like, they say no soliciting. That means you. That mm -hmm. means you. And he's yeah. like. Yeah, yeah, your neighbors had signs too, but they said they had a lot of pests last last spring. And he goes into this like thing about my neighbors and their pest problem. Yeah, and I'm like, I don't give a fuck about their problems. I was like, you need to leave. And he's like, what? I was like, you need to leave. And he didn't leave quite 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 quickly enough. I felt. I think it was the same thing Woody's describing. Mm -hmm. So I did this thing where I went, oh, you don't want to leave? I know how to fix this. And I like darted back into the house like I was going to get something. He fucking <laughs> ran. I could hear his feet as I was like fake ducking back into the house. He pitter pattered the fuck out of there. I didn't have anything to grab. Like, like there's nothing in there. <laughs> you could probably have a, a cattle prod just for situations like oh. that. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I love the idea of like like just to threaten him a little if it, if it made that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Or just once start answering with go, like, okay. The, once you've been told to go, you're, <laughs> once you've been told to go once, you're trespassing, um, and mm. you know you saw. I just watched that that gif again, or the whole video, whatever. The guy in Texas who's gets into the confrontation with the guy on his front step. He's like the stepdad, and the real dad has shown up to pick up his kid, and he was supposed to be, but they disagree on that point. The the two men, and he's like, "Get the fuck off my porch." And the guy doesn't get oh, off the porch. He goes this. in and he gets a gun. 
like a cool gun. It's like a, <laughs> a pistol caliber rifle with a suppressor on it. Sure. <laughs> and uh, and he's like, get the fuck out of here. And the guy says, I'll take that away from you and kill you with it. You do ne- not want to say that. That is not a threat you want to make. That's on like camera. probably legally what a threat is. It's, uh, I am it's going to take definition. that from you and kill you with it. <laughs> so he says yeah, right? those words. And then they can get you sign a, something to that effect? Because yeah. this is going to help me even more. more. <laughs> then the man. guy gives him a warning <laughs> shot, you know, but it just goes thunk, you gives know, in the old porch. boogie. And he gives him the old warning <laughs> shot, and the guy tries to take the gun away from him. He wins the tussle for a gun, and then double taps him dead right there on the on the front porch. And like the guy's like family is recording it, and her reaction is so weird. I don't think she knows what has just happened, even though the man's laying face down. Like the family of the man dead. in the house is videoing. No, no, there is the a person the in the driveway with a camera. Okay, okay, Thank like you. giving you like a front row seat to this whole thing. No charges uh, for that guy, by the way. Like, like I, I loved going through not. the comments of that thing and and them being like, I bet this guy's getting the chair, and I bet he spent good riddance to this guy, long time in prison, and then some like wonderful person just tells every what? one of them, nope, no charges pressed. What, what retarded comment section is this on? Oh, you know, Reddit. Reddit. Yeah, yeah that, that Reddit. checks out. Yeah. Yeah. And and look, I don't mean to like tell that story in a way that makes it seem like the dead man was in the wrong because he was there to pick up his child and he had an appointment, you know? Uh Oh, Hmm. Jesus. Um, So So it doesn't seem like seems like that could have been handled better. That's that's where I am on on it. Yeah, Mm -hmm. I think I think they're bad at de-escalation. Room for improvement. (laughs) (laughs) Better luck next time. Yeah. Oftentimes when you see these shootings, it's two people who aren't good at de-escalation. Two people who didn't who never said, you know what? Like even the guy who was found a you know, justifiable homicide, they found him completely in the right, everything's cool. I bet if he could redo it, he'd be like, you know, this was actually not my favorite way for it to go down. Yeah, now he's got a stepson and he smoked the kid's dad. Uh, That's gonna okay. be awkward around Christmas time. That's a strong point. He killed that kid. Oh, fuck. Yeah, he last killed- Sunday. Hey, we just went through Father's Day. How do you think things were rolling over at that house? Right? <laughs> like, what'd you get him? A gun? <laughs> yeah. Like, like, that's the other thing. Oh, like, like, he's not okay. a part. Zach says I, he's not part. They Oh, they left the stepdad. She divorced the stepdad. So oh. apparently, killing your ex-husband makes you an ex-husband too. Well, shit. Well, I, I'll say this. Do not threaten people's lives because that's a that's that's a, a legal thing you're doing. You're, you're, mm-hmm. you're, 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 you're Things are going to a level you're not prepared for potentially. If you, when you say I'm going to kill you, don't say that. Yeah. Don't say that. You should have said, uh, "Don't point that gun at me. Someone could get hurt." That'd be a good thing to say, but don't tell anybody with a gun that you'll take it from them and kill them with it, because yeah. then they are well within their rights to shoot you when you try to then take it from them. Mm. <laughs> no, yeah. that one was crazy. Do you remember um, that video? Which one? Oh, I was going to say, do you remember that video? The the two big fat shirtless guys like on a gravel driveway and it was something i looked it up it was something about a mattress and this guy was either trying to like throw away a mattress or box spring on some other guy's property or or disputed property and these two guys like the big fat guy had like a shotgun on his back and the other guy had a handgun and they kill him yeah they killed him yeah i'm trying to find out what actually happened if those guys went to to wasn't that in georgia it was a father and son i think the the, it was the two guys that were together and then th- they were in one of those ridiculous arguments that you only see, frankly, in our country where there's, <laughs> there's, it, there's two drunk guys with their shirts off who both have guns and they're arguing about like, you know, get the fuck out of here. Or I'll shoot you. No, you get the fuck out of here. Or I'll shoot you. And it's like, Whoa, maybe we should both put our guns down. Gentlemen. Like maybe that's step one. So like, could we fight about this, please? <laughs> Like, 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 I don't know why they both have fucking guns and are like talking shit back and forth. And they basically talk shit until one of them pulls the trigger and kills the other one. Yeah. I don't know why you're talking. Yeah, this one was definitely not at all, not at all justifiable. This one. It's just an argument where two people have guns and one guy doesn't. And, you know, it's not worth killing someone over a fucking mattress. One guy just said, do it pussy too many times for his own good. It's what happened. I don't know why you're talking shit to a guy holding a shotgun. I would be so fucking terrified if somebody had a shotgun pointed at me. Oh, yeah. Ugh, I just watched that video again. Jesus Christ. It's so wild how fragile we are. Like, we can be 
like so robust in some ways with repairing ourselves. And, and then in other ways, it's like, oh, that guy was just like walking around like that. He probably had like a dinner plan or something he wanted. And then he got into a fight stupidly with these two maniacs with guns. And then he's just, it's over. Oh, just I got out. better with that. I saw two guys pass each other on a sidewalk, right? And they bump shoulders. They turn around and one of them wants to talk shit. He goes to talk shit and make a thing of it. And the other one punches him. He falls over into the path of a bus and is immediately decapitated. Like all he had to do was be like, we're good. Excuse me. Excuse yeah. me. Pardon he me. turned around and wanted to make a thing of it. And the other guy shoves him or punches him. I don't remember which. And his head exploded under the tires of like a bus or some shit. It was, it all happened so quick. It's a quick death. That fragility is crazy. Like mm -hmm. I, <clears throat> And my head's on paramotor accidents. I have seen guys like fail to launch on a picture of paramotor with wheels on it and they're trying to take off and the thing just tumbles and yard sails with pieces of prop and netting and cage and who knows what just flying everywhere with scattered debris behind them. And the pilot gets up and he's 100% fine. I have seen other guys take a hard landing and their butt just kind of scooch hits it. And now... Phew, they're fighting to to walk again and it like didn't even look that bad i, I know a guy on a motorcycle mm -hmm. so i made a left hand turn in front of him and he went like over the car so imagine him going over the hood kind of feet first somehow i don't know and he landed on his butt and that guy's mostly paralyzed from the waist down too have Jesus you seen Christ. the guy he's he's parachuting he's landing mm -hmm. i don't know what he was he's landing in a parachute i don't know how he how he what happened before then but he's sort of like pulling down the toggles and like scooting his butt up to sort of like get his legs kind of straight out to like sort of slide in. Sure, sure, sure. And, and there's like these little man-made ponds almost that seem like they'd be good to skid into, mm -hmm. but he skids right at the end of one where there's like an embankment and you can see his, from his GoPro, his legs compound fracture as they hit it. Dude. And it's one of those things like I, when I'm on Reddit, I'm just like watching gifts. Like, like it could be anything from, like mm -hmm. a mom making pie for her kids to what I just described. So I'm usually real quick to like, nope, I don't want to see anyone get burned alive and like yeah. fix that. But like, I, I didn't know what was going to happen. It was like, oh, I bet he's going to do that. Like skid across the water thing that. That's right. You see cool. people who do it really well. Mm -hmm. He fucking blew both of his legs up. They like, <sighs> like, like you saw like red meat and bone just bow out of both of them. And I was just like, ah, no, no. <laughs> no my Paramotor pilots do that too. So that, the mm -hmm. speed of a of a canopy like that, whether it be a paraglider or a parachute, is fixed. They always go the same speed, pretty much. But if you go down, you can temporarily increase your speed. So they kind of dive at the ground, level out, and then they can go extra far with that extra speed that they call energy. Mm -hmm. You're playing chicken with the ground, hoping to turn it just the right time. A lot of my friends are really good at it. I'm not. It's not a skill I've ever worked on. Um, mm -hmm. This is my safety like philosophy i do boring launches launches boring landings exciting flights very that's smart my, that's my thing but the launch and landing it should be very boring and just like i meant it to be but swoop landings look fun it looks you uh you, you, you ever or of, it looks horrific have yeah you heard of, <laughs> have you ever heard of bebo russell no idea no. is that a real is that a fictitious person yeah, they call him the sky thief um so Bebo worked baggage handling at an airport. Oh, I remember this guy, the Sky King. <laughs> he played uh, he played some video game simulators with planes, and occasionally he'd ask pilots, "What's that switch do? Or what's this switch do?" One time they even caught him in the cockpit toggling around with the switches uh, that he hadn't been told about before, and they they reprimanded him. Well, turned out that Bebo was depressed, suicidal, like really kind of done with life. And so he stole a large passenger plane, took it out, and as they're like, hey, oh, you do not have clearance to move on the runway or the blah, he just ignores them, takes it off perfectly, and then starts doing tricks in it that most experts say are beyond them and they would never attempt, especially not at those altitudes. This man has like a medium-sized passenger plane doing barrel rolls and and loop de loops there's a there is a loop that he does where i'm gonna guess he it looks like he's gonna crash i'm like oh this is him dying 
because he's 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 like coming out of the loop mm -hmm. and like he's losing so much altitude. He's right above the ground in this mm -hmm. big plane mm -hmm. and he recovers it and takes it back up. And he's talking to them as like more calmly than I am right now. He's like, yeah, I, I think I'm going to try to do a barrel roll. And <laughs> if I make it through that, I think I'm just going to put her down in that island over there. I really didn't think I'd I'd make it this far, frankly. <laughs> And he just sort of like gives his suicide letter right there. Yeah. He's like, there's going to be a lot of family and friends that are going to be disappointed in me. I'm real sorry, but I guess I'm just a guy with a few screws loose and I'm just done. Yeah. Here's I'm apparently some quotes, like uh, some conversations between them. They have the audio. Yeah, I've heard it. Just flying around the plane. You seem comfortable with that is the operator. Oh, hell yeah. It's a blast. I've played <laughs> video games before. So, uh, you know, I know what I'm doing a little bit. <laughs> okay, and you can see all the terrain around you. You've got no issue with visibility or anything. Nah, everything's peachy. Peachy <laughs> clean. Just did a little circuit around Rainier. It's beautiful. I think I've got some gas to go check out the Olympics. <laughs> <laughs> Damn it, Andrew. People's lives are at stake here. Ah, Rich, don't say stuff like that. And that was another guy there talking on the same yeah. thing. I don't want to hurt no one. I just want you to whisper sweet nothings in my ear. They, they asked him. <laughs> Well, Rich, I already talked to him. Just like me, what we want to see is you not get hurt or get anyone else hurt. So if you want to try and land, that's the way to go. Hey, I want the coordinates of that orca, you know, the mama orca with the baby. I want to go see that guy. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck? Sorry, my mic wow. came off. I threw up a little bit. Sorry about that. I hope it doesn't ruin your day. <laughs> hey, do you think if I land this successfully, Alaska will give me a job as a pilot? <laughs> <laughs> you know, I think they would give you a job doing anything if you could pull this off. Yeah, right. Nah, I'm a white guy. <laughs> oh, 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 that's gold. <laughs> this oh, guy. The middle one of sorry, my mic came off. I threw up a little bit. I'm sorry about this. I hope it doesn't ruin your day. <laughs> it's, it's so funny. He just from his quotes, he seemed like a guy that just he, he just was having like, a blast flying around he, wanting to have no you don't get it he doesn't have any future like that's his no i, I but know he's I'm, having some fun there on he's his having way some out. fun on his way like, out like, is what you, he was trying to i do. wish we could show like the footage of him flying the plane because it legitimately doesn't look real like 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 what he's doing in that plane he's doing like stunts and a yeah. passenger <laughs> plane for the fun of it and he's mm -hmm. i i had seen like um this old footage of I don't know, one of the big Boeing planes doing those maneuvers in Nevada, like when they were proving them. And it was a test pilot with a parachute, and he mm -hmm. was at like high altitude doing these maneuvers. This kid has never been in a plane before, and he's doing them over a lake. Like the mm -hmm. public is out watching. It's absurd. He's yeah, so apparently he said he wanted to do it over the lake so that if he fucked up, no one would get hurt other than him. Eventually he put it down on a little uh when I say put it down, he fucking crashed, crashed it, it nose yeah. first as fast as he could into the ground. Uh, in an unpopulated area. If he would have landed it successfully, like I feel like by this point, that was a few years ago now, like he would have been like doing Kimmel or something like they like, sure. Stealing a plan. Actually, no, he'd be in fucking Guantanamo. Probably he'd either be doing Kimmel if people thought it was funny and it was like a popular thing to meme on it. Or if it was like, this guy's a domestic terrorist, then he'd be in. If he got to be on TV in court, if they had like his court thing on TV, he would win over like like everybody based on his personality there, right? Because he, he he's very yeah, endearing. He seems, seems funny. He's all those naw shucks, you know, sweet nothings, the, that kind of language. I heard his voice. He's so chill. It's um, I feel for him. Like he's clearly course. in pain. He committed yeah, suicide. Sad. He he didn't want to hurt anyone else. He did mm -hmm. steal some pretty expensive equipment, but. <laughs> <Good for him. laughs> But He's yeah, I don't know. American on the way out. <laughs> yeah, I don't really like the airlines myself. Yeah, Delta's the best. I don't care what anybody says. Like, like Delta. I think, I think I I'm. Thought biased. you'd say Virgin. I thought you were. Uh, you're, you're a you're a Georgia guy, so of I've course only Delta's been able to you. fly. Right. So Virgin doesn't fly flights out of Atlanta. Seemingly, mm -hmm. I, I don't know. They they they've rarely been an option in the past. I I've only had one Virgin flight. That was really chill. Now that I think about it, that they had this like purplish. Uh, pink lighting in first class, and it was a nighttime flight from like Seattle down to LA or something. Like it's only like a two and a half hour flight, but it was super chill. And uh, I just remember Kitty and I are up in first class, and I'm in, I'm in the window, and their first class is pretty nice. The seats recline, and then you still have like it, it's like you're in a recliner, and then you could get out of the recliner and stand and look back at the leg thing kicked up. There's there's still mm -hmm. enough room to stand there, and this little Asian lady snuck up out of coach. 
and like walks into that space. Like she's between us and the people in front of us. Like, like we're reclined. We're like curled up in blankets, like like in our first class seats. It's nighttime. And she's like poking Kitty. Hey, hey, like waking her up and asking her how much the tickets up here cost. <laughs> how much your tickets cost? It's like, I refuse to help. I refuse to help or translate because Kit- Kitty wakes up and she's like, well, what's it all about? Oh, what is it? What? Oh, what does it want? <laughs> <laughs> My and finally, the, finally, the flight attendant showed up and shooed that little lady back to where she belonged in the back. Yeah. I like it when the flight attendants do that because it makes me feel special. They, I, I think this is Schroedenberg. <laughs> like when you take pleasure from other people's pain, I, I may have that word messed up, but again, paramotors, I talked about it much tonight. There have been days where I launch and it's cloudy and it's yucky out. And the whole area, everywhere, everyone in North Carolina is stuck in this shitty gray day. But there's a few holes in the clouds and I go through those and now I am in the sun. All you fucknards are having a shitty cloudy day. But I am up here above the clouds in the sun. And that somehow makes it nicer than if we were all in the sun. I just together. imagine you like getting just low enough so that you can skip along the tops of the clouds. And like you're playing like, I'm walking on sunshine. Yeah, you could totally do that. Yeah, you can hang out way above the clouds and get a better view of them. You can just drag your feet in it. Clouds smell a certain way. Let me ask you this. Uh, maybe this is a stupid question. It, is there ever any like instance where you would be worried about like getting sucked up in some sort of uh updraft and taken to like scary high altitudes yes but these are not those kind of clouds yeah uh, these are have you ever been like adjacent to those kinds of clouds where it's like oh we better not go over there or we could possibly get sucked up and like pass out from uh, from no oxygen yeah, people do i haven't i it, like when they warned the us nightmare. and taught us about cloud suck it was like quicksand as a child, like careful of cloud suck. Careful, cloud suck is going to be a major problem in your free <laughs> flying career. Be quite, this is what cloud suck could look like. And you know, there's these people at 32,000 feet freezing to death. Oh my and, God. Yeah. And meanwhile, when I actually free fly, like without a motor, I'm doing everything I can to scratch and just stay in the air. It's, it's very hard to fly for more than an hour or so. And, yeah. uh, you know, they act like I won't be able to get down. That's never <sighs> happened. Like, like that to me is is very similar to being sucked out to sea, like like yeah. by the current and like like taken out to that nothingness where like, I don't know, you just can't really do anything. When they get sucked up to those high altitudes, you know, they 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 lose consciousness because it's so cold, and then the 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 they'll they'll drop down enough so they wake up again and they're all icy and they're like fuck fuck yeah. we gotta fix this problem, but then they start going back up again and they yeah. pass out and like. Who knows how long that could happen for? I've seen die or fix the problem. People like usually you carry um, it's what is a fucking cutting knife called? The the hook knife I'm looking for. So that they carry a hook knife, they destroy their wing, they cut the lines, they throw their reserve parachute, but even it descends too quick or not quickly enough. So they get sucked up, and now they're under parachute and they can't steer or do anything about it. Oh my god! It's, I haven't seen it. I've seen it on YouTube. Yeah, how high can you go up in the paramotor or with any kind of parachute? I guess before the air gets too thin and it just uh, it doesn't hold you up. Anymore. It, it, it's not it's, that it. It's the time you're up there as well. So the people I wanted to know how like, close to space you could float to. <laughs> like I, I would say it caps out around thirty thousand feet. Is as high as people have gone thirty two thousand feet, thirty seven thousand. Where feet. is space? What was the line? There? Fifty, like, right? 50? Or, no, it's like kilometers, right? But Kyle probably knows this. Fifty thousand feet. That. That's... I remember that there's a lot of there's a lot of back and forth about where space actually is, but then oh I watched God, NASA program. pick a line. <laughs> they they have picked the line. I don't I don't know where it is. It might be fifty kilometers. I I don't know. Yeah, I, it's where it's where oh, it sixty two miles. It's where it turns black miles. way off instead of there. blue. Yeah, yeah. Oh man, we're so off. Yeah, sixty two miles. Yeah, so and fifty thousand like feet would be a little three hundred and twenty thousand feet or something. Three, wait, wait, wait. Sixty two miles is 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 over three hundred thousand feet. Yeah, uh, so yeah, you, that's, we're, right, that's dumb. To... I, I I I refuse to use that number. Okay. Why? I just googled. It. That's absurd. Well, what did that like, guy like, uh, the from? Because what did he that float away. Red Bull? What did the Red Bull guy jump from? That because that was fucking space. The Red Bull guy had to be like 50, 60,000 feet. He wasn't he wasn't 300,000 is is so fucking high. Okay, he was Felix took off from 128,000 feet, so 24.5 miles. Yeah. So I mean? 
and, and that guy's in space. You can see the curvature of the Earth and, and it's space black above things. him. It's yeah, like, like, it's black it's above him. That's the blue. line. Here's what I say: It's space when the fucking sky turns black above you. Okay? Obviously, blue is oh, sky. Wait, that's just black is space. Well, when it's know. daytime and, the sky, <laughs> and yet the sky turns black above you, you're right uh, on the edge of space. At 300 it's, miles. It's I always like daytime somewhere. Away. You're orbiting at 300 <laughs> miles. I feel like maybe I'm wrong, but but Jesus Christ, it seems real high. It doesn't yeah. fucking matter. Um, all I know thing is that, I know, but... all I know is that like you know, if you're up at 15 or 20 thousand feet for extended amounts of time, you're gonna have headaches and all sort of diminished capacity. Mm -hmm. I don't know where you just pass out and how long you have to be exposed to that, but I would imagine 30,000 feet. You know, they're obviously they're pressurizing aircraft already. So 30,000 feet, it's quick. I know it below 10 grand, don't worry about it. You're fine. Yeah. Like, there's no that above 10 grand. I want to say at 10 grand, you get an hour or something like that. I, I forget. There's a guideline for it. It but, took uh, this guy 90 minutes to fall. To reach what? target altitude and then pull. He fell for an hour and a half. He probably had a fucking Pixar movie and like a little screen, so he wasn't. This didn't guy get bored. at twenty six thousand feet, roughly, it took him ninety minutes to pull a shoot. No, that no, is not this, the, the the Red Bull guy, the one hundred twenty eight thousand feet guy. Is that, is that, that includes the ascent, him. though, right? It took Baumgartner about ninety minutes to reach. Oh yeah, fuck yeah. Yeah, never mind. <laughs> yeah, yeah you can't fall. I was imagining skin. him like crossing an immense amount of distance over time. <laughs> <laughs> like wow, we're going he's just skimming. He's like skipping across he's the in a wing suit, yeah. just basically going for oh, like a transatlantic funny. parachute. <laughs> I wish cool thing in I wish I paid more cooler. attention to it today. But I, but today I watched a little documentary about these three men who wanted to go to the North Pole and uh, in a nitrogen balloon or some shit. Mm. And it was like, I, forgive me, I don't remember the year, but it was around the time when they thought you could go to the North Pole in a nitrogen balloon. Did so, Richard Branson get involved a little bit? Dude, this is like black and white photos times oh, when this okay, happened. Okay. So so these guys get into this fucking thing and they think they can steer it using ropes they're dragging, but immediately like two of the ropes hydrogen? like fall off. I don't know what the balloon was made out of. It was giant. It had a net around it. This is like old timey as fuck. Okay. They ended mm -hmm. up nowhere near the North Pole, but way <laughs> up where it was cold. They get out on the ice because, you know, they've ran out of, like, it, it won't float anymore. They thought it would last 900 days. That was their initial estimate for how long it would stay alive. Ballsy. It, 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 stayed at like, <laughs> it stayed at, like, three weeks or something like that. <laughs> they ended up, like, on this ice pack, and then that broke away from the mainland and started floating away. Oh, and so no. And so they're hunting Tears polar bears, and they're eating. They're, there are very few polar bear out on the ice, but they're, they're shooting them and eating them, and they're eating the brains and the livers and everything and Whoa. like and and like sea life their livers are full of like vitamin, vitamin a, a or some yeah. shit you can't eat those so like they're getting like vitamin a poisoning from the seals and the and the bears taylor and, you knew that already yeah yeah i knew from a documentary they were like talking about how if Sorry, you eat Kyle. too much liver it poisons you like well from uh polar bears specifically because of how much vitamin a accumulates in their in their liver and what an it. obscure piece of knowledge that both of you have. Hey, 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 careful, careful, careful. Not too much polar bear liver. <laughs> <laughs> Not Keep any. Keep it reasonable. <laughs> There's no room on my plate for a, for a bit of polar bear liver that'll, that'll ruin my, my macros. But anyway, they, they ended up fucking dying. Like, like, like they, they went up there and fucking died. Like, like, I really like those videos of the disasters and stuff. Um, there's so many of these dumbasses who are like, they'll get three quarters of the way up a mountain and then the weather will come in. And they'd be like, we can do it. <laughs> and it's like, dude, come back tomorrow or the next day or next week. They always die. They always die. I want to know what the forecast they saw was. That I judge that a lot. Um, again, with the motor stuff. But yeah, in flight, sometimes they're like, we just got caught in bad weather. What can you do? You can check the forecast. I want to know what the forecast said when you made that call. Yeah. And then I'll judge you. I mean, back then, did... I mean, the it's forecasts well, now aren't even then. like aren't even that great. But back then, were they? Well, Kyle well? mentioned he switched it to mountain climbing. So oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, we're going back and forth between. I was disasters. screaming about I my just, dog. I'm gonna shut the fuck up. I didn't miss. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I wish that there were uh, more shows like that because that's the shit I like. I like that life threatening, um, like disaster type stuff. I like seeing how people mm -hmm. found the will to to get out of that stuff. Whether whether they had to cut their hand off or just march through the desert, way beyond what they should have been doing and they talk about hallucinating and hearing things and it's fucked like, like the guy who had to walk and so far he lost all of his toes he was hallucinating that 
his wife's ghost were, was there urging him on and he thought his wife had died. He thought that meant his wife was dead and that only the baby remained behind. And so he's like, I gotta go. I gotta go. <laughs> like, like, like he, it That's was such insane. a scary situation to imagine yourself in. Yeah. And the he got himself helplessness. into it. Like when you watch like the first 15 minutes of every episode, you're like, well, you deserve anything you get. <laughs> well, th there's a reason that all of the episodes are like that. And it's not like on a Sunday, Bear Grylls went out for a week long expedition. Being an expert, he packed exactly enough supplies <laughs> and he left safely seven days later after finding a safe way to survive long term. Like these people are guys who like probably went to a subreddit about outdoorsing, bought a bunch of expensive shit and then took their brand new sneakers out to be w the wild boys. Like I would imagine. Because that's just retarded. You have to you have to be a, a stone cold because the one where it was like they were in a blizzard and they got lost on the road. That one is way more understandable than, oh, I decided to go on a cross ocean expedition with no experience whatsoever. Yeah, I no, saw I, one where the guy was there. Oh, he was in some country, some third world jungle country there to like get rid of mines for the UN or something like that. He actually had a, an independent organization that demines war zones. And he's an American white guy. No, mm -hmm. a British white guy in this third world fucking country. And they get uh, kidnapped by, um, who was Paul Pot? Where was that at? That was in Cambodia. That's where he is. He's in fucking Cambodia. And like Paul Pot's like child soldiers, or not child soldiers, there are child soldiers, but his military fucking captures them. And, and him and his his like workers and they don't understand that he's an independent organization he, he's got a translator but everybody that he talks to is real pissed that he's there and they're talking about torturing them to death and killing them and like every step of the way he's he's like manipulating them he's such a smart guy he, he, he's like so i just thought right away i couldn't let them treat me like i was a regular prisoner I was a white man in this country. I was a British man. And that still meant something to these people, maybe. <laughs> He's like, whether you like it or not, I used it. So when they told me to walk into the river and see if it was too deep for the truck, I, I refused. And I said that they should send the, one of his men. And they did. <laughs> it's like whenever they told me I had to come with them, I said it was against the rules of my organization. <laughs> 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 and they would think about it a minute and it would, They'd be like, no, you have to. But they thought about it for a minute. And he was sort of getting into their head that he was to be treated no, as It doesn't seem like a reasonable rule. So, <laughs> <laughs> and there was a part, and he's like a long distance runner. That's his thing. So like, there's a part where they let him go take a bath. And like, I guess they were respectful of his privacy. So they like let him go around the way and like strip down. He's like bathing himself in the river. And he's thinking like, if I run, they'll never catch me. I can, I can run up this river. It leads all the way back to the town. I run marathons. It would be nothing for me to knock out 10 or 15 miles, uh, uh, you know, up this, up this river bank. But if I leave, they're going to kill all my little work, my little Cambodian friends. Oh. And then they interview one of his little Cambodian buddies. And he's like, he's like, John, John, he a brave man. He could have, <laughs> he could have left. Many people would leave me. Many, many people I know would leave me. John would not leave me. <laughs> I like that. Like a stand up guy. He goes, John is a brave man. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, he is. And John ends up like getting to, he literally befriends the like head poobah of the death squad and like has a nice meal with him where they give him beer and like their best food. And then they, they like send child soldiers to escort him out of the, out of like the war zone. Like he, bef he, he, he used like That's his power persuasion do, and his career. That's I'd be Kyle would handle it. I, yeah, that's what I do. Just what John did. Yes. Um, yeah. I mean, I would, I would try to, but I don't he know would that charm would the head poobah and get it done. Dude, I, I'd be like, it's a 15 mile run. I don't no, I don't ran up that fuck, I tell you what, I'd have <laughs> <laughs> ran up that fucking river and left those Cambodians behind. That's what I'd have probably. We done. need to I'd, combine our forces. I think I would have stayed behind, but lacked the charm. Even <laughs> you would John, have ran, but had the charm. <laughs> even John <laughs> together, said, we could save these people. He he was like. <laughs> He was like, human beings, when we get down to it, are very selfish. And I really wanted to run up that river and leave him behind. <laughs> <laughs> like, he was really weighing whether he should abandon these guys. That that's a, that's a really fucking brave, val valiant is a better word. That's a valiant yeah. way to behave. He Then, then uh, he got blown up by a mine a couple years later in a different oh, country. In a, yeah. in, a, in, a, in a different country, it blew his right leg off and his right arm. 
Oh, and, he's okay. Uh, and well, so, then, and so he got a prosthetic <laughs> leg out of the Kyle spectrum. <laughs> so, so, so then he got a prosthetic. <laughs> hear me out here, because he's this, this is how hardcore he is. He got a prosthetic leg and a prosthetic hook arm, and he competed in that thing where they run seven marathons back to back to back in the Sahara. <laughs> and yeah, but that just depends him. on how charged your electric wheelchair is. No, he's running with his prosthetic <laughs> leg through the Sahara Desert. Oh, he had a bionic leg. He cheated. Yeah. Oh, it does not look a good leg. Yeah, pirates, <laughs> pirates <laughs> it, was it, a bl- it wasn't a blade leg. They hadn't come out with that yet. He's in the sand. He's in the sand. He's mm. just like a stump. So it was a big inflatable tire. <laughs> <laughs> he just, no, that guy was awesome. Just, um, that, that was what another one. John I be alive, guys. I don't know what his, his real name is. John Grisham. John Grisham. John Grisham. Yeah, you wrote the Pelican <laughs> Brief. Oh. Taylor, are you reading any books right now? Yes, yeah, he is. actually, uh, I'm at like page a thousand of um, <laughs> uh, Stormlight Archive book four. So I've got 220, 230 more pages to go. So I think Does after it this. Suck? No, I'm loving it. I'm I don't know where in the book you like thought it started getting boring and shitty. I'm really enjoying all of the uh uh, all of the drama and everything surrounding the the kind of home base of Erythuru now, or Erythuru. I don't know how it's pronounced in the um, in Yorithuru. the audio. Books. Erythuru. That's probably how that sounds more official. Erythuru is how I've been doing it in my head, but it's great. I'm really enjoying it. I even planned out. I got some more stuff from our, our Death by Gummy Bears sponsor earlier today. Oh, and so I've already planned out. After this show's over, I'm going to drink some of that new pineapple flavored syrup he just sent me to sample before they Ooh, take that live. Is that syrup? The little like capsules right no it's a it's the the syrup container it says like oh, delta nine or something yeah yeah i think i need to have a vape to use some of this stuff yeah, so yes you, you, yeah the shatter you you need. yeah you definitely got some cartridges that need to be mm-hmm. screwed into like um you know oh, a vape pen right um okay. that are delta 10 i think and then you've got there's those a, cough syrups yeah. that are delta nine and there's also some like little nugs of weed um that i just i haven't used um but they're I haven't used them either they're right here yeah, they, they they look like little space rocks, but I don't have yeah, a grinder cool. or a pipe or anything. I don't, I don't smoke weed, um, but I do like that syrup. I tried some of that scissor the other day. I unlike you, I did not mix it with Sprite and make a whole cocktail out of it. That was a mistake. Don't do that, folks. And like this, this isn't even available like yet for for purchase for like what we're pushing. They were just telling us like this will be available, but or it's available somewhere. But it's very good. So my plan after this show tonight is. I mean, it's available from. What's a, the dose? Game. What's a beginner's dose of the syrup? Like the uh, you want to, you want to go. So the whole container is six hundred and fifty milligrams, and so for you, you'd probably want to like take a spoon and just like do it like that, like it was medicine, like a small shake tablespoon. Yeah, shake it first so you, you get it good. Um, but yeah, after this show, like that was my plan. I was I texted Kyle <laughs> earlier. The whole group, I was like, oh, after the show tonight. I'm going to drink some of that syrup right out of the bottle, get absolutely blasted off my ass, and then like read a fantasy novel. It's going to be I, one. I'm, like, I, I'm excited thinking about it. It's going to be a great evening. I only started drinking the scissor, as I choose to call it, uh, last week. I cracked open like the grape or something, and, and I started off carefully, like one sip, and then felt that, and then had – I'm up to four sips, whatever that is. I just turn the bottle up and, and drink it, and it's pretty strong stuff. Like, And it's – I don't know. It it doesn't taste terrible. No, it doesn't, it, it doesn't taste good. It, it doesn't taste great. But when I made the mixed drink with the with the syrup and the sprite, I thought it was going to be fancy, and it was. It was. It's better to just 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 drink the syrup. Get it over with. Yeah, it and then reminded have a me a lot sprite. of. You ever have Dimatap elixir as a kid? That grape cough yes. medicine. Yeah. First of all, that as a child was my favorite flavor. Like like I whenever I had a cough, it was like, mm, do we have dime attack? Yeah, yeah. Or do we have that bullshit Robitussin? Like if she's got the Robitussin, it's gonna be that bitter, nasty yeah. shit. The grape dime attack was like grape candy. It was so delicious. This kind of tastes like that, but it's you know, it's doing a hard it's like, having a hard time covering up that stank that is the drug. Uh, but yeah. it's pretty strong. It is. It is strong. And it I feel like it hits you even faster. Th- that's probably just like a liquid thing. Like the liquid's going to get into you faster than the solid, right? Mm, I, I don't know. Uh, it does feel mm, like it, it works kind faster, of makes though. Sense. It really does feel like it works faster. Uh, but he sent like a shitload of gummies today. They're uh, 2,500 milligram jars, about this big. Yeah, uh, they just added those options onto their site. That they're, they're strong. I had a couple people tweet me today, and they were like, Taylor, I didn't take you seriously when you said to start very slow. You were right. And I was like, yeah, yeah. Like I wasn't memeing, dude. Like be, 
like don't I don't want you to get so blasted you're not enjoying yourself. I want you to have a nice comfortable high. Like feel feel good. Like don't but don't PKA be, you know, we take care of your brain and your dick around here. Take care of your brain, your dick, the all sorts of body parts. We need That's a, about it. You know, you're right. That is <laughs> mostly <laughs> those two. Have you guys kept up with the Uvalde police stuff? Yes. I haven't. Or no, I saw that picture of them like they were like hanging out in the school apparently and, a, yes. and previously they were like I, we weren't in the school at all at that time we we didn't know what the situation was dude it seems like the police are lying every step of the way they said that the server has lost all the body cam footage now and it's just it can never be released we'll see if that holds true but oh my god no one believes that bullshit uh, if the body cam footage makes the police look good oh my it's out in like 45 minutes they they release that shit if it makes the police look bad, it takes weeks, years, or maybe just gets damaged in a file server error, as it does here. Um, what was I going to say? Uh, it seems like the whole city is on the side of covering up for these corrupt police. Look at these pussies, like around the bend. There's children in there with a murderer, and they're thinking about what to do next. Like just down right the down hall. the hall somewhere on the right or left. I don't know if the hall's open. Like somewhere down there. they can Oh, don't give them that much credit. They're so... They're so scared. They're so no. That wasn't scared. that wasn't credit. I'm saying they can hear shots from a hall. Oh, they can definitely hear the shots. You remember you know, high school, right? You could hear someone talking. Trying, fucking so currently, yards. they're blaming. It seems like they're trying to pin the entire thing on the the commanding officer on the scene, which I'm a little confused. So, but 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 my understanding of it from just like picking up Reddit information is that this guy was the chief of police or something like that. But but now he's on the city council. Yes. Yeah, he like, got like, like he made that job. transition like right after this like like so he got voted in before this oh but you know it took a little while for him to actually get the what, job what wonderful timing for him yeah so they uh i think they should have given him the job because i'm really cautious about ignoring the will of the people like even though it's probably pretty clear but they can't recall him because he has to be in there for like eight months or something like that and they can't do something else. But what they can do is deny his leave of absence, which I think they're doing. Yeah. So, so he's going to get fired. That's it? Basically, it's the only legal mechanism they have to fire him from his next promotion. Well, that th job. Th we're not talking. Th th Taylor, don't don't misunderstand and think that this is the only thing that's ever going to happen to him. This is just the thing that's happening right now is they're trying to get him kicked off the city council. Is this is yeah. moving too slow. I feel like we have enough evidence that they didn't. <laughs> but, um, they're, they're supposed to be fucking but, but, no, but you can't I, just kick him off because it's a it. So, Taylor, I think that you'll respect this position. He was voted in by the people. This is the will of the people. Now, we all agree that he's a fuck shit and that he needs to get fired and put in jail or whatever. But we were careful about the precedent of ignoring the will of the people. He got voted into this job. He should get it on some level. Yeah, and yeah the, I, see, this, I hear where you're coming from. It's just the, the, the it's justice the news, it's uh, the the collides end. with it, the reason on things it, like it that. doesn't even matter like he's never apparently never shown up for a meeting you know like because like, like, he doesn't want to face the people but like even before right they may uh, have no really he was like, just sworn in like two or three weeks oh, ago well yeah. fair enough then in any case it, it seems like they're trying to pin the whole thing on him like like but but it's like okay so he ordered you not to go in and you like, like there, we don't have one guy who's like well, if they say if they tell me not to, I won't go and save the children. Like, like we had like, one border patrol guy. <laughs> I just can't imagine that the chain of command at, at, at Uvalde is so intense that when your commanding officer, this old, this good old boy says, "Nope, don't go in," everybody sticks their thumb up their ass and lets the kids die. His argument think... is he didn't know he was in charge. He's like, I didn't know that I was in charge at the time. Great. So, like the way you tell the story. He's acting in charge and telling people not to go in. I'm not sure if that's true. It might be. Maybe you heard something I didn't. Yeah, that's, that, that was the story I was reading today. Oh, okay. I, I don't know. The, the whole thing's awful. I, they were in there um, really quickly, and then they stayed there at the end of that hallway and didn't do anything. So yeah. I, I, don't, I don't like that they're trying to blame this on one guy and act like, oh, whoa, those poor other cops. They, everybody, every cop there wanted to storm in, but they, they couldn't because orders are orders. Like. They're trying to do that right now, and it's just like all oh, all those cops, all of them, every one of them. They're, the cops Ex aren't except get for the them. ones that tried to go in and were restrained and had their guns taken away. There was <laughs> that, that person guy. was off duty, right? The guy's wife called him and says, "I'm bleeding, I'm shot," and he tries to go in, and they are, they uh, tackle him and take his gun away. Like the the, the it's like make believe. It's so that's hard. like it's so absurd. despicable.
at this point, the police were pretty much in partnership with the murderer. Basically an alliance. Yeah. Like, it, like it, it sounds crazy, but like everything the police did in that situation expressly acted to the benefit of the shooter inside. Not one thing they did offered any threat. Like, it, if anything, their presence there made people think this is under control, you know, kind of step back. If what they it, hadn't been happen. there, like, if they hadn't been there, like, like the people in the neighborhood would have solved it. Uh, fat, uh, so it, fucking it, fast. So much I, faster than those cunts. I, I, I don't know, man. It, the, the whole thing is fucked. Um, I'm really shocked that it would happen in a small town like this. Like, I, I, I think of those hmm. guys as the ones who would, I don't know, go, go, go take care of some business. You know, I don't know shit about the shooter, really. Good. Yeah. That's for the best, I think. You think yeah. it's I don't even tell me. I don't care enough to even know. I, I don't know. Like sometimes they have this well thought out, like, th- like, like uh, the Unabomber, right? Like when you read mm-hmm. his manifesto, it was like, oh shit, this guy was really fucking smart. He just had some. He took things this a little. This guy was more... not the Unabomber. The Unabomber was no, a mathematical guy... generational talent who got MK Ultra into becoming a maniac. This guy, on the other hand, really just seems like a piece of shit who, like, we, it, we're wasting our time to get inside of his head. Yeah. Agreed. I, I've been when he mentally disrespecting I don't police believe across the nation. And, like, do they deserve that? I don't know. Yeah. They yeah, suck. I don't like them. They suck most and of the time. And, like, if something bad were to happen to any of the three of us, they're not going to be the ones to solve it. They're not going to stop anything from happening. It's not in their job title to stop things from happening. What would actually happen is they would, like, come and make problems for you after the fact. Like, they they wouldn't be helpful. Like I, I hear that all the time, that they, it's not their job to break up a fight. It's not their job to protect you from this murder. It's not your job to protect you from this knife-wielding dude. And I'm like, what? The, I kind of thought that was your job. No, their job it's is to, to harm. protect and serve. No, that's that's marketing. That's marketing, dude. Their actual job crazy? is to is to, you know, bring their power to enemies of the state. When like when something happens to a politician or like a really powerful billionaire or something, oh, the police are rallied. Oh, they're there. Oh, they're protecting that mansion. They're protecting that block. Like they know or on some level they must know who they serve they're not going to protect like random people in the middle of a fucking you know 2020 blm riot or their businesses they're not doing any of that shit they just fucking stand there and do nothing and get ordered to stand down and in some of those situations i get it i i've talked about it i have a friend who is a cop who got called in to like the 2020 you know riots when all that mm-hmm. shit was going on that like wild summer and he got called into st louis and was like yeah they just like would tell us not to do anything like there would be bottles and bricks and shit thrown at us, and they would, and we would just stand there and just absorb blows. Oh, dude, I time. saw this guy. And on, then um, sometimes it would just go wild, and they start beating the shit out of people. Like, I saw it, it a guy break into a, a. It was in Hollywood, I think. I saw a guy break into a, a cop car in the middle of the day. He's like, he just doesn't care that there are people around witnessing him smash the windows of the cop car in, and then he reaches in and steals a laptop, and I expect him to take off oh. running. He like nonchalantly like dusts it off and inspects it like yeah this will do and then like <laughs> strolls away like he did he did not give a fuck have I've you seen never videos seen in San Francisco those, of I, of the Best Buys they they started the out running in and just stealing shit and now they're getting carts before they go in. <laughs> They're, they're like taking the time come to in like bring Santa Claus and carts and then just steal shit and then nonchalantly walk out because apparently we don't live in a, a real society. I in, saw in the guy come in. You can't just steal shit. I saw the guy come in to a CVS and he's on an electric bike and he's got like a giant sack. I mean, like 40 gallon sack. And he gets every piece of cosmetics in the CVS, every lipstick and eyeliner. And like, you know, those are like really expensive for the amount they weigh. Yeah, the yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, 18 dollars. And it's like, zzz, like, this like zips right out. Then they can't do anything. I saw, I saw a whole montage of them. Um, Zach, I don't know if you can play the audio from that thing I just sent you, yeah, but that that's a no real 911 call paved. that I feel like is just, I don't even know how to react to it. It's, it's, it's a real quick one though that I found on Reddit. I think, what is it? 30 seconds. Oh, oh, you sent it. I see on, on what? Yeah, I don't know if it's possible to play that here. Just the audio, maybe. The video's irrelevant. It's just like video to take up the space of video. It's not um, related to the audio. But it's a 911 call from a mother with uh, a, some rowdy kids. I, I, after I heard it, I want to see what, what your take is. 
whether you think the the mother making the call is a piece of shit or the 911 operator is a piece of shit because I can't decide and I'm usually like real quick right down the middle and I I, I kind of I kind of take a side but I couldn't on this one I I feel that they might both be assholes but we'll see what you think What is your emergency? Yes, um, I need a police officer over here at Seven Court. What's going on? Um, I've got two teenage daughters, and I just got home from work. They were um, physically fighting with each other, and one of them kicked a hole in a door. And um, they're 12 and almost 14, and the 12-year-old is completely out of control. And I, I can't, I physically, if she's as big as I am, I can't control her. Okay, did you want us to come over to shoot her? <laughs> are you there excuse me uh, that's a joke okay so who are you what is your name mike forbis <laughs> mike, mike forbis cool, cool guy of the week, guy of the week. <laughs> cool guy of the week locked up i've we haven't done that bit in a year but <laughs> cool guy of the week mike forbes a little, little golf clap for that guy. What, you want me to come over and fucking shoot your daughter, you dumb bitch? <laughs> <laughs> Just the, the the intonation of his voice in that is hilarious. You it would be like, funny if if it would be funny if it that weren't funny. a likely outcome of calling them to respond to something like that. Um, like, like, go to that police activity channel, and for the most part, the cops are in the right um, when they pull the trigger. Uh, I'll say that for sure. But you'll see so many where it's like there's no de-escalation. It's so easy to take steps backwards and just get out of there. Like, like there's an old lady with a knife that I watched. I, I've, I've referenced it before because I've seen her die so many times. It keeps popping up on Reddit. And she's just so old and so out of it holding this knife. And she's in the house. And he's in the garage. And he just has to take one backward step. And he's in the yard now. But he's just like, put it down, put it down. And it's like, dude, does she look like she's going to negotiate with you right now? She she thinks fucking Kennedy's the president right now. She's right. She's got two knives and she's being wacky with them. Like, you're not going to be able to negotiate. You need to, t- you need to take a step backwards and we need to find somebody with a fucking net or something. You know, uh-huh. in the movies, that comical like net they throw over crazy people. It's like a um a comical net or maybe like the lasso with the stick, like they use on a dog's neck, you know? Ooh, the that would be control. so effective. Yeah. On a, I was thinking like like I've seen they usually use it as like a prop in a jokey movie, but mm-hmm. it's like uh it's like one of those nets you would use for fishing, but it's person sized and you like throw it over a crazy. Do you yeah. see the footage lately of the cowboys who got the runaway cow cows on the highway? Yes. Oh. Yeah, yes. okay, yeah. They could have handled this woman. I like that so much. Like, like, like when I, whenever I see a, a guy who can operate that fucking lasso, I think that's such a talent. Like, I didn't know that was real life. How do oh, they get yeah. the back legs? How do they, he, he's flinging them at them and like, 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 it's amazing. I couldn't really hit the back cool. legs with a baseball while I was riding a horse, and he somehow captures them it, with the lasso. Why aren't the legs on the ground? It's a, I don't know how they do it. It's he's incredible. like throwing a big loop that they end up like walking into, and then cinching it up and catching a leg. And I, you think they I, walk into it? They're not catching the leg while it's pointed in the back. I don't know. I think they, they're they're usually catching the cow when it's like in motion. So I think they're just throwing like under it and like leading the target and hoping that it like. I don't know. I don't okay. know. The, the, I'd love to talk to a cowboy about something like this, right? We should get I somebody. I bet they're terrible at telling stories. Oh, you got to find one of them storytelling cowboys. Yeah, like, you the, do. The, that plays the guitar and everything. Ukulele. Yeah. <laughs> but, like, uh, <laughs> I would like that. Um, Kyle, there oh. was a motorcycle question here that we could answer while Taylor's okay. away. All right. Woody and Kyle, from the perspective of both a new and longtime rider, what is the verdict on learning to ride a motorcycle? I've been holding back, jumping onto the hobby for a while. I feel like I'd really love it. The risk-reward dilemma is what's keeping me hesitant. I'm 25. I can afford it. I live in California, and I'm pretty risk-tolerant. Should I jump in? Yeah. Yeah, you think? Yeah, it's really fun. I would say I, I probably ride – I definitely always ride at least two days a week. Okay. And then there will be a week where I ride every day. Um, I haven't ridden probably in three or four. I've been – it's been a dis- I'm packing. I'm packing and like mm-hmm. throwing things away. Get like 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 I, I talked about it earlier, like going to more of a Spartan version of Kyle that doesn't have any possessions. I've thrown so many things away. Uh but uh but yeah, I highly recommend 
uh, getting a bike. I think that you should ride a bunch of them if you can before you pick one. I'm not sure I love my bike more than I might like something else. Mm. I don't have any, I don't have a lot of comparison. I've ridden a couple of other bikes and I haven't found anything that I like more yet, but I'm sure there's something that would just, I'd be like, Oh, what, what have I been missing? If I, I, I wish there'd been a, I wish I'd gone through a process where instead of picking something that looked cool, I'd have like ridden 30 bikes and like found the one that felt really cool. Not again, not that I don't like my bike and it feels good. It takes curves really well. Not that I take them too fast anyway, but uh, I just like cruising around on my motorcycle uh, on cool days and um, usually at night lately. I like it a lot. I like mine too. Mine's partly a social thing. You know, like it, mm-hmm. <laughs> I, I put. I think I have on my Facebook, like half of my friends think helmet head is just what I look like, you know, like whether it be from the paramotors or from the motorcycles or, or what have you, uh, it's a shared activity that gets me out camping and it gets me out riding and it gets me out doing things with other guy friends. And I like motorcycles for motorcycles. I do ride by myself. I just went on a long ride two days ago, but, um, I also like that it, you know, it, it's helped me form part of my friend group. I like knowing that, like, if I needed to escape the city, mm-hmm. I, could, I could, I could, I could throw my backpack on and fill my little saddlebag thing up, my tank bag up, with like the bare essentials, and uh, and and just zip on out of the city. And I could split lanes if I needed. To. I mean, if it's an emergency, like, we'll just scrape along between cars if we need to. Who fucking cares sure. if we're like, if, if 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 like Putin is nuking cities or something like that, and I need to head west. Um, <laughs> I was gonna. Then, he's in California, so he can split lanes anytime he wants to, ooh. and he pays California gas prices. It's like, wouldn't you like to have 60, 70 miles per gallon in split lanes? Is that what you get? Not me, no, no. But there are bikes that do. Mine gets yeah. like 50, 50. 42. Okay. Yeah. I think. Mine will do 42 if I turn, if I go fast enough. <laughs> I'm in the 40s when I go 100. I don't, I don't think it's a, I think my back bike's just not very fuel economical or something like that. Maybe it's a product of being a four cylinder. I don't know. I know, I know just, a, I don't know. I don't know much about bikes, not nearly as much as you do. I was showing um, a couple of my friends that little, um, you sent like four pictures of you on your adventure bike and oh, one yeah, of them yeah. was on its side. I yeah. accidentally started with that one and I, I, I was <laughs> like, my friend Woody's on an adventure. Look. And she's like, Oh, it doesn't look like it's going very well. I'm like, oh, no, 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 hang on, hang on. Go back. That's, that moment. <laughs> that was, that's his worst moment. Trust me. Most of the time it's upright. But uh, I like that you include that picture. What he's like on an adventure. And it's like his bike in like three or four pristine, cool little areas. And then on its side in a mud hole is the last picture. Yeah, yeah. It doesn't always go the way you planned. Dude, I'm, I'm glad that it's like, I like the idea of like dropping that thing as just a learning experience and not, a, oh, fuck. You That's know, one thing I so for a new rider, I like the idea of being able to drop the bike and it not being an event. You know, like if you get a supermoto or an adventure bike or a couple of bikes are just built to be dropped. Dirt bikes, I mean, I fall all the time, maybe a couple times a day on my dirt bike. It's supposed to be dropped. They built it with that in mind. Yeah. And then there are other bikes like the, the naked street bikes or the mine didn't take it well. Yeah, I did it in my tank when I went down. Yeah, it, they didn't have falling in mind when they built that bike. Whereas mine, like I didn't even pick it up. I took pictures first. Uh, <laughs> I, that was that was one of the most embarrassing moments in a, I'd had in a long time. Picking that <laughs> Dropping that bike at the intersection. Woo! Picking that thing up with those people. Like I could see them. Like like I, I've got tinted lens, so they can't see my eyes. Thank God. So there's a little bit of anonymity there, but I'm look. I, I can tell they're they're like staring daggers at the idiot who just crashed right in front of them, and I'm just trying to get that fucking thing up and start it again, and like up into like dirt. I'm, I have to ride it through dirt and stuff at first. It was. <laughs> I don't know what other people see when they see me in my gear with my tinted lens, but I see the coolest guy in the world. <laughs> I'm Batman. <laughs> I'm, yeah, I'm fucking Batman. You can't see my face. I'm like, I bet they think I'm like handsome and 27 years old. That's probably their assumption. That's <laughs> probably their assumption. Drive by AARP license plate. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 uh, I, I like when I'm in town and there's like glass in the windows and you can look over and you can see yourself on the bike. I'm like, oh, I, I look good on the bike. Like, like yeah. everything matches. Like, 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 like the bike's red. I'm red. Um, and you know, um, how a suit jacket can give anybody like a really nice V and stuff like yeah. my protective jacket. It, it's got, I don't know if it has padding up here. Maybe it does. But does. Like, 
I just feel like it it V's me up in a really attractive way. And uh and then I've got the <laughs> I got the, the tinted face mask. And I just think I look athletic and sharp in it. And yeah. I think you look athletic and sharp in just about anything you put on, big well, boy. Thank you, Kyle. <laughs> I think that's just how you look. <laughs> you guys are both so cute. Uh, <laughs> you know what? The last hour of our show every fair. week should just be like being nice, like encouraging each other. I, <laughs> I try to get the I try to get the gym talk like flowing again. Like, hey guys, let's talk about this. I, did, did I send a video? No, I don't think I shared the video of me doing you, dips today. I hit a new PR. Yeah, you, you sent the PR thing. I, I sent back when I saw it. You look awesome. Great job. I, I want to see you guys start working. Hey, look what I I'm did at the gym too today. Self conscious about my body. I'm gonna. I'm definitely gonna send like pictures. Like, like I'm about Aww. to be assembling the new gym. So like I'll definitely be sending oh, like yeah, pictures yeah. as I get everything put into place and I'm going to send pictures of the smoked meat I've been making. I'll I go for that. I like the mirroring and mirrors and lighting and music. That. Sometimes we are going full steam and sometimes it's, it's not full steam. Yeah. I had to switch houses. Um, the, the one I was going to move in they they were like, they moved my move in date past the date that I'm going to have to be out of here. So That's no go. Um, at the yeah. last minute, I'm having to choose a completely different house. So like the only Did thing you, I care about is the garage. You Can find a good one? Yeah. If people don't know, his move out date is about four days before his move in date, leaving him homeless for a few days. Yeah, and my but, belongings in the nether realm. I yeah. <laughs> but the way Kyle describes it, I guess one or two people own the planet's real estate now. So mm -hmm. he's choosing amongst their other properties. Yeah. And yeah, so uh, yeah. I uh so so I gotta pick one. I think I got like three in mind, but the only thing I care about is how big the garage is for this uh this gym. Um, so, so that's my main thing. I'm hoping that I've got enough room that I can put everything I want in there and also like throw like a ratty couch and a TV in there. And like, Ooh. I think if I hang out in there, then like not only I'll, I'll be able to get like two a days in, like I'll just randomly be like, yeah, let's lift this a little. Like, like, I think if I could work that, if I lived in a gym is what I'm going for. Cause I remember I watched pumping iron the other day and, <laughs> and they talk about how Arnold lived in the gym <laughs> for a while. He's like, like Arnold just. He just moved in, and, and he lived back there in that little sh in that little room, and he had his protein powder, and then he'd come out, and then he'd lift weights, and then he'd go back in there and sleep for eight hours. And this is like, oh, I kind of like Dude, that. What if you lived in a gym? That's so funny that like you say like the whole like if I'm just hanging out, I'll just start doing stuff. I'll go through phases where most of the time, like when I I, I try and keep it separate because I used to do that where I'd hang out in the gym more, but like it just makes me go slower. And so I would be like, all right, the next two hour block, I'm just busting ass. Like the first hour and hour and a half or so is my set. And then the next 30 minutes, I'll just do accessories that I kind of want if I'm not feeling quite pooped enough. And there were times like where my wife would come down and be like, are you going to come up for dinner at all? And I'm like, I mean, I finished my workout two hours ago. I'm just kind of firing off overhead presses, curls and, <laughs> and uh, seated rows every time I feel with energy. And she's like, that's stop. You're mixing push and pull, you fucking psycho. It was uh, it was an off day. It was an, it was an off day. It was an it was a rest day that I didn't want to rest, and so I was like, I'll just take like long breaks. I can kind of do a little bit of everything. I'm half stupid. on Team Kyle with this. I can see the idea that if you have the room right there, you might use it all the time. But the thing is, I do that not with the gym, but with the pantry. <laughs> if I spend too much time near the pantry. Oh, yeah, right? kettle. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, so I think I'm going to go cheap on this rack because I just don't see any reason to have an expensive one. So I'm going to get the cheapest so one right. I can find. Like I'm gonna get like a four or five hundred dollar one or something. Just make sure from... the depth is comfortable enough. Like yeah. that's the the biggest thing you need to work worry. Otherwise, you know, I, I, I wish I kind of wish I could do overhead press in the rack. Like if it was that tall. Yeah. Oh yeah. I want the tallest one. I want ninety three inches or whatever. I, I think there's some that are like over that, like in the hundreds. But ninety three inches is, is definitely what I want. That's a requirement. But I, I've got to buy a really nice piece of um, cardio equipment. So I think I'm gonna put that money there. So like instead of spending. 1500 or 2000 on like the Cadillac of K of power racks that I just really don't have a use for mm -hmm. other than to look at and say, that looks cool. I think I'm going to put that into a nice piece of cardio equipment. I've like looked at the, no, I, I've got, I've already got one of everything. I've I got, jump like, in on the, yeah. you, so, so I, for cardio, I have been going outside and like walking or even power walking for long times, but now it's 90 out at like 8 PM, hundred degrees today. Yeah, yeah it, it was 97 at 5 p.m. here. 
5 yeah. p.m. 97. Now, I don't know what it was after sunset, but still too hot. So I've been thinking about cardio. Now, please, where are you landing on your cardio? Okay, so elliptical is the only way to go. It's it, To me, it's which kind of elliptical. Because there are some that are, that Bowflex makes one that's more like a stepper. That's really a lot of glute activation. And it's almost like endless stairs because it's I so. Use that. But then like, um, um, I, I'm, I'm, I can't think of the brands right now, but maybe it's Solo or something, Soul or something like, like that. The Just the standard, almost? like the, the real important thing I've found is it, they need to have adjustable um, stride because as like six foot tall men, like we need to be able to adjust. And a lot of them are made for five foot eight men mm -hmm. and women. And that just won't feel right. But that's mm. the best thing I've I've done for cardio. You'd like a bike though. I bet you'd like um like like Rogue makes a an air bike that's like eight hundred dollars. Titan makes one air that's time. seven that's seven hundred dollars. The, the Peloton and, being a game would help a lot. Like that's that's a very distracting thing. And if you gamify something like the last time I rode on a bike for hours on end was 2018 during our fitness competition i i rode a bike for four and a half hours straight because of the competition we were having like mm -hmm. that that's what you need is that i uh, thought about a treadmill with a shelf for the computer for entertainment and the upside of the treadmill is it can go vertically against the wall and not take any space i don't like the treadmill i'm listening i just don't like the treadmill you know like like you're you're gonna be, you're walking right like like that that's what we're getting to is just indoor walking yeah, you can run you i run hate it. jogging on it like, like, like i've seen the ones that don't have motors now that are like this weird like suspended yeah band where you like push it with your own you're powering action. it i don't know i would just cheat to the point where i do dips and watch netflix <laughs> like, i got i got uh, <laughs> this is i, I don't I think really i've ever like told the, this on the show before i got i got like slightly Basically, my mom was hypersensitive about weight stuff because she was always like trying to look good and like wear nice things and everything. And so when I was like 10, I was I was not fat. I, I was not fat. I was playing hockey constantly. And she told me I was getting chubby and I couldn't have regular soda anymore. So that's why I'm like into diet and everything. But she oh fuck. Fuck, I just forgot where I was going with it. Your mom, she was always weight sensitive and she imparted that on you as a child. You weren't really chubby, but you were she thought you were uh, she she basically soda. like gave she like set this is a different thing but because i for, forgot where i was going but she set me up with that like you're fat all the time thing when i was mm -hmm. a normal weight like not all the time but she would like say like you're getting bored and it's like i'm playing competitive hockey like seven times a week like i'm See, not fat and i wish like, I, had I, I got to the point in like my mid-20s that i became like over fucking weight and like for a bit, I was like, you're not that fat. Like you're, you're just like, you're thinking about your mom's voice in your head again, saying you're overweight. And then like, I saw myself like naked out of the shower one day and it was like, your mom's so right. Like she's, you're an animal. You're an absolute like sack of, of bacon grease. Like just, mm. just disgusting. I went the other way. Salty. Like, like, let's say that now I think my perfect weight is just under 200, like 198, 199. I think I look pretty good. Um, but I'll weigh like 206 and it's like, oh, <laughs> so you're within like striking distance. You probably really weigh 203 like if it were earlier in the yeah. day. <laughs> and 203 is kind of like 198. And then like, I just lie to myself until I get like 10 pounds heavy and it's like, all right. 208 is not 198. They're not. That's not your morning cut. You yeah. Get back at it. I, I, I would like. I'm so much more delusional. Like I would like put on a pair of pants and be like, ah, these never fit. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, you shrunk them again. <laughs> you shrink one more of my shirts. <laughs> <laughs> Bitch, you shrunk everything in this house. <laughs> All of my clothes are too small. It how did you make the bed shrink? <laughs> that's how, that's um, like how, how like denial you get sometimes is like, ah, I've been doing my laundry too hot. No. <laughs> no, hot cycle has always been good to you, Taylor. It's only now that it's making a difference. Oh, but back Not to the, the, the cardio equipment. To yeah. me, it's an elliptical because of the, the, the low uh, impacts. So you're not fucking up your joints. And it's not like uh -huh. I don't have any issues with my joints. I think my right hip can give me a little bit of trouble if I do like if I do a deadlift just the wrong way, I guess I'll say. Or if I go too deep on a squat or something, my hip can give me a little bit of trouble. But other than that, I don't really have any issues at all. 
oh shit, I'm doing the thing Taylor did. I'm losing my train of thought. Oh, the, the yeah. So that's low impact. You like I, I've never liked treadmills because I can't commit to to steady state times on a treadmill. Mm-hmm. Like the idea of like jogging for an hour seems insane to me. I know that it's like there's a lot of people who enjoy that, but I'm just like fucking done with it after a while. Whereas with the elliptical, you can kind of use your legs for a while and then your arms can kick in and help a little bit. And you never really get burnt out. You're just doing mm-hmm. cardio for the sake Does of cardio. Does it tell you what to do or is it you deciding? Like, Because I would rather have a machine so what I, like, all right, Woody, for the next 45 seconds, I'm going to kick your ass. And <laughs> made it. Like, So what I do, um, I want to say um, 130 is, uh, is when we're burning calories. It's like cardio. And so Derek said to get to 130 uh, pul- uh, beats per minute and stay there for an, you know 45 minutes an hour whatever it was and so I, my watch has it exactly and the hand using my watch i was able to calibrate the handles on the machine that i'm holding and like okay it's it's four beats fast or whatever it is and then i could use that and i would just keep it at 130 for the whole fucking time so if that meant taking it kind of easy for a while yeah let's take it easy for a while as long as we keep our heart going and if i see it start getting 132 131 oh oh, let's bust ass let's get going and then i'd shoot it up to 170 sometimes and see how long it took me to cruise back down taking it easy just always keeping it at a rate where i was burning fat burning calories at a decent enough rate and then doing that every single day for three fucking months (laughs) i I remembered what i was saying while while dieting and doing 10,000 calories a day or 10,000 steps a day. The 10,000 steps a day are huge. If you can just get that in. It's so in easy to get 10,000. Every... It's so much less than you think. Well, I yeah, also like I, I, moves. When, when I'm on calls. That's completely I, I separate like, from my workout. I, I so, pace so around constantly. I only wear the pedometer when I'm doing my walk. So like, like that's oh. I make that its own fucking thing. Like those 10,000 steps are on top of like living. Like mm. Those are in the neighborhood. And lately, I've been not doing them. Because it's 103 yeah. fucking degrees out there. Yeah, so you just need to, to, to pace around your living room and talk to yourself. I get a lot of steps that way. Do you ever yell at yourself? Yeah, I. It's funny that uh, Josh brought it up earlier, but he's like, mushrooms like taught me to like be a little less critical on myself, like in my own head. Because for the longest time, like mo- the vast majority of my adult life, my internal monologue, like at any time I do anything, was like, "You're you fucking suck. Like you you're like you suck at this. You're bad. Stop trying. Like Keep fuck you. Time. You're a, you're a loser. Like you, you like I." And it was like only in the past couple of years that I was like, you know what? Like that's like a really bad way to talk to myself in my head. Like I need to like be like more uplifting in my head. Like if I, if I miss a workout or if I overeat or if I do something I don't like, I need to like cut off on like the roast session that I have for the next few days and be like, you know what? Yeah, you did that. You fucked up. Like you can do it. You've done it before where you've lost weight, where you've gotten like looking good. Like just do that. Like do that yeah, again. It- like that's made a big difference. It, it really, ha- it sounds silly, but like changing your pattern of thinking really is. I have a balance. It, it on makes that. you better. On one hand, I do like to keep my standards high. Hey, bro, that wasn't Mm -hmm. good enough. But it's balanced with, you know, one loss doesn't make you a loser. The the Golden State Warriors won the championship the year. They they, they probably lost like 30 games. I I don't know. Yeah. After the, including the playoffs. Totally agree. Um, I'm kind of interested in the bike that that allows you to do the competitive thing, though. That sounds fun. Yeah, there's two. There's the Peloton and the Swift. I I don't know how to pronounce Swift starting with a Z. But Zwift. Zwift. Yeah, they're ex- they're expensive. You guys do though, that right? easily. <laughs> well, no. <laughs> um, you can. There's different methods. You can buy like a kind of expensive one, like you suggested, and it's a full indoor stationary bike. You can put a regular bike on top of something that has a wheel under the tire, uh, and there's a whole range. Huh. I I mean, I want it. I'm going. To, I want something that I'll enjoy doing when I do it because that's the main thing. The thing that I had to do. God, it was so fucking awful. I literally, it's, this might sound a little silly, but I, I, I tried to meditate my way into a, a state of not being aware of how awful what was happening was. Like, I, I would be like 25 minutes in and, and want to be done. Like, like, I'm like, but I've got to do an hour. And I'm just like, I, it's so excruciating that I have like ants in my pants wanting to get off this fucking machine, about to have a fucking attack. I'm like, I want off this fucking machine. I want off of it. And I just close my eyes and like, just, just go to another happy place. Imagine I'm falling through darkness or something (laughs) like that infinitely and just go to a happy place. And when I would open my eyes, 
eight minutes might have passed. And I'd be like, holy shit, it worked. <laughs> Let's that do it did again. Work. Goodness. <laughs> no, I'll That's do that good... during planks and I can't get 30 seconds to pass. <laughs> oh, I will do that during planks too. And the amount of time between me being like, zone it out. And this is unbearable is embarrassing. <laughs> like, where it's like, 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 like a planks? minute in, you're... I'm saying what? like I, I I like planks. I like the way planks, planks feel on my core when the, I'm done. I actually do side planks and they're yeah, part of the McGill Big too. Three to like bulletproof your back. Oh, I didn't well, even know those were good then. for my back. The I'll side you, ones where you go like this and you I, yeah. I will say I was having a hard time not laughing at Josh about that that nonsense that, that the Pilates? Yeah, like come on. Come on. No, Pilates is better. fine. It depends on what your goals yeah, are. Yeah, that whole machine he wanted to be yanking on and, and stuff with the water thing and and, and look, come on. Yeah. I mean, stretch. Come a stretch. on. Youngest looking 52 year old I've ever seen in my life. Oh, the Pilates did that, that he started like last month. How long has he been no, doing Pilates? No, it seems like it's the he fucking does drugs. Look good. I actually, <laughs> so I was I was telling my friend that he was our guest tonight. I was kind of excited and I Googled him and he has shirtless pictures on the internet. And it's like, fuck, he's, he's fit. He looks I good. Do. He's Pilates is, a, Pilates is a, isn't it a girl? Th- isn't it like girl fitness? Like, like, like that, that's, I really, okay. Love, I do like, think that having said that, I like a lot of girl shit. So yeah. Pussy. <laughs> I don't know. Like, I, I, I guess I was just thinking they're fucking shoes. Every time I'm in like the girl section of REI, it, it, like, 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 this, like, is <laughs> this is my chance. <laughs> Whoa, are those right. Taylor Swift Velcros? <laughs> 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 I guess I just don't know anything about Pilates. It seems real fucking stupid to me. Even like like why can't yeah, you you're making me? an ass of yourself. <laughs> <laughs> I still don't know what they are. I try to get uh, people to explain it. Oh, uh, he they... couldn't even explain it. It's like you asked him what a producer does. He was like, "Well, you uh, well, show that weird machine with someone doing a scorpion tail with a pulley on their foot." <laughs> yeah, that's Pilates. Well, but not really though. And it's like, well, what the fuck do you do, bro? So it's, so it's if like you really asked me difficult what stretching was. I could tell you in a heartbeat. Like, like, like I could, I could, I could lay it out for you. Yeah, it's a I, kind of fight. I've actually, and, and you kept asking, that. do you go to a class? Are there people? Is there an instructor? It just go with the flow, bruh. And it's <laughs> it's like, what example. is Pilates? You're thinking Ferrari, and you should be thinking <laughs> <in> the beginning. <laughs> like, oh, there's my problem. You're I'm thinking yoga, you gotta think Pilates. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, I, I remembered uh, the the stupid treadmill like mom thing I was going to say when I was like 15, I was playing 15, 16 years old. I was playing so much competitive hockey. I was active every single day. And when I was home, like I was like, wasn't like sitting playing video games very much. I was playing COD four a little bit. It had just come out in 2007 when I was 16, but not that much. Mostly I was very active and my mom and to a lesser extent, my dad made me feel like I was a little like fat that summer and we're like, you need to use, we're going to make you go on the treadmill every day for like a certain amount of time. And it was like, like I'm going to fucking like hockey practice all the time. Like I was, it was incredibly active. The probably the most like activity I could have ever done in my life. I was constantly doing it from like 15 to 18. I was in great shape. And I remember I would go in the basement where the treadmill was in the first couple of days. Like I ran and did it and I would, I like leave and my mom would be like, how much did you run? And I'd like say the amount like distance or whatever. And so like after the first few days, I'm like, this is fucking bullshit. Like I'm, I'm so active all the time. (laughs) And so what I would do, I would go in there, I'd bring a bottle of water and I would turn on the treadmill as fast as it would go. And I would turn on the TV to something and I would stand on the sides of the treadmill as the distance was going by. And then before I went out, I'd pour some on my head on my shirt and go out and be like, man, what a, what a, what a run mom and dad. <laughs> and so I did that. And they like, by the end of the summer, we're like, we're, we could tell, we could tell a difference. And it's like, yeah, that's the fucking three hockey teams I'm on right now. <laughs> that's definitely not. That's the three on three. If what do you know? Like, you know, hockey, you know, three on three. Sure. That's where you segment the ice, Kyle. You imagine the full facing you. That's the rink. My hands, like kind of the rink facing you flat yeah. side up. There's a line here and here that okay. segments that rink into gotcha. three portions there and there. And so yep. you can have three games going laterally, horizontally on the ice, and it's three on three. And there's still okay. two goalies and everything. And what it means is that goalies get absolutely shelled. I In a three on three game, I had 122 saves once. Because that's how exhausting it is. Because it's like, oh, they got the puck in, they're shooting. And it was, I was doing that constantly. 
I was like leaving so sweaty. And like, it's only like now that I'm saying all this out loud. 30 feet apart. Yeah, like, you, exactly. You and like, like, get it, shoot that way. Get it, shoot that way. And, and there's no hitting for the players because there's no boards on one side. And so like, they're just loosey goosey passing, setting up plays. And it's just like a training regimen for goalies. And I was doing that fucking constantly at the time. And so like looking back now, I'm realizing like, yeah, that was absolute bullshit. I was in tremendous shape when I was in my mid teens playing so much hockey. That was fucked up of them to make me think I was so fat. I had to run on a treadmill. I thought I, I was, I won the skating competitions with my team. I was the best skater on the team. It's often said the goalie's the best skater on the team when they would, you know, get punished and be like, you know, Hey, good Taylor, you're part of the team too. We're skating bag skating. Obviously, going forward, I was not good compared to the players because we're going forward. Going backward as a goalie, that's my fucking jam. I know the exact crescents to cut. Foo, 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 foo. Like, I was great at that. And, like, that was that was such trash. I'm going to talk to my mom in heaven about that and my dad next time I see him. You, that was well, bullshit. Right. I was not that fat. Explain to your mom that even if you were getting chubby, that the treadmill is not really where it's at. The kitchen is. His mom. Yes you're responsible for this. If you want me to cut weight, that's done in the kitchen, not the gym. That's true. The amount of pork I was served as a teenager was outrageous. <laughs> like, it's just, like it's, it's a, like, you know how every region has like their own, like kind of shitty food that everybody likes. And they're all like, Oh, it's yeah, it's crappy and yeah. shitty, but it's good. Uh -huh. Pork steak. Is that in St. Louis? It's just the cheapest fucking pork meat you can imagine and it was because it was st louis used to be a very low income all around city and so they get these cheap ass cuts of meat and you have to literally like saute it in in sauce so it doesn't dry out because it's inedible because it's already so dry and i remember like having those twice a week and even at the time being like you know this isn't this isn't real steak like is this <laughs> is this is this good now for me fitness oriented I say, well, that looks really good. Those are I some very good-looking Italian pork steaks. I say stupid, stupid shit like, you know, restaurants, all they care about is that the food tastes good. <laughs> <laughs> you know the problem with restaurants? They're all about the money. <laughs> <laughs> well, the fucking restaurants, they just want their food to taste good. Who, who could eat that? They need yeah. to be like low calorie and not salted, no butter and all that nonsense. No, restaurants don't focus oh, yeah. on that at all. But Did, uh, did you guys hear Elon Musk is like going through with the Twitter thing? And Wait, he's going... introducing hard R Tuesdays. <laughs> oh, nice. Yeah. It's wild. I'm excited Wait, about it. Is there any truth to him that is I thought the Twitter thing was not happening or I, I did too. Apparently happening. he like the, the board unanimously approved him because like the price he was buying at was like yeah. over value for the stock. So they have to agree. Like it would be a bad business move not to. So yeah, it looks like it's moving forward. June twenty first. Yeah. So he Zach just linked something from yesterday, so it's very current. Twitter board approved proposed $44 billion sale. Yeah. So here's my understanding. Elon Musk wants to buy Twitter and he wants to do it with Tesla stock. So he says, I'll give you $44 billion worth of Tesla stock. I hope this is mm -hmm. right. And Twitter is like <laughs> $44 billion? Yes. That's way more than anyone else thinks this company is worth. Thumbs up. Mm -hmm. Since then, Tesla has crashed. But that doesn't impact how much Twitter sells for. He didn't say, I'll give you a whatever, a thousand shares. He said, I'll give you 44 billion worth of shares. Yeah, yeah. Now it's a bigger portion of Tesla than he originally intended to pay for it, if this makes sense. Yeah, yeah. And now Elon Musk is like, I don't know if I still like Twitter because like there's a lot of bots on it. I, I think I might back out, but he expressly signed something that said that that's not a reason he can back out. Mm hmm. So if he's trying to back out, can they still make him buy it? They accepted his offer or not. I, I don't know. I have so, no idea either. I mean, I, I would be, it seems like the bot thing would be worrying. Like if you bought yeah, sure. a social media platform and it was like, by the way, 18% of people are totally fake. Like yeah. it, that'd be a huge deal. You, like, you're buying basically the, the user base. Like that's yeah. the point of Twitter. Mm -hmm. So Zach said something. Shares of Twitter were up 1%, hovering around 38, far short of the 5420, 420, that Musk offered to pay. So 
the fact that it's trading for 38, but Musk wants to pay 54 implies that a lot of people think it's not really going to happen. Otherwise, it'd be trading for close to. Wouldn't you buy something for 38 knowing that it's going to be 54 in a few days? Of course you would. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So a lot of people don't have faith that the 54 will really happen. That's why it's selling at 38. Personally, I don't know. Interesting. We'll see how it goes. I just wanted to fucking bring Trump back. Let him get wild (laughs) online again, guys. Come on. I don't think he's Trump get wild online again. I'm the only guy who thinks Trump has the worst that can happen. (laughs) (laughs) I think Trump's same old bullshit. Like he's been telling. He's been he's a comedian who's been on the circuit using the same jokes for eight years now. And I think it's dull. I don't think Trump now he's what? Build the wall. The election was robbed. Same old jokes, just to, the same applause lines every time. And the stuff he did before, like sort of lame name calling is comp- like little Marco. Well, that that was funny. I it like was, but I don't. Th- I he think it's lost. It's well, he he needs new opponents. Opponents. He he, lo- he lost its punch because he's been removed from public discourse, aside from clips of what he says that gets posted to social media. I, I think if like, you get him in a debate with the other Republicans, target. like if you do that, if you do yeah. one of those debates where it's him and like twelve other Republicans, that's where he shines, man. What because mm. when 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 it's his turn. He's gonna take all the time he oh, wants. Yeah. You know he is. Like, like he's just wild with those. He was so good off the cuff at those, at like isolating and eliminating his competition. At, you know, and and he, he always he watches so much TV <laughs> that he always had his finger on the pulse of like where people's numbers were and and if they had fallen uh, you know behind of expectations and he'd put it right in their face. You know, they're they're, they're it was wild. You'd never seen that yeah. before. It's and I think he'll do it again. To understand reality, because on one hand he won. Let's not like let's yeah he fucking won. I shouldn't forget that like the first time he ever ran for a political office, he became political president of the United States. That is amazing political instincts. Let's let's grant him some credit for that. Mm -hmm. On the other hand, it didn't work on me. I always thought it was lame and stupid. So uh, to me, it's always to me it's still lame and stupid. I'm like this is lame and stupid. Why can't everyone see this? Maybe now they are. I think like something that might oh go for you a little bit would be. Like the way people are like, oh, the reason Biden got so many votes is because it was like an express vote against Trump. Yes. Like the reason Trump would get a ton of popular support isn't so much about, you know, what he's saying about his policy. It's about a bunch of people who feel disaffected and going, oh, the media, the CIA, NSA, FBI, institutional politics, uh, every mainstream media corporation, every big bank, every big institution, all these people, they all hate this guy. Well, this guy is becoming became an avatar of fuck you to all those institutions. And that's why I liked him. That's why so many people liked him. He was literally an avatar of fuck big banking, fuck mainstream politicians, fuck the mainstream media, fuck big tech and their censorship, fuck all of this bullshit with all of these powerful institutions trying to control our ability to speak. You hate this guy? Well, I hate you. So he's my guy. How about that? Like, that's right. how so much of it went. He hates the people I hate, too. Yeah, I get that. And then yeah. there's a handful of people who just wanted to throw a Molotov cocktail in Washington, D.C. That's what I wanted to that. do. Absolutely. Yeah. I, I, I like all those people. I liked making those pieces of shit on the left have to rub elbows with Donald Trump. I, I, I liked making the right sell their souls to, to Donald Trump. <laughs> they, he, he went in there, and it doesn't matter if, if you were right or left. You were left lesser for for what he did as the president yeah. like the left had to rub elbows and address him nancy pelosi had to walk her ass into the oval office and sit down across from that guy if she wanted to get anything done you know yeah. they hated it and then if all there was the republicans any... mm-hmm. had to sell their fucking souls to ride him to the white house yeah <laughs> like they yeah. had to throw out all of that the- theologian nonsense i like, mean you can tell that's that where kyle and i came in, in a good bit shit. Because like in 2018, whatever it was, like you and I were both like, yeah, as far as like a challenger or someone like Bernie is pretty great because ever, all those people seem to fucking hate Bernie, too. They obviously hate him way less than Trump. But even so, it was it's still a fuck you vote. 
And yeah, if, I if something happens again that gives me the opportunity to say fuck you to all those media banking <laughs> institutions, oh, then fuck them. I will vote to fuck them I'll again. I will use the only I- I- minuscule amount of power I have in voting to vote for whoever those people don't like. Fuck them. I'll watch you do it. I'll vote. <laughs> you know what I'm going to do? Let me vote. I'm going to, you know what I'm going to do, Kyle? I'm going to fraudulently vote in your name. Don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> what, if, what if I fraudulently vote That'll in your show name up. for Biden? <laughs> that would be so funny. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I think that's a serious crime for you to commit, and they will track you down. I've already said I'll never vote again out of solidarity to one of my wonderful friends, Kyle. Never again. That's right. Unless, that's I, right. unless I want to. No, I, I, uh, I agree with everything you said about Trump. Um, I, I, I loved it. I loved I, I I loved all of it. I loved all of it. You know, let, let, everybody was like, "Oh, he, he paid a he paid a porn star hush money." Awesome! Yeah. That's so <laughs> fucking cool, dude. I wish I've never paid a porn star hush yeah. money. That's dude. But Kyle, he drank a glass of water with with two hands, but he's never fallen off a bike. I, you got to admit like, he like, did did you see him promise to never ride a bike he's like i make this pro- <laughs> i make this promise to you i will never ride a bike <laughs> that's so funny that's, that's, that's a good, and and he's you know safe like, out I because where to you i will never ride a bike <laughs> what if he what if he what if they, he, he's been spending this time learning to ride a motorcycle and he showed up at the head of one of those harley uh, like 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 cruise cruises with like a thousand bikes. Could he win your respect if he showed up with just like the skull cap thing on, like like what whatever you call like that helmet that's just the you know what those. Yeah, I think wear. it's called a half mm-hmm. helmet or something. That that helmet. half helmet thing, like fucking legs kicked up, like 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 real Ford uh place pe- pegs, and he's just cruising and like he looked like he could operate a big boy. Like like could he win your respect then? Me? Yes. Uh, oh, it, if he were to join America's largest cosplay organization, the Harley <laughs> Davidson Owners Group, <laughs> yeah, well, fuck it, I'm in. Woody, Woody, I want, I want a, a truly on, honest response from this one. Trump goes out there and he goes, "Lots of people talking about crazy hobbies. This may seem silly. It's called paramotoring. <laughs> I get into it. I obviously double fans." I get up, I run, I go, watch me. I'm, I've been practicing this thing. It's so much better than being president, being a paramotorist. Like that, if he like got into it and he was like, and you know what? This should be a more popular hobby. Lots of people, lots of good people, smart people. What is gamer tag from YouTube? <laughs> He's doing this. He's doing it. Yes, He's Taylor, smart obviously, guy. I'd vote for him if he gets <laughs> <If> He starts <laughs> talking about paramotoring. <laughs> Woody, I can, I can picture Woody States. real time in his house like... Okay. Like, <laughs> it, it, Jackie, Trump. shut up. He's right. <laughs> if Donald Trump wanted wanted to like paramotor with you from 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 Raleigh down to down to like Charlotte or something Kitty like Hawk, that, right? We'll sure. do the first flight. Oh, you'll do the first flight thing. Yeah. Yeah. You know you'd be down. So what if what if he was like, but but don't make me look bad. Nah, uh, I'll do it. I'll do it. Fuck yeah. it. Help be like, I can't make you look bad Something without me looking my... like a shitty pilot. So, of <laughs> course. <laughs> I know this. He's going to love it. Oh, he's going to hit him with the ball, huh? Oh, oh, there he goes. And he's down. <laughs> Wait, was that really a Trump drive? Yeah. He's a good golfer. He's he's an amazing golfer. Jesus. He's, he's a very athletic record, man. He, he's one he of those guys who looks like he's fat, but you just know it's just a real beefcake, a powerful man. You know, like, like, you know, from his early days, he did a lot of physical labor and he built that, that, that base, that infrastructure. Yeah, it was his years power. in the military. It was his time it, it, in the military. His... I've seen, I've, I've seen him there. It was his time um, uh, was... on The Apprentice. On The Apprentice, you know. <laughs> when he owned all those casinos, he was a seaman. He was a seaman yeah. with his yachts in Atlantic City. Oh, Captain, Captain mm-hmm. Trump. I prefer seaman. Seaman Seaman Trump. <laughs> C Master. That yeah. that is a better name. Is that a title? Did you make that up? A, a, a C Master. A C Master. Yeah. I mean, all titles are made up. Well, no Touché. shit. <laughs> <laughs> but is that something they call you in like the Navy? Like you're the C Master of the yeah. ship? Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. You have a captain, and then right below him, you have the Sea Master. Now his real job is it's more of a weather and uh, aeronautics thing. 
but that's what his thing is. He, he's he's monitoring sea okay. conditions, the swell, the weather conditions, barometric I, pressure. I want to believe you, so I'm going to. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> About a, a sea master. <laughs> yeah, he's like you have like the master of the watch, and then you have the sea master. Uh, master of the house. <laughs> like it's. Uh, <laughs> I don't know what master the house is. I don't, I don't understand this joke. Such a good um, um, there is no C master. Um, there is a really good Russell Crowe movie though called Master and Commander about. Uh, that is like a good a one. Yeah. Yeah, they're 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 on a big ship of the line or something. I don't know much about that stuff, but uh, they're out. I don't that know, was one of the battle. first movies I watched after I got surround sound in my living room back it's in Apex. One. I think it's a good one for that. Yeah, right? and I, I turned it up stupidly loud, and there's like cannonballs by, you know, zooming behind you and stuff. And that Band of Brothers also has really good audio. Yeah, it does. Yeah, yeah. anybody who's never the seen original. Master and Commander, uh, it's a very good uh, like naval cannon shooting ship movie. I don't yeah. know what it's not really it's got a pirate a gladiator movie. in it. They're the good guys. Yeah, it's got a gla- it's got Russell Crowe in it. Um, I always thought like that little kid was so fucking hardcore. They had like a like a yeah like an eleven or twelve year old like, and he gets like a little his arm, orphan. He like loses his arm, and, and uh, he feels bad about it. And then someone gives him a book about some famous captain who also is missing the arm, and the kid's like instantly like, "Fuck yeah, I'm gonna be hard as nails, one armed captain." And like gets a hook and just goes back to fucking work. Like that kid would have bled out immediately. <laughs> There's no way he <laughs> survives that on that pirate ship. Oh, it's yeah. a good movie though. I like it a lot. I like, I like genre pieces like that where where you've got I like westerns. I like pirate stuff. I just wish there was more of it. I'm tired of sequels and I'm sick of Marvel. I'm done with Marvel. Like like I don't get me wrong. <laughs> don't get me wrong. No 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 yes. no. Don't celebrate yet. I'll watch yes. them. I'm gonna watch. No, the main, you're over. You're done. It. You're done. I'm gonna it. watch the main movies. I'll watch the Thor mm-hmm. movie, and 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 I'll stick to like this. But this Miss Marvel thing, like, like I'm not watching that. I'm not watching any more of their TV shows. I'm done with their TV shows. Ant Man, like Captain America, that guy, the Wizard, uh, uh, Captain uh, Time. What the Dr. hell is Strange? Doctor Strange. Strange. <laughs> Captain Time's a better name, but it is. It actually Doctor Strange's not too bad. Yeah, Captain Time's a way better name. Uh, I'm just done with the TV shows. I think uh, I don't think I want to watch any more of that. Shit. I still um, like him, but I've lost my excitement. Right, like it used to be like, oh, ooh, ooh, so many guys, guys, guys. There's new, like Marvel content out there. There is a lot of it, but there was a gap. Like the pandemic hit, and there was this gap, and then the TV shows landed. Everyone was excited for WandaVision. WandaVision, yeah, and I think that's what it was called. In any case. You know, something at the WandaVision level today would be a flop. I I did not like it. I, I'm I done with it. Start flopping. I, like like I, I want more. Flopping. I want fucking a, a good horror movie. I want a good pirate movie. I want a good cowboy movie. I want a decent space movie. It, People like, have to like, stop ooh, watching space. these fucking Marvel movies because all of these titans of of production have just figured out how to expedite production in one way where they're like you know we can make enough money on our little fucking powerpoint presentation to just do this kind of movie just do superheroes and never branch out oh you're and right it's like it, eventually people are going to get tired of it right like they have to like clearly t- kyle's getting tired of it it's got to be so formulaic at this point being an adult watching a superhero movie that you're like i need more i need something darker i need something grittier i don't need this fan service we're laughing about like eating grapes in iron man's office whatever the fuck's going on i'm with you i i'm i don't want to give up on marvel i'm still excited about it now and then there's a new thor coming out that i'm I'm down for but uh i'm he's not jacked, dude he's jacked he's jacked. Christian bale is in that one right no oh no it's, it's, it's wait are it's you sure Hemsworth. christian bale it's is chris hemsworth the the blonde guy australian guy who looks like you know hulk hogan now that makes me so much happier. I saw a, a commercial for uh, the new Thor, and I thought it was Christian Bale in it. And I was like, oh, "Come on, man!" Like, no, no. Uh, I, I, I want well, you else. get involved in the Marvel universe. You're like one of my favorite actors. I don't want you to be relegated to just that now. Uh, yeah. I, I know. Oh, uh, one thing that's coming out that might actually be decent. So, so I really like the Predator, the first Predator movie with Schwarzenegger, okay. and then the sequel to it has Danny Glover, and they're in Los Angeles, and it's just okay. It's 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 you can watch it, but after that, it's been just a shit show after shit show for like four or five sequels or something. Um, they're making another one. I think it's called Prey, and this one takes place huh. like 
150 years ago and it's Comanche warriors versus a predator. So I'm kind of into that. That looks fun. It looks like you're going to have maybe a female protagonist, Comanche warrior lady. And uh, she's going to be like her and her tribe are going to try to fight a predator with Comanche bows and arrows and spears and shit. So I think that'll be fun. Maybe I'm hoping, but yeah. it's been so shit forever. It's been so shit. That last one with the, the, the autistic child, like, like that made so little sense. It was so weird. Like, like mm. because the child was autistic, he was that they were like, Oh, well, that means that he can use predator technology. Then they're, they're like, <laughs> they're cute. he'll immediately just learn. He'll immediately just <laughs> learn their like uniformic space language and be able to read it and operate their machinery. Because he has super autism. His name's they, Woody. He's the best operator we've ever come across. <laughs> Don't interrupt him. They, <laughs> they, they basically like made autism like whatever. Remember Rain Man? Your superpower, yeah. Like, like, like whatever Rain Man had, they made it that. He was, uh, what is that called? Idiot Savant? I don't think it's Idiot, though. It's like Idio Savant, something like that. I think it's Idiot. Idiot Savant, yeah, yeah. Where it's like you're you're really good at one thing. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, we can wrap uh -huh. up. I didn't even realize we were over four hours. I've been having such a good old time. I've been having a good time just talking to my friends online. Mm -hmm. You going to go smoke something? I'm going to go uh, drink some of that syrup and start reading my book. And about you know a few pages in, I'm going to start feeling Send nice. me a picture whenever you smoke those ribs. That's what I was actually uh, uh, talking it's about. Idiot oh, savant. The ribs. <laughs> yes, really? I've been saying idiot savant my whole life. It's spelled that way, so that's a reasonable thing. But it's idiot savant. The oh, wow. the T is silent. Yeah, interesting. I you learn something. You learn something. I wish <laughs> we had that star it. thing. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> the more you know, the more you yeah. know. As it goes, PKA six oh one. Fire cum pills. <laughs> <laughs>